Well, hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to the Clown Showdown. Really glad to have you with us today for the final stage of the tournament, the playoff. And as you can see, I am being joined once again. He was there in the past tournaments with Toxic, the analyst, with uh, me for the weekend. How is it going? It's going great. Uh, thank you, Insane, for introducing me. Let's jump right into the tournament bracket, where we will be having nice try facing off Inville in the first match. Inville not finishing first in their group. Uh, for the second match, we will have Aurora, the winner of the Inville group, facing versus NTMG. Moving on to the lower bracket matches afterwards, match 3 will be the loser of match 1 versus Team Madagascar, and match 4 will be the loser of match 2 versus the team of Trick. I think there's something interesting to mention already is that uh, Madagascar, they were uh, Aboba and Redan in the past and they were actually the winners in uh, the last uh, tournament. They are starting in the loser's bracket, so they won't have a second chance if they would uh, drop one match in that tournament. And that was probably due to the fact that they were missing some of their main players that were uh, busy playing some 77 tournaments. I mean, uh, I, sp I think they were especially missing one of their shot callers, yep. right, in positive so that's always something you have to compensate for on the side of inville they uh, will also be missing their shot caller or their shot caller for the recent i think eight months it is um uh, left the team actually after the group stage and will not be playing in the playoffs so that one will be interesting to look out for yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting to see them play again, once again, full Polish team. I mean, if you count Mantus in, because he's there for a while and he's uh, pretty comfortable with his players. But yeah, Barbarian is missing and he was the main leader for them for like uh, almost four tournaments already. But uh, community predictions uh, and going in Vils way 83%. Do you think it's respectful for Nice Try? Because I think they definitely can win that. I mean, Nice Try, definitely not a bad team. They We have seen them a lot of times actually in the past uh, making it to playoffs and I think also finishing third place. Uh, not sure if they got any further than that. So they will probably put up a match versus Inville, um, especially since Inville does have quite the structural change as in missing their main shot caller. So we'll see how uh, Monster and Piotr can compensate for that. Definitely. We also have some uh, Twitch drops for the weekend. Uh, like usually we have uh, that, some mystery drops that will be available tomorrow. But for today and tomorrow, we have some Twitch tokens. You'll be uh, having those uh, watching one hour and a half and uh, uh, a bit less than two hours. Talking about the mystery drops, there are also some days of premium in here. Premium tanks, camouflage. What do you think about it? Uh, very interesting drops. I mean, if you get lucky, these uh, tier 8 premiums can provide you with a lot of extra income, you know. Uh, but I think, moving on, we can uh, already throw it over to our casters. Yeah, definitely to introduce the first match of the day, we will have uh, Kihan and Aki taking over to introduce Invil uh, versus Nitri Nice Try. Guys, take it away. Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the Clan Showdown. I'm once again being joined here by Ducky and yeah, let's get right into it. Invil against Nice Try is going to be the first match and normally you would say that Invil should be favored a lot. I think community predictions going like 83% their way, uh, but they didn't really show up in the group stage and also uh, they lost their sort of main FC for the past few months with Barbarian. So what do you make of this one? Do they ever really perform in the group stage, though? Uh, yeah, never. They don't show up there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do they, they never really have a clean run in the group stage ever, so it's not really a surprise. But when the playoffs matter, they are usually there and ready to rock and roll. But they're going to be taking on this nice try team, uh, which looks a bit different than last time when we saw this team, Magical and Company, uh, now joining this one. Him and Banter going to be the leading force for this team. Going forward, Toxic already mentioned that they did make it to the playoffs quite a few times in the past. They even took second, I think, in a long distant memory where they lost against Inville. But this team, it's an international team. It's supposed to be some sort of super team, you could call it, I guess. I mean, every international team is kind of that. Otherwise, you would be playing with the national teams instead. Um, but they've never really delivered upon expectations, I would say. 
Yeah, some of that probably also down to, um, I guess, like uh, the strategies that Bunter, uh, he's going to be, I guess, the main FC sometimes employs. He likes weird tank choices, sometimes off meta picks. We just saw the map pick and bans. And uh, in there, we were able to see that, uh, yeah, Cliff is going to be our first map. Predictions are up, and we can see we're all on the inbuilt train, regardless of the group stage performance. Um, you and Insane actually saying it's going to go to tiebreaker Toxic a bit more confident for the two uh, but yeah cliff a fast map uh, definitely to be played uh, an all-out action shootout map i think that probably f or normally it should favor inville because like historically they've been a team that worked very very well together but yeah after the group stage we need to see them show up actually now yeah it depends if nice strike can slow down the pace or they're gonna go for the full fight as well <coughs> right now they're bringing double 50b uh, what seems to be seven chieftains, five CSs, and a 268v4, though. On the side of Inville, we see some newer tanks. Double 50B, then we have double 907, one CS63, double chief, we have five 260s, and then triple BZ75. So one of the very, very new additions to the uh, tank pool, obviously, with the booster mechanic. We'll see uh, where they will actually get deployed. It seems like the BZs are headed to the middle together with uh, a few other tanks, but Inville mainly going towards the 1-2 line. And from the side of Nystri, we can also see a split here. Yeah, it's split, but mainly 1-2 as well. So both these teams having a uh, split down and up. The 260s is definitely faster, though, in 1-2 than these Chieftains will ever be. But the Chieftains having that better brawling potential, I would say, than the 260. We can already see the 260s well around the corner. Magic FC actually leading the charge. It's just going to stop here to Folly. Try and get something out. Magic now leading the charge back around the corner. He gets dropped low by those 50 Bs immediately. Now the CS is from the top. Coming in from Nice Try as well. They want to pinch it. There's an Invil currently with these BCs. A little bit slow, but they do have that double 907. Ketsai and Zuza le leading some crossfire positions. But the 260s are going to get wiped out. And these BCs, where are they? The BCs completely no Nowhere to be seen, and the 907s from the lower side not really able to put in a lot of shots. Finally, Piot leading the charge for his team, so the BZs finally have arrived, but that is a lot of tanks to be pushing into. Piot already almost down and out of the picture, down towards one shot, gets rammed, gets picked up, and right now, nice try actually with the HP and tank advantage. Nice try, but an everything advantage, also the better tanks for this brawl, Kihan. BZs do not fight Chieftains very well. They fight CS is great, they fight 260s great, but the Chief is a different story altogether. Nice try cleaning up those 260s before the BZs ever even arrived. I felt like those BZs took forever to get into the fight. Not sure why that was the case. Maybe they're just not that fast, even with those rockets trapped to the back of it. And yeah, the HP is still a little bit close, but the positions are by far in favor of Nice try. Yeah, exactly. The double 907 on that one two line is never going to be able to leave or have an impact into the game. Same can be said about the CS63 that's currently residing in G1, starting to rotate. But yeah, Conrad on a one shot. And now we can already see the long rotations, the methodical gameplay coming in from the side of Nystri. They're just going to take positions here, there and everywhere. As soon as K5 gets taken by the team in yellow, that should be the end of it. Because uh, yeah, realistically, DJ has a good position for Inville, but obviously they know already uh, where they are. Invil now actually getting those 907s out of there. I didn't think that was... Uh, but they do make it work. And yeah, Aitox and Loop sort of stuck there for the time being. But I don't think they should really be able to see the 50B leaving uh, if he gives it like a wide berth. But now here, Horse coming in, spotting out Mentos. Horse is pretty, pretty low, but I think he has a stone to hide behind Mentos. Now taking one from the middle of the map. Katsai starting to come as well with his 907. But yeah, nice try with the superior amount of guns, with having the hill as well, or rather the ramp approach should be able to clear this one out cleanly. Ketsai now also getting spotted. So yeah, no way out of this one for Inville. No way out of this one for Inville, which is kind of... They're still trying here, but it's just a really rough position for them to be in. They're trying to actually make some uh, rotations here. Now the V4 is starting to push into 1-2. The tanks from the top crossing as well. Unique, Panu, Floki all coming from that D line to repush 1-2. Zuza does a good shot there on the side of Lip. But he is a one-shot. Conrad fallen. Zuza fallen as well. DJ isolated there together with Nevermentos now fallen against Horse. And that will be the nail in the coffin for Inville in round one on Cliff. And nice try. That is exactly 
what they need to start off against. An infill team that has to go back to the roots of their gameplay. No Barbarians, so Piotr and uh, I think uh, Monster at the helm here. And they're going to be losing their first round in the clan showdown. Yeah, exactly. Invil after a uh, yeah, really Invil-like performance for the group stage. Now with an uncharacteristic start for them in the playoffs here. Nice try. Uh, yeah, you could say just with a very, very convincing victory, just the Invil BZ-75s being completely out of game was what probably hurt them. And even then, uh, you mentioned it while the shootout was going on, uh, basically those BZs, uh, like, yeah, they have nice alpha, they have the booster mechanic, but... Um, they don't really have a lot of DPM, and the DPM is what you need in those shootouts. And uh, yeah, that was simply not there, so nice try picking it up. One to nothing, and Invil, they uh, need to start picking up the pace here, because if they continue like this, it'll be a quick relegation into the lower bracket. Mm, let's not speak too fast, though. I mean, uh, yeah, nice try had a good opening here. Those Chiefs definitely worked out for them, because they were able to take that brawl when they went up. Um, but for Invil, yeah, just those BCs felt slow. Like, they honestly just felt slow to get to the fight. Uh, initially, Invil was doing all right. They did a lot of damage to the Chiefs as well. They had that double 907 in Crossfire. But once those Chieftains get up and the BCs are in there, they just clean up those 260s rather easily. Yeah, exactly. And especially since there weren't any, or there wasn't any backup available for Invil, right? Because the 260s, they were sort of in between uh, Anvil and the Hammer, right? From the upside, the medium tanks, the CS-63s were coming in. From the lower side, the uh, Chieftains were coming in. So there was, wasn't really anywhere to hide. And we can see that Ketsai in his 907 was really able to do a whole lot of damage because he was continuously able to put in those shots from the side. But in the end, the, uh, the BZs as well as the 260s not really having an impact because they just got cleaned up uh, so quickly. And even the 50Bs, like, mm, Rishek... 885, I mean, he got off a second clip, but normally you need to convert two full clips to be worth it. As they, were, they were told to repush into 1-2, though, yeah. with 50 beasts. I mean, you know, like, repushing 1-2 into 268, 50 beasts that are aiming, and chieftains that are hold on on you, it's not the greatest story for Rishek and his 50 B comrade. And on the other side, we can see, well, Hannes with a bit of team damage, but in the end, just a good damage spread. And, well, Magic, you can say, well, the FC doesn't really need to do a lot of damage because he's going to be busy with calling anyway. But overall, uh, the team of Nice Try uh, immediately showing up. And, uh, yeah, things are looking good for the international team here. Meanwhile, for the Polska Gurom guys, um, they need to sort of, you know, it up a notch as i said it they need to forget that their main caller isn't here with barbarian maybe Piot to the rescue what do you think i mean it's still you know the first round on cliff we could just be uh leaving this one one and no harm is done right mm. um actually what map are we headed to next fisherman's bay so that's normally a map i would consider a one one split so um yeah. Uh, we'll have to see what round two holds in store for us. Uh, the sides are obviously going to be switched now, uh, but I think, yeah, especially on uh, on Cliff, if you don't plan to hard camp as defender, and that doesn't really work against good teams, uh, then it's going to be a shootout somewhere on the map. One, two, donut, ramp, somewhere there. Uh, lineups though, Ducky. Uh, Invil coming in with the uh, double 50B. We have double BZ75. Then we have six 260s, one Chieftain only, a uh, double CS63, and that infamous double TVP. Nice try on the other hand. STRV, four CSs, double BZ, double 260, 150B. And they're sticking to those five Chiefs. Now, this Invil lineup is a lot faster than the Nice Tries lineup because they have those five chieftains where Invil only has one right those chiefs are always going to be slower in this they have to be careful for nice trying that they they don't get a desync and with what we mean by desync desync between the cs's and the chiefs because those chiefs are going to take a while to drive up on one two mm. 
Now, we do see a split by both teams, but for Inville, it's, uh, it's a lot more uh, predominant where they are growing the double TVP already being sent around the hill. This is kind of a gamble by Inville. Almost everyone going towards middle. Mentor spotting out the CS tanks crossing as well, so he's probably going to go behind the stone. Now, finally, the 260 is starting to get spotted as well, and uh, Inville just committing heavily into that middle here. Uh, if they want to, they'll probably even be able to get a tank or two up the hill because the BZs can't really... Uh, properly keep spotting uh, the approach here. We'll have to watch for that the double TVP so though, yeah. The TVPs, they're countering, they're going to be countering the BZs very soon. Monster and Rexor, I think this is a great move from Invel actually. A very good read on towards the positions. And if they could clip out Banter before he takes the hill, because, you know, you can shoot the BZ from there in the back, and that's what's happening already. Monster gives one, gives two. Rexor now coming in as well. Some non-connections against those BZs, because, of course, it does have good armor, but they have forced those BZs off the ramp they have forced them not being able to take the hill and good shooting there from rexer gets two more and for invil this is ideal i mean they, they are in a great position right now they're, they're oh they're going to do the shield here baro needs to go a little further though so hannes can go behind it this is an interesting shield We've, I've tried it before in advances. It can't work, but it's in the wrong position. Yeah, it is in the wrong position. And I think also the tank uh, like didn't properly drive towards the rocks. Hanna is now even getting set on fire. So now they should be, be able to finish him off with AG if need be. Yeah, he's going to survive on 38, but probably for not much longer. So this shield essentially ended up just two tanks thrown away into the garbage can. You want to know why Kihan knows that it wasn't in the right position? Yeah, because you, you told me like knows? three times how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> because I, every time we did it in advances, I got Kihan to do it. <laughs> Where is the correct position, Kihan? Uh, I believe a bit further back. Yes, from what I can tell. Behind, where, behind where Hannah's died, there's like a slight um, elevation in the terrain. Mm. Um, where you can like drive up your 260 to basically fully shield, you know? Yep. Um, and then also you need to turn the turret sideways, so yes. the full turret is blocked, which I don't think is the case here either. No, Panu's turret is facing. You can see the gun. So uh, I don't know if that's is if that, okay. Let's put it this way: if that was a pre-planned move from Nice Try, the execution was a shocker. Let's be honest. Yeah. Like, <laughs> seriously, like if they trained that on that, that was one of their reactions they're going to do. Neither Panu or Hannes, mainly Panu, was not paying attention. <laughs> They were not, like, there. Mm. Now, for Ketsai, the question is actually, does he have, like, fuel or something, or why can't he uh, repair his, uh, or heal his loader, I should say, rather. Um, but obviously, those accounts, they have all skills, so the jack-of-all-trades would be kicking in by the commander here. <clears throat> um, yeah, you can see that they have... Um, they have ah, yeah, so speed governor. Speed governor. So, I mean, this is a pretty easy cleanup, though, for Invil now. Um, I think that with the fact that they killed two tanks, they could send one more 260 around the hill, IMO, mm -hmm. and do it with a third tank. I think you can definitely get away with that because you cannot get repushed anymore. Uh, good shooting on towards Mirak as well. Um, okay, so that's the reason why, okay, you have the double TVP, so you'd be like, that it's five tanks out of the fight. No, not really. The double TVP gives a full clip on the tanks crossing over, right? Uh, you have the double BZ under the hill and the SJV. So if you send the third one, which they're doing now, which I'm 100% correct from Invil, sending Piotrix around the hill as well, you have enough to make it to the SJV. Mm. Oh, never there with a good blind shot on towards TSEC, but it's not really going to change the fact that Invil is slowly but surely um, taking over the whole part of the map. That being said, though, Mentos getting set on fire. Um, but he should be able to stay safe there. I think Dandley with a good shot into Mentos here. And what's also important to mention, right? Well, never mind me. Uh, triple 260 push starting now here in the southeastern part of the map. DJ taking a lot of shots here, but that's going to enable the other 260s and more importantly, the double TVP to take positions behind the ho houses and just shoot at those BZs. Uh, shoot at those BZs indeed, and now Piotr is continuing forward. He wants to reach it to the STRV, um, but now Ito is getting clipped out. Mirak being spotted, which is the most important factor here. Uh, he in that STRV will not be living for too much longer. Ito there doing a good sh good job at staying alive, but finally the STRV goes down towards Piotr. Now, though, there's a 260 just peeking out through the middle. I'm not sure which one that is even, but he has nice side shots pick him up and this is very clean for Inver at this moment in time and now comes the north push though 
Yeah, the north repush, but this repush into the middle from the donut when the enemy is already pre-aimed, it's doomed to fail. We see it time and time again. It's a desperation move. And we can see the fire by the Invil guys, just ferocious here, chipping away. White Rock already biting the dust, and all of those tanks by Invil that are still in the middle are ever so healthy. So nice try here. After a good round one, are going to get battered, bruised, and beaten by Invil in round number two. Yeah, this is a very clean round from Invil. I mean, slow, methodical, uh, and the shield can make a big difference there, though, for this nice try team. He's able to farm so much damage from the middle that it is a lot higher. I mean, the move around still stands, though. Like, they can still go around and clear the BZs because the double TVP counters the BZ still. So even with a successful shield, I think if Invil goes around the hill like they did, that nice try would probably still not hold. Mm. Yeah, so uh, Inbil as they need to, finally showing up, equalizing the scoreline here. And both of the rounds, the the winner or the winning team of the round actually did look really, really good doing it. Obviously, Inbil here still 13 tanks alive. That was a really decisive uh, victory here. Um, very, very clean, so both of the teams demonstrating that when they're being handed the opportunities, they will definitely seize them and just decide the round for them. Uh, that being said, though, uh, Cliff is done and over with. We are headed to Live Oaks, but I think, first of all, we can take a look at the uh, post-battle results where we see that, uh, yeah, Mirek was able to farm some damage, but other than that, uh, the nice tri tanks just getting out-positioned everywhere. Yeah, this the... Uh... I mean, easy pickings for the uh, Invil side, but they made all the right moves, though. Yep. I mean, they put themselves into the position to win, basically. So, uh, good stuff here by the Polish team. Um, yeah, and, uh, um, you know, for Invil, that should got to feel good after their first Clef game. They had kind of a freebie here from Nice Try. Um, the, the shield could have made a difference, but... You always lose a tank for it, though. Yeah, you, like always, you always lose a tank, and then, even then, like, it's only one of your tanks that has continuous shots, and when you have, like, ten uh, people spamming you with HE, even then, like, sometimes it's not worth it because, like, your crew keeps dying or and whatnot. All right, so Cliff done and over with. We are headed to Fisherman's, and we're gonna see at least uh, one round on Prokhorovka. Uh, so Fisherman's now being picked here by the side of Nice Dry. We can obviously see that Cliff was in Bill's pick. Um, I would say Fisherman's is one of those 1-1 one, one maps, uh, but maybe Nice Try have something interesting planned for the uh, for the attack there. We'll have to see what what's going to happen. Mm. Fisherman's Bay is a, what I consider a hard 1-1 one, one map, though. Yeah. Um. So maybe Nice Try consider themselves to be the underdogs, and they they want to get a 1-1 one, one here uh they probably weren't like i don't know maybe they were considering cliff to be a 1-1 one, one, or maybe a 2-0 for them as well we never know obviously was what goes through the mind of people during the uh pick and ban but yeah fisherman's uh, a sort of slower map even though the second round on cliff was uh being played slowly as well but that was just Inville being very very methodical um not willing to give any room opening opportunity towards the side of nice try uh but yeah fisherman's we we do sometimes see like uh immediate uh commitments into the one-two line where a quick shootout ensues but other than that uh that is a map where first of all information gathering with like ebrs takes place all of that neat kind of stuff and also i'm going to be watching for some uh possible hooldown e3s in the middle those are always nice to see cliff is important to keep into mind okay because nitrate did have the faster attack i think mm -hmm. um on the first round and neither fisher or proca are maps that tend to finish super quickly yep so that is important if it would get to tiebreaker, which we're still very, very far away from. Yeah, but definitely to have that in the back of your mind. It gives you peace of mind. It, it gives you ease of mind, right? So nice try currently probably going to be a bit more relaxed, especially uh, since we're headed on towards their map pick. Um, uh, we'll have to see. Yeah, Fisherman's attack, you said it. It's not really something that is easy to pull off if it if you can even pull it off. Uh, then again, I think in the past tournaments, we even saw some 1-1 one -one splits of Fisherman's Bay where it was both attack wins. So uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, 
Obviously, the, the meta regarding the tank picks are being very, very different from Cliff as well. Here, the like speedy heavy yums, uh, what I like to call them, uh, are not really uh, your pick of choice. And that being said, nice try coming into this one with the self-proclaimed best EBR player on the server, Hannes. Then we have one two six eight <laughs> four. we have a CS63, we have one Chieftain, and the rest is 11279s. Ilval, on the other hand, no lights, 1 to 60, 1 v4, 1 e3, 12 to 7. And Hannes proclaimed the best EBR. Did you see the clip from the groups? Uh, I did not, actually. What? Uh, ah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fisherman's Bay clip where he yes. loses 1200. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> that was. Uh... A moment to behold. Anyway, though, uh, splits going on here currently. Nice try sending a lot of tanks towards the uh, uh, towards the city and center of the map. Hannes obviously uncontested in his EBR here currently, doing around through the middle of the map, seeing no one really going towards the city. But it is a bait. Obviously, we as the all-knowing observers do know that Invil have a firm presence there. Invil does have a very firm presence there, and they are playing that very heavy, but Piotr taking it immediately. This is an interesting kind of defense. It's a defense that relies more on holding the city than it does um, on just like being spread, you know? Mm. Uh, also, we can see Invil sending 1279 towards D1, but uh, yeah, Monster taking one in the middle needs to be a bit careful, obviously, now that the nice try tanks have arrived. Ooh, everywhere. White Rock and Skirpy also with good shots into Monster. Now, Horse taking one into the back of his tank uh, needs to turn around, needs to readjust here. But I think nice try right now, they're feeling out this defense. They're seeing what they can do to Ketsai. That's very important as well in the city with the 2684 has crossed over as well. So we'll be able to support Piot, but will also be vulnerable possibly to shot from the middle never mind he's continuing on yeah he's continuing on indeed um but yeah invil they don't even have extra hp anymore they said it with a little bit extra but i'd even doubt already the thing is still they have that 15 tanks that are able to fight oh that is a nasty position by piotr actually yes it is a pretty good one mm. uh... cat size is also annoying though because you can also go into a slight ditch mm. Uh, Piot now here shooting, getting spotted, not finding any success, however, but he doesn't need to currently because it's nice try attacking. And uh, Hannes now being sent through the one line does get spotted, as you can see on the minimap. Uh, here we go now, and Conrad there with a miss, doesn't take any damage, uh, has to burn his repair kit for the tracks though, and Hannes kind of stuck here for the time being, uh, needs to get unspotted, needs to get delit to be able to get out of there to indeed scatter to the winds but he's gonna be all right just taking some uh info spots out conrad conrad has to be careful i mean nice try is just feeling it out but they cannot feel it out for too long if you have time is always ticking time is of the essence here like yes it's still seven minutes or oh good shot by orzek here into hannes that uh, also has to use his repair kit for the Amorek. He does see Orzek, he does see T-Sec, but he doesn't see Piotrix in the back lines there with that E3. So information on that TD is still missing here. And we can see the Invil tanks here in the middle bunched up behind these newly added houses that provide cover even if the enemy does overtake like the, the central area, the middle of the map here. Piotr and Lip duking it out, being hauled down, but Itox takes a big one by Ketsai and now Invil starting to make a move in the city. And also to make a move in the city, pressuring up there slightly further, getting some more deep established control over that part of the map. So they just want to push further in. They want to get more control and have a tighter defense there. This puts a lot of pressure on Nice Try and forces them to keep a lot of times in that part of the map. I mean, obviously, as soon as Invil pushes out of this, then the tanks from the middle can actually help with crossfire. But Invil is defending. They are not really pressured to do that right now. They just took more offensive positions to be able to immediately shred any kind of advance that Nice Try would do into the middle. And we can already see that Nice Try, they're having to respect this. They're now rotating magic over. And I think Invil, they're going to start aggressing here in that city. They're starting to push out of it. Rishek, Rexa, they're the first ones to start going, but we can already see that. Nice try. They do have some guns at least available here. Rishek down to half HP. It's interesting to me that Invald continues for this push. 
not too sure if that was the correct decision at this moment in time. I mean, they had a pretty firm hold still. They were not really in danger of losing 1-2 quite yet. And they decide to go for this play. An aggressive one as well. They're doing good damage towards these tanks in the middle, though. So far for Inville, this was working quite all right, I gotta say. Pressure in the tanks in the middle as well. But Rex are starting to fall there in his 279. Down towards 266. Lip down towards the one-shot. And now 9-0 line. Pushed back up by the nice try tanks. Magic leading the charge there. But I don't know if this is a push that you really want to make right now for nice try. But it's one that they feel like they have to do. Yeah, Conrad pushing out the one line here. Meanwhile, in the middle of the map, obviously nice try. They were getting crossfired from the side, so they had to make a move. But Hall's already down towards a two shot. They don't really have the amount of HP to properly burn through the invil tanks quickly here, especially since t -Sec from the side is still very, very healthy. Hall's now down towards a one shot. is probably not going to survive for a whole lot longer. White Rock unique. They know they cannot aggress and meanwhile Nice Try able to clean up the city here. They should be getting Pants Fury. They should be getting Piot rather quickly. Yeah, they will get Piotr, they will get Fury. Uh, Kets are now backing off and you can see Never running away as well. But they're starting to push out 1-2 and return from the side of Invil. Never wants to make it to a safer position. Danley dead and out in this battle here orchic surely to pick him up and i will say Invil's done a master job here and prolonging the fight continuously forcing the engagement taking time away from the side of nice try and nice try doesn't have that much time left anymore four minutes on fisherman's bay is not a lot to work with yeah, especially since Invil are now encroaching on towards Banta here, who is also going to fall. And then nice try have the problem that, well, basically their tanks in the city are currently out of the fight. So Banta is just going to get picked up essentially for free magic there with a good shot into Piotrix's side. But, like, there is Invil tanks scattered everywhere. And the nice try tanks that still have a lot of HP, they're not really in the position to... Uh, currently aggress on towards the Inbuilt tanks. HP though, neck and neck, slight gun advantage even for Nice Try, but they need to convert that into uh, yeah a lot of kills rather quickly to keep snowballing here. Otherwise, it's not going to look good. Now, Never here getting found, and Neva is going to go and flank him. He is going to flank him, Neva, in the CS, but still Inbuilt down on HP here. They just have to make sure that they can continuously spot their own base in the north. If they can do that, they currently are in decent positions to hold this monster though in his 279 down towards 140 hp he wants to retake the north unique and sunny with that hp pushing back up trying to get on the sides of mentos dj and tisek here that is a 3v2 though but sunny and unique have a lot of hp available but there is still an e3 watching him behind but piotrick seems to be caught out in that e3 as well and that is uncharacteristic here for Invil to have these tanks out of position. And if you take a look at the A-line, the CS is currently driving through it, and then they should have crossfire on towards the tanks in the middle here as well, because, uh, yeah, Invil can't really take control in the south of the map because they're getting outspotted by the EBR here, and now the trade's starting to favor Nice Try. Invil down in HP, a kill back, a kill fourth here, but DJ and t -Sec one and two shot respectively. That's going to be the snowball effect that basically Nice Try was looking for. Unique has to peak, has to pick it up, does it? t -Sec down and out of the game and never with those crucial cross shots from the CS63, probably winning the game for Nice Try. But we have to keep in mind two minutes only remaining, but it's only four tanks for the side of Inville. Only four tanks for the side of Inville, and it's looking actually dire at this moment in time. But a big issue there that they didn't have the E3 alive anymore of Piotrix, who died reversing. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know uh, what else we can say here for the side of uh, Inville, what they can do in this. I mean, one minute 30, though, it does look like Nice Try is going for the kills here. Never finishes off Monster. I mean, the EBR is driving towards the cap. That's not enough. But yeah, not, one not minute enough. 25. One, one, one minute 40 to cap alone. Mm, uh, I think they're sending Never there as well. Yeah, Never seems and to Mirek be going. Too. But Vesuza still has some HP left, though. Mirak is going as well. They will make it. They actually will make that. Mm. Okay, good. So yeah, Floki now has the high ground against Conrad, is able uh, to shoot into him. Conrad now even taking shots from uh, the middle of the map, and now Floki peeking for the kill.
picking it up and we see triple cap being started by the side of nice try and there is no one really close that could be doing anything uh, for any kind of reset Suza now over peaking here for something but does get picked up in the process and now Orzek the last remaining tank for the side of Inville so nice try it took them a while and there this weird push by Inville in the city actually gave them the opening but uh, yeah they do it they convert their fisherman's bay attack they do convert their fisherman's bay attack and for info there it was looking really good but then at some point they started getting caught out in bad positions i mean monster lost a lot of hp where i think he shouldn't have for example he had like over 1k and then went down towards a one shot and the e3 also trying to make it back into one two he doesn't make it and those are imagine you get those established into one two deep you don't have really an issue with the cs anymore or the cap um Good stuff though from Nice Try coming back in. I don't know if initially Envil needed to push the city. They were really not under that much pressure, I would say. Yeah, I'm not not sure either what what triggered that push in the city. And yeah, we can see Piotrix only one shot, like uh, only one shot of damage, like three connections, but only only one hit. That is definitely not what you want to do with an E3 because like the E3 is the tank designed to counter the two seven nines, right? Because it doesn't really care about the armor. Uh, because you just have so much raw pen, but yeah, Piotrek's not able to make that E3 work. Instead, it's going to be 2684s top of the board for either team. Top of the board on the V4s, yeah, it's a good tank against 279s, right, with that 360 mm -hmm. pen. It works out pretty, pretty well. Um, but yeah, Itox and Katsu are doing a good job there. From Inville, this is not really a scenario they're used to most of the time. Yeah, most of the time the, the simple raw player skill by Inville and the trades over time are gonna just favor them by default, but that is not what we saw here. And uh, I, I sort of have to question that weird push by Inville in the uh, in, in the city, like w what triggered them into doing it? Um, because they weren't under pressure in the one line, they weren't under pressure in the middle, and they were defending. So um, yeah, not not quite sure what happened there. I mean, maybe there was a moment where they, you know, felt like they had to do it because they were afraid of a one-two push, for example. Not too sure um, in, in that regard. It is it is what it is, though, at the end of the day. Invil is now down against a scoreline of 2-1, uh, moving on to the attack. Mm. Normally, defense is favored. Um, you know what I'll say, though? I think... Thinking back to the last game, Piotrix in his E3, did you see how he came forward to try and kill that 279 of Banter? And there was like four 279s there already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, then he turned sideways Piot to get the kill for like 150 yeah, HP. I think if Piotrix just doesn't do that and actually just plays one two line or whatever, Inval is in such a better situation. Because imagine the E3 being at like A1 or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, not, not, not sure. Um, that didn't look very, very solid by uh, by the side of Inville. Um, but they now have the chance to redeem themselves as I think the next round is a, uh, is just about to start. There we go. Lineups. Uh, nice try coming into this one with once again an EBR double 2684. We have one Chieftain, one 260, one IS-7 and that leaves I believe nine 279s. Correct. Inville on the other hand, 268, Chief, SCRV, 1 EBR, and then 11, 279s. The Chief there to take 1 2 at some point to farm the middle. It's a pretty normal pick. Um, but we'll see how both these teams approach this. I mean, double V4. Yeah. I mean, it did well last round, so why not take two, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, the splits by Invel currently sending the SRV and some two, two seven nines towards the uh, one and two line for their attack. Some tanks middle that is pretty standard, and they're sending the double two six eight four, I believe, towards the city. Hannes once again with sort of free play in that EBR since the enemy team doesn't have a light tank, and Panuka already taking a shot with that two sixty. Oh, taking a second one. Are they going to try to cross over here into the ditch? Is the question. Panuka down to twelve hundred. The IS seven still untouched though. Panuka taking another shot here and is down to eight hundred fifty. And the SRV with a last shot into Floki, a little parting gesture. Uh, the i7 is going to make it towards the windmill. 
We got a 7-8 line immediately here. Conrad, Vishek, and Zuza unspotted, pushing onto the city very quickly. Now they get spotted out, but I think Itox here is left to his own devices, not even connecting the first shell, and this is going to spring Nice Try into making a move. I think they're being caught off guard here, Kihan. I think they're in trouble. I think they are in a heap of trouble. Actually, Itox should have reloaded now with that 2684. It does not Misses connect again. Uh, once again here. And this should prompt Nice Try into somewhat of a reaction because Invil is taking a lot of real estate for essentially free here. Itox taking another one in his 2684. And I think this is already damage control here by Nice Try sending Hannes over there. Yeah, this is just not good for them. Itox is going to fall, but even then, they have all the positions on the city. Infield doesn't have <laughs> to push this Kihan. They can now start working on the middle, start working on 1-2 line. They have taken enough that they can just be content with this. They could push forward if they want to, but look at Lip there getting spotted in the open. Minus 1.3. Now Crossfire coming into the middle. Monster DJ pushing across, actually. And I think Nice right here currently trailing and trailing in reactions, trailing in moves as well. And this is good stuff here for the side of Invil as now you see that 279 and F4 is going to get pressured at some point as well and taken out of this game. Invil here just establishing positions and this is really good for them. Yeah, Zuza now getting spotted on the way out here takes one, but it's not really critical. Never and Arexa still uh, able to hold those crossfire positions here. Nice try now trying to come back, trying to re-establish positions, but the damage has already been done. They're down a tank. They're down 5,000 HP at this point. So uh, Invil, if they just focus on trades over time now, they should be in yeah, sort of a good spot because they still have over seven minutes to work with. Over seven minutes to work with. Most of the nice try team locked on one side. They can now start pressuring out one two very slowly. They can also pressure out the last two seven nine that's in the middle. They have everything going for them right now for the side of uh, Invil. Yep. If they throw this, it would be a miracle. We'll have to see. You can see Nice try now trying to pull him back as well with Unique and Sunny. I mean, the positions are just really not good. Yeah, Rexa never end Ketsai here. Uh, in the city, posturing very, very aggressively. And now that Rishek is finally there in his 279, I think they're going to pull the trigger and possibly pull the plug here for Nystry in this round. We can already see Dandley taking the crossfire position behind the stone here. They know that this is a lot of red tanks here that are going to be driving into their positions. Yes, the tanks from the middle will probably be able to provide a bit of crossfire, but obviously Indel, the smart team that they are, are simultaneously going to pressure that. Never mind that. Uno reverse card being pulled. Nice try pushing over the middle. Nice try pushing over the middle here to try and find something. They will find Monster at the very least, but in return, the 9-0 line getting pushed immediately by Invil. Nice try here now. The ones that feel like they have to do something. Rex are falling though. Zuza and never moving on towards Sani and leaving Dandy and the Chieftain alive for the moment. Now Konrad Piotr coming back in as well to clean up that Chieftain and even Rishek coming from below the water thinks that he is a submarine. Uh, an infill submarine for that matter. He's going to get out of there where I've seen even the greatest of uh, players drown in their 60 TP. So good stuff with Risha Kihan. Beautiful stuff to make it out of the water. Um, are you okay, Ki? I um, uh, Yeah, just smiling and who's also smiling is Invil firmly in the lead here in this match. Gun advantage, HP advantage, positional advantage, everything going for them. I mean, as soon as Rishek makes it out of the water there, uh, they are in good if not great shape and now nice try they're probably just wanting to extend the match but uh the or the game rather to be able to give them a bit more time to think but they should still have the faster attack from cliff and this is now a cleanup a mop-up operation as some would say and uh yeah Invil is doing a beautiful job here uh they should be getting everything yeah hannes uh he's trying what he can do in his EBR, but he simply doesn't have the DPM uh, to do anything meaningful here at this point. So Invil, once again, they are gonna equalize the scoreline. It's gonna be two to two. It's gonna be two to two. And I gotta say though, Kihan, I feel like Invil, even though the scoreline is two two, is the better team so far. I mean, maybe that's like to say, but their wins are very, very convincing. Both the cliff they won and this Fisherman's Bay, they totally outplayed Nice Try. Well, Nice Try had to claw their way to a win in the last round. If you the first Fisherman's Bay, 
I'd say that could be won by either side. I mean, and even the first cliff had some potential. I mean, the first, I would say the first cliff, it was just, you know, uh, unlucky that the way that Indil approached it with like the split and nice try to full advantage. And the first Fisherman's Bay, Indil basically did that weird push, which enabled nice try to win the game. But yeah, I do agree with you, Indil currently in the rounds that they win, they are just uh, so much more. Yeah, like consistent. They look so much more stable in in the way that they take their games. But in the end, that doesn't matter if the scoreline is equal. Like, right? If it doesn't matter if it's close or not. If you win a round, that's a point for you. Um, so yeah, equal scoreline here, and uh, this means that we are headed for map three, which is going to be Prokhorovka. First of all, though, uh, we are... When I think of Night Shrine and Prokhorovka, I just don't have happy feelings. Oh, I don't know why. that is a big truer. Um, but yeah, first of all, let's take a quick look at the post-battle stats here. And uh, yeah, we're essentially going to find that the double two six eight four for the side of Nice Try didn't really work out. Did not work out there this time around. I mean, I took hand, what, three shots, four shots, maybe this round? Um, um, three, three, two, one. He, yeah, but he's, you know, the initial one, he, the initial one was probably our injury because, you know, this is a side of a 279, so the shell went low. I would assume that the shell went low, mm. right? Um, but outside of that, the initial move from Info was great. It was, it was great. Nobody was spotting that outside pipe. Right, nobody. And before Itok saw it, it was too late already for him to pull back. Yeah, I think so... it was actually someone from the middle spotting it through like a gap in the houses, but Itox would have seen it like three seconds later maybe, so at that point in time it was already much too late. And I'm also pretty impressed that they were even able to get the STRV into the game. Like, uh, for the STRV to work, obviously the enemy needs to be driving into you. And Indel was doing such a good job in the city that uh, basically Nice Try felt they needed to do a move on 1 2 where that SGRV was waiting. That being said, though, Cliff 1 1 split, Fisherman's 1 1 split, just not the way we expected it to. Uh, Prokhorovka up next, and you already started to uh, talk about it basically. Ah, the, the teams that get FC'd by Banter and Prokhorovka, it can be genius, but most of the time. Uh, it looks like insanity. Yeah, sometimes I don't know. It, it, sometimes it looks great. Sometimes it looks terrible. It's it is hard to say entirely how it's gonna work out. But I think Magic is like more as the main one now. So maybe we'll see less Yak Panthers. Um, yeah, on the other side, obviously Invil as a team. Invil in 15v15 on Prokhorovka historically uh, has been playing. I, I want to say ultra aggressive sometimes. Basically, it, it doesn't matter to them whether they are attacking or especially when they're defending, just over pushing the middle immediately, just bringing it straight uh, to the enemy. And most of the time looking good doing it. Uh, but I think last Clan Showdown, they sort of ran into a roadblock with the Radon team. Um, but we'll we'll have to see about it. Uh, Invil, I am, because Invil is one of those teams that can really switch it up, right? Whenever you're playing against them, you don't really know what's going to happen. Are they going to play, like, super, super aggressive? Are they going to play in your face? Or are they, which they can also do, uh, just, are they just going to park the bus? You never know. You indeed never know with them. That used to be a different thing. Sometimes they were just always playing aggressive, no matter what. But in recent times, they have become a lot more, um... Controlled, versatile. Per se. They can they can play aggressive in the beginning and then let down the pressure, and then just wait, 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 and actually take some really good defensive positions. But because they played so aggressive initially, you're now down four minutes. Yep. Uh, apparently, there is a restart that's uh, gonna happen. Um, I think uh, the uh, the team of Nice Try called for it, so maybe one of the players disconnected. Uh, but yeah, it was even like during the countdown so no one had moved yet um other than that i think as soon as the lobby loads we will be able to see the lineups uh in the uh battle results screen yeah but once again prokhorovka i don't think we've really talked about it as a map yet it's obviously vastly different from cliff and very very different from uh, fisherman's bay as well simply because or for the tanks 
uh, that uh, that you're taking, right? Because on Cliff, obviously, you're focusing on that mobility together with with firepower. So like thinking 260s uh, on on Fisherman's Bay, you're focusing on armor and firepower. Thinking 279s and Prokhorovka. Once again, you need that mobility, but you also uh, yeah, you need to be able to to dish out damage over. Uh, reliably over a large distance uh, especially or essentially when the when the enemy is pushing over with like five six line nine or seven over pushes yeah we don't really see those uh, five six line nine or seven pushes anymore though they're kind of a thing of the past people started doing it with the sixties nowadays as well mm, but that is always painful like when the enemy is in position those tend to fall apart pretty pretty quickly but yeah here we go with the lineups so nice try coming into this one with a singular EBR, one SGRV, one CS63, double Chieftain. Then we have five 279s and we have four 260s and an ISM to round it off. An ISM to round it off because why not? Invil on the other hand, double 1 to 1B, double STRV, double EBR, double Chief, triple 260 and four 279s. That is a lot of snipers. Mm, uh, yeah. On, on top of that, uh, I think there is going to be uh, another restart, this time being called by the side of Indel, because I think one of their <laughs> players DC'd. Um, so, yeah. I mean, we want the most ideal playing circumstances for both these teams. Um, maybe you can call their next restart. Yeah. Uh, I I think never in my life have I called a restart. So uh, yeah, I've we'll see. I, I remember a uh, tiebreaker against Hive, mm -hmm. and um, it was uh, Ensk, and uh, the whole tournament issues with my computer, bro. <laughs> and on the tiebreaker on Ensk, it also liked. So like we called for a restart because mm. my, my computer, you know, like the game just crashed. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously we we just already saw the lineups, and at least from the side of Invil, that is a lot of uh, long-range firepower. Is I think what I would call it with double STRV, double one to one B. Um, so I don't yeah, think yeah, I don't think we've ever, I don't think we've seen that in the recent times. I mean, double one to one B, great heat pen, three fifty. I think it's 350, yeah, 350. A good mobility as well, but it's like four of those tanks that are not pushing mm. in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, like the SGRV is never ever, like as soon as you see an SGRV pushing, you know it's over. And like even the one to one b like yeah, you have a great gun, you have an okay-ish turret, but like your hull completely sucks, so you can't really push with that either. You don't stand uh, the chance to, to really bounce a lot of shots in a, in a push. You're essentially meant to be that sniper tank. I remember a tournament from the like what almost feels like the dark ages it was very much in the past where Inville uh, also brought an e50m to like play at the hill and uh like essentially snipe from there uh so Inville has brought curious tank choices in in the past as well yeah i remember Inville bringing an e50m on prokhorovka in a tech tree only tournament and he went down to 5 hp after the first volley <laughs> 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 i think we're speaking about the same like occurrence but yeah um anyway hopefully uh we'll be able to go into the game now here and uh actually experience some gameplay <laughs> the third time is the the, the right time third right time we already saw let we saw the lineups already but let's go over it again wbr double scrv double one one b double chief 47 and three to sixties for Inville. And nice try coming in with one EBR, one SRV, one CS, double chief, five two seven nines, four two sixties, and the singular IS seven played by Floki. So yeah. It's gonna be interesting. And we can see that they're actually playing the game. So nice. Uh, let's go here. A nice try sending uh, two seven nines towards the middle. Uh, they're sending one CS and one Chief towards the hill, and everyone else seems to be going towards the one two line, including the EBR that they have. Obviously, double EBR versus one. It's always pr 
very, very difficult for, for the singular EBR to really uh, have an impact. That being said, the one EBR, I think double EBR already spotted. That should be signaling to Hannes that the one-two line is wide open and ripe for the taking, especially since they have a lot of tanks that could be able to support him. Um, but, but look at the I7, though. Oh. Look <laughs> at Floki. He Loki. tried to make that position there, but... Yeah. Did he even make it? No. I think he did make it. No, no, did he? No, no, no. I don't think so. No, I think no, he's I in the ditch. So. Yeah, he's definitely in the ditch with that HP. <laughs> <laughs> in the gutter. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be able to pull him out of that ditch either with a broken engine. No, no. Um, yeah, Mentos now spotting out Magic, spotting out Loop Hannes with a semi-aggressive bush, uh, bush on the 1-2 line and Magic taking one shot of damage in his 260 for taking the uh, for taking the ditch uh, in that EF23 position. And now Floki, I think he's starting to make his way away from there. <laughs> slowly, um, very slowly. Floki goes slowly. Yeah. And the thing is... Um, Currently, we see Indel. I think the uh, it is swap. I think North is defending on this, uh, so I think the overlay might be wrong here. But uh, yeah, Indel seems to be very content with just sitting there. The Indel is indeed defending. That is correct, Kihan. I'm glad you're paying attention. Um, I'm glad that Nice Try didn't immediately go down into this. Okay, Floki got owned. Let's push one too, because I swear to God. Every time I see a nice try, they're pushing one too. At some point down <laughs> there. I mean, Madagascar also always ends up pushing one too. But the difference is, they make it work. Every time I see a nice try pushing down one too, they die in a horrible death. Yeah. It, like, there was a couple instances where essentially nice try, they, they just got completely slaughtered. So I think they're kind of switching it up here, sending Denly Boeing already on the hill. Floki finally has his engine back, but I don't think he's really going to have an impact uh, from from down there. And the 260s by nice try now starting to rotate. That being said, though, uh, Indel also sending an STRV currently towards like the AB90 positions. And that one uh, really can be a tough nut to crack, especially since you're not really going to spot him immediately. So, uh, yeah, Monster now with a peek in his EBR. Does he, is he going to see Dandley Boeing? Not currently. Ah, there we go. Monster spotting out Dandley, but not really. Uh, looking to shoot at him. But yeah, Monster being there in that bush essentially means that Nice Try, as soon as they uh, start pushing, they are going to be spotted. And I don't really agree with Invil's decision to have like three heavy tanks directly below the hill, because that is three heavy tanks that can get collapsed upon. Uh, one, two, three, four, down these five. Floki can't push. They don't win that fight, though, yeah. Mm. Especially with if the SRV you, from the back If you lines. push it, okay, so they have three there and an ABR. You push it with five. They have a 279, a D8, an SRV at A0, and double ones from B at A6. The, the, the thing about having three tanks here is that if you get pushed by limited forces, five is still kind of limited forces, you just flat out win that fight. Mm. Like, you're not going to be killing it on time. If you, because they, you have the issue, right? If you drive past it, Kihan, they repush your hill. And you lose the SCRV and whatever stays behind, right? And if you stay there, you just get farmed from everywhere. You, you also have double 279 aiming from the middle, by the way. Konrad and Orchek, they're also looking. Yeah, the, you can see that on the minimap. I mean, that's going to be a brutal crossfire to push into double 121B, one, two, one, one SCRV, one, two, seven, nine, And then you have like, what is that? 7,000 HP to chew through with the 260s. So, yeah, you might be able to almost remove one with one salvo but uh, meanwhile you're just gonna take shots from left right center um that's not gonna be a fun time yes banta and itox might be able to do a couple shots as well but now it's skirpy and never that do get spotted in the middle for this push this is prompting the one to one bees to relocate uh the 260 is also starting to uh, to fire on them, but now the zero line push actually starting to come into effect. It's going to be five tanks pushing here. Is it going to be enough? The double one to one B kind of caught out of position right now, not really able to support a whole lot, but that SGRV is going to put in the work. He's going to put in the hurt. 
He also made a shield even for DJ and Rexar to try and stay alive for as long as possible. But Rexar, they're not having a good time. He's actually able to get crossfired from multiple sides. Now DJ, the last one standing here. And this push has actually worked wonders for Nice Try. Those positions of the 260s key, I don't think that's ideal. They should have stayed under those things. And yeah, the double one one b definitely out of position. But look at DJ. He's getting crossfired from that little town from Neva, from Sunny, from Scrippy. It's not better than just sitting in zero line and facing those five guys. Uh, that being said, though, nice try sort of making it work here. That triple 260 is gone. Never in the 279 has also dropped. And now the 121B is faced with the yeah, almost impossible task of repushing. That being said, though, Magic Horse, both of them dropping uh, somewhere else on the map. And now the triple 260 facing off against the double 121B that have to drop back into T sec into the Chieftain to give support. But now White Rock with the overpush here, putting the hurt onto Zuza, who's down towards a three shot. Same for Ketsai. And now White Rock and Unique pushing over Zuza and Ketsai. That's oh, the Focus fire is not really there, but Zuza does fall. But this SCRV right now from Piotrix is doing so much damage in return for this, though. Gotta say, Piotrix farming his life away in that SCRV. He is spotted, he is spotted out as well. Mentos falling in the EBR, though. That is not good for this Invil side. And I think this timing here from the zero line push from Nice Try was perfect. Gotta say it uh, at that moment in time. It was perfect for them. The 121Bs weren't in position anymore. If they were in then the 260s, Kihan, I think they were just in a bad spot. Yeah, the 260s were in a bad spot. And also the 121Bs sort of got caught in the rotation, right? They weren't really in the correct positions to farm onto that push. So the timing really making this the best possible push for a nice try at that moment in time here. Piotrick still able to survive in his SGRV unique. Are dropping down towards 825. They need yeah, to take... needs to die. Piotrix needs to be taken out of the picture here, but, like, I don't really... Like, Mirik went away. Mirik was the guy dealing the damage onto Piotrix, and he simply left. Yeah, Piotrix is just killing the entire team from Nice Try right now. They only have to go slightly lower on zero line to be actually able to shoot that, and he just did an extra 3k damage, I think, where he never should have been allowed to do this. I mean, Rishik does get spotted out in D1, but the issue is there's nobody to shoot that right now. It doesn't matter if the SAV is spotted, if there's no tanks to shoot him, and Nice Try falling to pieces here. I mean, the zero line push, great, but allowing Piotrix to do what seems to be an incredible amount of damage should never, ever be allowed. Mirek should be focusing on the SCRV on a one shot. I think Piotrix did what, two, three K more? Yeah, it, it was like he was allowed to do shot after shot after shot. And Unique was just left out there in the open by his buddy Mirek, who was just like, yeah, I'm not good to deal with that. And Hannah is now getting picked up by Monster. So Invil actually able to come back into this game. Like I thought Nice Try really did uh, did have it, but like Invil holding on, holding strong. And yeah, that crucial, those crucial more shots by the SRV from A9, A0 uh, are I think a huge part of what made Invil most likely win this round. No, this is great for Invil. I mean, if Mirek drives down, Half a square, Kihan, to E0. He can still shoot the middle, yeah. right? And he can also kill the SCRV because he gets ren render upon him, you know? Yeah, exactly. And like, even All that, he needs is render. Even, even then, you can just ping out of render and then Mirek shoots onto the ping. No, like, he just needs to move closer. Yeah. Like, he honestly just needs to move closer. It's an SCRV, Kihan. It takes you, what, 20 seconds to complete this whole move? Yeah, it was... I mean, you know, you're not going to... Like, the fact that if, if Mirek kills Piotrix, Key, he saves his team like 3,000 HP there. It's mm. more value than him doing three shots on the middle, you know? Yeah. It's actually game losing. Like, the fact that Piotrix was allowed to fire him is just game losing. Yeah. I, I don't know how else. But I gotta say, though, this infill shield uh, on 9 0 line, uh, also game losing. I think if they just sit in position, like under the hill on zero line key. Yeah, right? I think I think they all they went win there. That fight. Yeah, they, they all win went there. That fight, dude. Yeah. If they go under the hill with the even with the one one bees being out of position, but imagine the one one bees are indeed peaking that lower corner where they died, right? And you have one or two tanks left under the hill. With the SRV farming. I think they just flat out win the zero line boost, no? Yeah, yeah. I think they all went there because they were greedy, because uh, they wanted to shoot onto the seven line push by the 279 and the CS63 that was pushing it, and they wanted to do damage on that. Uh, but I do agree. If they just sit safe on zero line, that they can't be shot from the middle, and then it's just a 5v3, uh, but you have a lot of guns to cover you, then uh, you might end up winning that fight uh, when instead, like, uh, yeah, they caught a good timing, 
but in the end, um, <laughs> I mean, both teams sort of trying to hand the win to each other uh, felt kind of weird. Um, I don't, I don't know. Really. I, I wonder uh, how much damage uh, the SGB actually dealt. Piltrix, seven k minimum. Um, we'll we'll see. Uh, okay, eight k and two kills. So I mean, it was pretty close, right? Yeah. I mean, Mirek did 5.3, but doesn't matter. He, he needs to do that one more matter. shot onto the enemy. He has SRV. to just drive down and kill the STRV. Yeah. That's all he has to do. It's, it's literally all he has to do is drive down and kill. Piotrix did 3k when we were watching him on a one shot. Mm. All because there was nobody in zero line peeking him. Yeah. So, I mean, 3,000, 4,000 HP there is in this kind of game is huge. Yep. It's. Huge. It's massive, actually. Yep. So this means that for the first time in this match, Invil is actually going to be uh, up a point here and also on match point as uh, Deserved, best actually. of seven. And yeah. In the overall scheme of things, that, well, you know. I would say 3 to 2 right now, the scoreline ref reflects sort of what we saw. Um, and yeah, they're gonna do everything to win their own Prokhorovka attack um, and make it 4-2, which coincidentally would be my prediction. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll have to wait and see. Uh, if you're a nice try, that's a tilter, though. <laughs> because no, but like really, if I you're see one what of those you did there. <laughs> it wasn't even intended because I don't make those key and handy jokes <laughs> like you do. Um, uh, but if you're one of those heavies, like if you're unique or sunny or anybody there, you are pissed mm. that nobody killed the STRV. I mean, I, he, spot, he was spotted the entire time. I think that Mirek even did a few shots onto him. Blinds and... out of render because you don't, from where Mirek is on the edge, you don't see the red line, but it's like 20 meters difference to actually get the shot. Yeah. And you can still shoot the middle. Yeah. I mean, they just didn't do the important damage at the right time. Uh, and I, I still stand by my previous statement that uh, actually Nice Try did catch a very, very lucky break with the timing that they got on the zero line push. Um, but yeah, all of that said and done. It is match point for the Polish team here. It is match point for Invil. And Nice Try, they need to show up or go home or rather go to the lower bracket because obviously this is still upper bracket there is still room for mistakes there's still a safety net for both teams here um but you don't want to drop down because as soon as you are in that lower bracket basically it's it's very hard to make a comeback it's very hard to uh to yeah, like make that run um into the grand finals and then actually take it i think it very rarely uh, do we see teams actually come back, at least in Clan Showdown? In VOT7 it's more prominent, but uh, in the Clan Showdown tournament, uh, tournaments, normally the team that goes through the upper bracket ends up taking the tournament victory. That being said, though, uh, round number six in between Nice Try and Indel Nice Try, bringing WBR1907, one Chief Dane. We have triple 260, one I7, and the rest is 7279s. 7279s, two, seven, two round it up. Um, seven key. Uh, seven. Not. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, seven. Correct. I can't count. Mm. Four to six. Is on the <laughs> other hand, though, I was looking at the other wrong line of the <laughs> uh, four to sixties and sixty-seven eyes. Uh, what chief double S W that's double S T R V again, man. Yep. Uh, this time on the attack, which is kind of weird to see, but um. Yeah, uh, Mentos, Floki right now on the eastern part of the map. Uh, actually, the middle EBR by the side of Nice Try spotting out the EBR. Monster and Floki exchanging sh uh, spots, exchanging shots, but no damage taken. And now Invil here with the 279s in the middle. Bunter getting pushed into that ditch, however, with the I7, where he's going to comfortably sit. Hannes, meanwhile, though, with a spotting run with the EBR. Needs to be careful not to take any damage. Horus there from the middle trying to snipe onto the hill. And Hannes to take the first damage of the game. Oh my god, never with the CVS. A 9 or 7 and it's 2080 HP. It's like field mods. Oh, monster. But, ooh, nice little monster. But he has the CVS optics set up, etc. Just to get that info in the 907. Um, for Infill right now, this is great. 
Again, this is looking great. I mean, looks like Nightstrike wants to push one too. The late, it's like unique as a bait, right? If they see presence on zero line, they will push out one two. But what are they pushing one two into though? Yeah, the double STRV, Piotrix, the gun probably not even cooled off after the last round. Um, we'll have to wait and see whether Nice Try is gonna feel like they are pressured into some sort of reaction. Bunter there taking a shot in the IS7. Not sure who was able to penetrate him there. But um, yeah, in build so far. Uh, trying to gather information, chilling out. The EBR on the zero line just got unspotted again. We can see the other EBR by Inville is right now in the little village in the middle of the map, and Hanna is now driving behind Neva. Um, I mean, view range does stack in the end. Maybe they know something I don't. I don't understand why you play double EBR and then NO7 with uh, spotting equipment. Um, I cannot help you. It's a bit too much on the. That. Like if you want to play, if you play something like this, you usually play it with like uh, only one light or with CS that does it. Because um, it feels like a little bit overkill to have double EBR and then a 907 that has none of the actual shooting equipment. Um, but this is a gamble to the max from Nice Try, right? It's, uh, it is gambling on the fact that the zero line will get pushed by a lot of tanks. Or 1-2 gets pushed. And if 1-2 gets pushed, that's great for Nice Try. Although I'm not sure how good it really is for Nice Try. Yeah, it's a 1-2 trap, right? It's a 1-2 trap. But if Nice Try repush, what do they repush into? Mm. Double STRV. Uh, that is a super early spot onto Orzek, though, here. Hannes should be bailing probably in his. Uh... Uh, in his EBR rather soonish. We'll have to see how many tanks actually get diverted into the ditch to kill Bunter here by the side of Inville, that is, obviously. Um, but yeah, that was a really, really good spot by Bunter. And now we have to see how much damage they actually take. It looks like they're sending everyone on towards Bunter and DJ bearing the brunt of the damage, getting set on fire by Ice Sunny. Yes, Bunter is gonna die, but DJ is gonna fall first. DJ is going to fall for that, so it's a one-for-one one trade with Orchik. There comes the repush from Nice Try, and this is what we were talking about. It's a repush into double STRV, back into the hole, and that is a disaster for Nice Try. Already, immediately, they lose 1 to 60, and yeah, the STRVs are getting spotted out. Piotrix and Rishek on half HP, but they should be surviving this onslaught. They've already done their damage, however. That is the most important part. Now, Skirpy pushing in, but it's 279 leading the charge, and Nice Try, their one to trap seems to have put them as mouses in their own trap because Artux and Panu are not going to be winning this fight by the looks of things as Mentos is going to come back in as well and you still have the double STRV covering at all times. Yeah, that double STRV right now putting in the hurt. Danley Boeing not really able to peek as Mirek does get picked up by T-Sec in the ditch here. And yes, Zuza is down to 2 HP, but Rexa probably the next one to be reloaded to take out Panuka here, removing another gun from the lineup of Nice Try that are now really trailing here. Inville only two tanks down so far. Nice Try with like half the HP of Inville. And Inville indeed, they had a rocky start into the match, but as it progressed, we saw them growing ever stronger and now with a very very good Prokhorovka attack are going to finish off the match here 4-2 to two is going to be the final scoreline as the last tank by nice try are getting picked up yeah Floki is doing the spotting but who is he doing the spotting for it's Hannes so both of those EBRs probably not really able to penetrate the enemy tanks frontally even and yeah unique trying to hold the position here but uh, in the end Inville coming out strong on Prok yeah, uh, uh, yet again, nice try and Prokhorovka, not a marriage that is working out. They're going to definitely be looking for some counseling, uh, some guides. I'd be filing uh, for a divorce at this point. Yeah, well, you know, you have to get married first to file for a divorce at the end. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, good stuff there from Infil. I will say nice try ran into the brick wall for some mysterious reason. I mean... Okay, sure, we can see everything, and we know that the double STRV is in 1-2, but you can be guaranteed that there is at minimum always one STRV covering. Minimum one covering. And they have two of them. And the other one can't really be on the hill because they would have noticed already. So why repush back into uh, like a setup team? 
Yeah, I'm not sure. Like they didn't have the information onto the SGRBs, and I think they Doesn't matter. completely you can disregarded it. them. Um, you can predict it that yeah. at least one is going to be there. Uh, so in the end, yeah, I, you said it already perfectly during the game, right? They set up a trap and walked into their own one. Um, that was well read, I guess, by Indel. Uh, initially, I was a bit concerned, like whether they were only. Not... Sorry, yeah. No, I'm just saying to continue on what you said. The trap, right? Like the, that's just an oversight from Night Shrine, no? Like you, okay. How much time was left, Jan? Five minutes, mm. right? Five, is five minutes a lot on Prokhorovka? Uh, it can be a long time, but not really. In, in reality, is it like does it give Invil a lot of time when you commit it with what was it four to sixties into the hole that can't really run away? Yeah, yeah. The th I guess with five minutes you can do one more rotation and then. But that would take the two sixties leaving the hole, then going back towards zero line to push off zero line. That would take at least. Two minutes. Two minutes, minutes, yeah. And then they just yeah. need to all out commit. Um, so, yeah, I think they were probably too focused on, on that one two line repush. Like too it was, stuck on their initial plan. Yeah, too stuck on their initial plan. And that was what ended up costing them the game. But I think uh, that should be all of us for the time being. Because there are two more wonderful people that are probably aching to say something about it. Analysts, take it away. Well, thanks a lot, guys. And Invil is taking the victory in the first match of the day. Toxic 4-2. It was not the easiest match for them, but they're going to be moving into the finals of the winner's bracket. I mean, it went uh, pretty much as expected, right? Uh, Kian and me actually got our predictions correct. Um, every one of us rooted for Invil on this one, and uh, they took it with the 4-2. Uh, some of the rounds were really close on both sides. But uh, nice try, definitely have shown once again why they are in the playoffs. And we will be seeing them again in match 3 today, facing off versus Madagascar. The winner from last tournament, so also not the easiest task. But uh, we'll see if they can live up to it. Well, yes, if there was one match you wanted to uh, win, it was that one. Because uh, facing then uh, Madagascar in the loser's bracket as a last chance is definitely something that is going to be very hard for them. But they will have a bit of time to prepare because uh, we will have Aura against NTMG next. The second match of the day, second match of the winner's bracket, the German team against the uh, Ukrainian-based team. What's your take on that? Um, well, I've uh, actually played with one of the Aurora members yesterday, Benzo, and uh, he told me that, in his opinion, Aurora is uh, the strongest German squad that has yet been presented on the stage. So I'm going to be very interested to see if they can actually deliver upon such a statement and maybe take the victory from no timing. I mean, I would tend to agree with that. Uh, they just have to... Uh get the performance done and probably pick one victory to uh, prove that now but against NTMG I guess they're favorites but uh, you will have to be careful about this team because uh, they can also perform and beat anyone in uh, this uh, tournament and talking about this team NTMG you can uh, probably have a look at the community predictions between those two teams I think that the community is going to go Aura's way because all of those players they were very known especially in the raid team in uh, the past and uh, I guess the people from Europe are probably going to go there with actually 82% NTMG. That's very surprising. It almost uh, looks like there's an issue there because I would expect the other way around. It's uh, indeed very interesting, especially if you consider that Aurora has some very prominent names in there, some uh, ex-fame players yeah. uh, that joined the big stage once again uh, in another team though. We have players like Jekifa, uh like Scatter, like Feli, that are really known to have been played on the highest level for quite some time. And 83% uh, for no timing doesn't seem to do our what justice. Well, let's take a look now at the replays of the first match of the day, the one we have seen between uh, Nice Try and Inville. To have a clear look at what happened, we're starting on Cliff. Inville was on defense, Nice Try on the attack. And that split from Nice Try was probably the better. Yeah, nice try, uh, really anticipating very well what Invil will do. The BZ strat, very interesting to see. Um, 
that one being brought up because that kind of a new tank but not really working out for him but it's not fast enough to catch the CSs and we don't really have the combat capacity to fight the chieftains so Invil just ends up fighting versus this huge overmatch here in the donut. Yeah, you could see at the end, Invil, uh, they tried to repush with some tanks from the top, but they also split, they had some tanks coming from the F-line, some from the E-line, and it didn't work out. Uh, on the other hand, you could see that nice try. What made it work for them is that they had almost their entire team at one spot, at one time, no splits whatsoever. Invil, they had some tanks from the top, some tanks at F1 at the rock, some tanks also in the 1-2 uh, deep in the back, getting some sniper. Uh, for example, the 50 bees at the start. And well, nice try. Good start. Uh, good counter to what uh, Invil was bringing. But next up, that shield, that was not really well executed. No, the second round, I don't really like what nice try does. Uh, they don't take anything off the map. They basically gamble fully that uh, Invil will send some forces to the 1-2 and they can catch them. That didn't happen. And we saw Hannes and Panuka just dying for free in a desperate move to get out of the donut. And now it's already pretty much done they are completely out of position they can't really regain anything they will be forced into this awkward kind of mid repush uh, which is just very hard to pull off yeah you could see that it was easy for invil to push around the hill uh, get uh, the kills uh, on the bz's and also on the strv and at the end desperate free push from the side of nice try they had to try something but it was already over you could see that invil they are a very experienced team and they're capable of making the right calls right decision uh, in those uh, situations so good stuff from the polish team getting back 1-1 one, one. and next up on fish bay there is this push coming up from Invil on their defense, and I tend to think that it was not the greatest. They could have uh, held and tried to work around the time, uh, but nice try. They actually worked pretty well around it with the repush later on. Yeah, Invil didn't really have a reason here uh, to put the aggression towards the enemy, and they paid for it with a lot of HPs. They lost the complete city because of the repush that you just mentioned and they are left with no positions whatsoever you see the complete a and b line is just free to take you from the cs from nice try and since they are not being covered the 279s in the middle just get repushed on the outside so it's really just a cleanup game for nice try to play I mean, it was still uh, close if you take a look at the time. Uh, nice try was forced into going you know, with this uh, triple cap at the end. And Invil, they were having very slow tanks. Too slow to also rotate back to towards like B1, towards their base. So good stuff uh, from the side of Nice try on the attack. But next up on the on Invil attack, I can say that they pretty much countered what uh, Nice try did. Initial damage on the 260 in the one line and straight up pushing the, C the city actually managing to take the kill on Itox pretty freely. Yeah, very smart of them to kind of push the outside so Itox doesn't spot them early enough. Nice try being forced into the rotation, but the rotation is already too late. So Invil has the overmatch, they just have to clear the corner. Nice try has to try to take control somewhere else on the map. So they have to repush this middle, but Invil obviously is ready for that. So they just get punished a lot and Invil builds up a huge HP and gun lead. Yeah, well, good stuff uh, from Invil. You can see that uh, in both rounds they they won. It was a pretty a pretty clear victory. Meanwhile, uh, from the side of Nice Try, that was not the easiest, both on Cliff and uh, Fish Bay. And uh, you have to mention that uh, this Invil team is probably the most uh, experienced overall, so that's not surprising. But next up on Prokhorovka, Nice Try on the attack, Invil on defense. We had the triple two sixties. Uh, they tried to make some sort of shield, but there were some tanks of around the seven eight line. Uh, lines to actually get the shots done so that didn't work out well and i really want to put an emphasis here on the lineup from Invil. you have two stritzwangs and two one to one bs so a very very light lineup um nice try also does manage to pick up the positions there we can see and it looked for quite some time as though nice try may be able to pull this one off but um actually i think it was Rishek or piotrix in the srv from a0 yeah, Piotrix, that was just able to put so much more damage in because Nystra were just not picking them up. And for some reason, you have Nystra repushing the 1 2 line. I don't really know what was going on there. Uh, so Lip just puts himself into a very vulnerable position and gets repushed for free. 
I mean, that S tier Viet A0 should drop much faster. I don't know what happened with the tanks over uh, F0 that they didn't get the angles anymore to uh, shoot him. But uh, Pure Tricks did way too much damage. And uh, then uh, Invil over the 1 to 6 line, they played really well, managed to get the kills. But the final rounds of that uh, match, Toxic, you could see. Uh, Daki mentioned it, that was a pretty uh, standard trap from the side of Nice Try, actually trying to bait him into pushing over the 1 2 lines. But Invil. They didn't push all the way to the one-two lines. They actually go for banter first, and I think this is a major mistake from the side of Nice Try. First of all, the shooting is not on point. Only killing one tank with almost your entire team aiming there is just like a failure from their side, skill-wise. And on top of it, that three push is completely unnecessary. They have all the information of the world. They know where Invil is. There's like six minutes left to work with. They could have held the one-two lines. They could have even rotated some tanks over the six to zero lines and completely lock uh, that run in defense and force Invil into some desperate pushes. So. I think in here, in Ville, they have uh, proven to be the uh, better team, uh, making the greatest uh, decision against uh, this uh, nice try roster, and at the end they deserve to take it. It's also quite a big statement to basically tell nice try, yo, we know that you want to uh, put us into a situation where we have to push the 1-2 line, and then you just push it, and you, you still just win because you're simply better. It, it almost feels like they, they wanted to go out there and say, hey, we don't really need all of these fancy strats, a bait, whatever. We're just straight up better than you. I mean, I think it was interesting the way they played. Uh, I recognize a bit the strat uh, Redon used uh, in the past against Invil and uh, won against with uh, some tanks around the hill. They decided to go for some sort of bait and having the 9-0 lines empty, uh, more likely focusing around the 1-2, but this repush well, they probably copied and were not very sure about the rotations and the reactions they had to pull. So, good stuff from Inville moving into the uh, finals of the winner's bracket. Now, second match of the day, we have mentioned it's going to be uh, MTMG against Aura and Toxic. That's probably enough from the two of us. We have our casters to introduce that match. Ken and Daki, take it away. Well, hello there, and a welcome back at the caster's desk. First of all, Insane and Toxic, thank you for the wonderful analysis. And now we are headed into match number two. It's also an upper bracket match, so that means best of seven, and it's going to be played in between the German team of Aurora and then I think mostly Ukrainians, right? Of no, no timing. Yeah, correctly. Um... The scoreline of the top top right is already predicted, Kihan. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Production yeah. knows more. <laughs> uh, I think I predicted for no timing for two actually. So wow. You know. Well, maybe we go two wow. for two here. Maybe we go two for two. We'll have to wow, see. Wow, Kihan. But yeah, that's just not okay. What country are you from? Uh, Germany. But like you know, what I country is Aurora from? Uh, Germany. Uh, but, you know, I'm living in Czech Republic now, so uh, they can't really do anything about it, can they? Uh, did you honestly just change with the wind? It's uh, unreal. <laughs> but yeah, here you can see the lineup of the Aurora team under their captain, uh, Katya. Who do you think is FC in Kalium? Baron. Baron, okay. So uh, there we go. Obviously, a few very well-known names, uh, for example, Feely and I think also Alex. Uh, they used to play in, in Fame when that was still a thing. And now Community... Alex and Fame? Alex, I think, at least one tournament, no? Mm, not to my knowledge. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I, the ones that were in Fame were Baron, uh, Feely, Scatter, Feely, Benzo. Anyway, community predictions here, going basically two-thirds in favor of Aurora, 32% going the way of no timing. And uh, yeah, I can't, I can't wait what this match is going to hold for us. Uh, I guess we can head over to the uh, pick and ban uh, to see what we are in for here. And we see Moro and Himmels taken out of the picture, respectively. We're going to start with a clean and crispy Ensk. Heading into Fisherman's Bay, and if we get there, it's going to be Cliff and possibly Sand River for the tiebreaker. Possibly Sand River for the tiebreaker, but uh, interesting maps here. Ends coming out. No timing. Loves playing this map. They, I mean, I talked with Toxic beforehand. You know, that doesn't doesn't know the team too well, so I told him that you know they played a lot of advances. They were top elo in advance at some point, um, but Ensk is like their map that they. 
Anskin Himmels is the map that in the campaign they played uh, the entire campaign, actually. They are a good Ansk team, though. Um, but that is like their bread and butter, I would say. Ansk, it's the map that they definitely have the most experience on as a team. Yeah, and we also saw Aurora banning out Himmelsdorf, so basically the other map that you just mentioned. So Aurora definitely aware of the strengths of NTMG. Uh, we'll we'll have to see how this one plays out. Obviously, Ensk, uh, one of those uh, very very nice maps to watch when it comes to just straight up brawling. Um, those rails that we see the control over them is gonna be uh, important, and we can see the predictions actually with a single outlier. That is myself four to two for no timing, and the three of you going with four one, four two, and four three victories for the German team of Aurora. Kian gets a few predictions right and starts being exalted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you have to make it interesting sometimes. Um, but yeah, Aurora definitely already also a proven team. I think the internal sentiment in that team, if I heard that correctly, was that this is the best German team that ever played together. We'll have to wait and see if that actually holds true. And I think we're about to see the lineups here. Aurora coming into this one with the uh, quadruple 2684-11279 setup. Interesting. No timing. A little bit more normal. Triple E3, double E4, a mouse, and nine two seven nines behind it. It's a V4 against E3 and E4s. And E3, uh, B, uh, E4, V4 being the formidable tank that it is. It's very good, especially since equipment 2.0. Um, but it does not beat out E3s. It's likely not playing the rails. If they are, I think they will struggle against these E3s when they arrive. Yeah, because the 2684 works well against people that have like 330, 340 pen, but obviously the 3s have 375. So we'll have to wait and see. There is a very, very aggressive move though coming out by those E4s, triple e, uh, V4s, triple V4 driving towards Tansov here. That is a very, very aggressive push uh, down this rail here. They're gonna find Tansov. Are they gonna care about him is the question. The shots bouncing onto reroads. Finally, one does connect, but obviously they cannot really turn onto Tansov. No, they can't. And now these V4s are kind of stuck in no man's land. Rerolls there in his V4, kind of out in the open by himself, already surrounded. And like I said, the V4 is a great tank, but not when it gets flanked, not when it gets killed. And now the pressure on the outside immediately, Destroyer and Katra driving into the guns here from no timing. They want to clean up zero line as the repush comes on towards the V4s. The blow up from Profus to the Kalium. Now Yolo is the next one on the chopping board for the no timing team who seem to have a good read here in the beginning of the game of what Aurora was bringing as a game plan, what they wanted to do. I mean, five can't win the 1v1 there either. And you can see the HP, which was even for a long time, is now starting to falter. If zero line gets cleaned up though, Aurora has a chance, a position to play from, but they need to pick up Vladislav. They need to pick up Dreamer, Kacha there on the outside, down towards the one shot. Timmy is now going for an impact and Dracopa forced down towards the building since they're low HP. Shelby and the mouse coming in as well to pick up another kill. If Timmy can win against Dreamer here, they have something for the Aurora side. But no timing does have that HP lead and does have the possibility to repush their own base. Yeah, Dreamer now taking another one by Timmy, who is doing a formidable job of staying safe from those tanks that could uh, do side shots on him. But because the 279 there got Amorak, he's not able to completely stay safe. Down towards one shot now, but the HP favoring no timing here. They also have more guns available to them. Maybe Dreamer on the outside is going to fall. So that is possibly opening something up here. But five is too close here. He can get repushed. And indeed, the E4, Katsunk is able to pick him up. And now Ricochet in a 1v3 here on that rail with no one able to help him and as soon as he goes down that is going to spell disaster for the team in the baby blue here for aurora simply because they're running out of steam yes they do have sort of crossfire established but like no timing they simply have the hp they have the guns to just snowball it away there was a potential there for the side of Aurora, but Five and Timmy had to run away. Five and Timmy came in early because they saw everybody on the field, so they wanted to establish crossfire on towards the no timing tanks, right? But then there is this moment in time where the game stagnates, which we saw on zero line, right? The game was starting to stagnate. It was about even a bit of HP lead for no timing. But then I said they can repush their own base, and this they could do at any moment. That's exactly what they did. That double two seven nine of Five and Timmy. No, not five and uh, ricochet 
there's nobody to cover them. So you sometimes you have to cut away and take some distance, right? Sadly, Ricochet was committed in the second reel. No way out for him. And Five was staying there to hold him. But they have to back off. But I wouldn't say that's like the only reason they lost. I think there was a major desync issue there between the V4s pushing down that uh, V4 rail, as I call it, um, and the team pushing the actual zero line. I mean, it felt like Simon rerolls was already dead by the time they started pushing the field and Kalium didn't survive much longer after that i think even rerolls there too far forward potentially because like he drove past the 279 got crossfire from two sides i mean the the thing is like they have to keep going as far as they did because only there are like those um yeah, those spots within the rails where Does there's he like though? no he train cars. Rerolls, I always call him Simon. Rerolls can all, could play next to that building there though, on the mm. seven line he had. He didn't have to drive that far down. Then maybe that just means that Kalim gets focused instead. But, you know, you can see it as well in the damage. He has zero coming out and Kalim has two shots. Um, yeah, it was just... I, I mean, also, like, from the side of no timing, it was, like, a good reaction to what was happening, right? They recognized they immediately had to repush those 2.684s, which it was they a good did. opening. That was a good, a good opening, opening by them. And uh, then the thing is, like, I, th I feel like Aurora put themselves at a disadvantage with the 2.68 before uh, pick anyway, simply because, yes, it does work well against, like, 279s, Chieftains, stuff know, like okay. this. But against for holding just lanes, they're perfect though. Yeah. Because two seven nine speak into them, they do six fifty. That's why you can see, you know, Yolo and Benzo having those four K damages each. We're rounding up here. Um, they do have four K each, but again, they lost those V fours down seven too early for the rest of the team pushing. They did clean up zero line, but I will say they're more lucky than anything to clean up zero because if the two seven nine that Timmy was using as a shield dies more towards the red line mm. instead uh and the other 279 is just playing next to him i don't remember who it was like the no timing 279 is just playing next to the wreck on red line timmy is never killing that guy he, he's never killing that and they're not winning the game if zero line stays alive for no timing so no timing they didn't make the greatest positions on zero line either like they you know normally you make like a, a group of tanks right so you're all kind of shielding each other and you can't get pushed close to the red line does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. you're like safe you're like safe there and they didn't do that and that almost brought it back for aurora yeah but in the end like what i wanted to highlight is that you know the the v4 it's a good tank against two seven nines but as soon as the enemy has like three four five of those e4s e3s right then it, it starts to become difficult because your armor simply stops working effectively uh, and uh, then you have to hide in like these uh, uh, these spots where there are no uh, cars or rail cars essentially um, so yeah I, I I feel like you need to supplement the V4s with something that can uh, play well against an E3 uh, which most likely is going to be another E3 right but they simply didn't do that so uh yeah, but I don't want to take away from the reaction by no timing as well. Like, that was just spot on. No, their opening was great. Going full field in the beginning, <clears throat> I think they kind of knew what Aurora wanted to do, mm. right? Because they did open with tremendous amount of tanks towards the field. But that is then, and this is now, Aurora, triple 268 V4, triple E3, 1 E4, and 8 279s. And for the side of no timing, once again, Shelby whipping out the mouse, then we have a double V4, one E4, and triple E3, and that is going to leave eight 279s as well. Yeah, the 268 becoming more and more popular here for the teams. It's interesting because obviously the tank was not changed. The E3 was changed though, but the V4 was not changed. And you can see Aurora also opening quite heavily towards the field in the beginning, but no timing here. Just looking for the cross. Mm -hmm. And they did destroy the walls. So they are getting quite a few spots here. One shot of damage being dealt. And that is good spotting here by Dreamer. That does see a whole lot of the Aurora team that is driving towards the rails. We can see a lot of shots, a lot of punishment being dealt out by no timing. But Love, on the other hand, in his V4, also taking over 1k. 
Yeah, you can see YOLO here just pressuring down. There's nobody even at A0 for no timing, which is pretty interesting. Sank there in his E4 could get caught out for this. And he takes one immediately from YOLO, 662. Ooh. Gets retaliated back for 826, though. So the trade, they're going the way of the E4. He's going to be back in off. But this is kind of how no timing also played in the campaign, Kihan. You wouldn't know because you never played ends. But this is kind of how they always were full city basically mm. and for the love of us with magic steam we we we, we hardly ever beat them for some mysterious reason uh, let's see if aurora can do better though because they are defending aurora indeed defending and they are a set up here five needs to run that... five needs to run by now uh yeah he's not gonna survive there but he he's He's probably thinking that he can stay safe, like he can sort mm -hmm. of uh, set no, up his tank, but like there is crossfire coming in. So the 279, oof, five, my dude. Yeah, you're doing damage, but you're taking so much in return. And oh, down towards a one shot, does get eliminated. Shut up and that's, shut that's, down. That's an experience there, I would say, for five. I mean, he's new to the team, so we cut him some slack, right? But uh, any player in that position of K1 should know that if the enemy team is pressuring down one, two, three, uh, by being behind the building initially, it's fine. But you cannot hold there because there are angles. And even if you were miraculously angled up against everybody, there is this thing called high explosive ammunition, which would also delete your tank. So that's a bit of a mistake there from five, gotta say. Um, like I said, we cut them some slack. It is his first playoffs, uh, but it, it, you know, I, I also don't know why you would put an inexperienced player in that position. And now the crossing by no timing is going to be important. How much damage is going to be dealt? It seems Barely. like not a lot. Barely any. Like Sprite went down to 900, but for the rest of them, they just got a cross, and this is an issue now because yeah, Aurora is up HP, but now you can see Impact. He's the first one. Fabian is the second. Dracofather Kacha is the third. These angles that you're currently playing from in those two seven nines, it's annoying. It's frustrating because you're getting peaked from the front. You're getting peaked from behind. You're getting eliminated one by one, and it's starting to come to a question, Kihan. Would you rather play Ensk against a team that loves Ensk though? Because Aurora does did let this come through into the map pool. And right now, they're being schooled on how to execute from the city. Yeah, exactly. No timing, just picture perfect uh, advance there in the city. Just clearing up corner after corner after corner. Methodical is once again uh, the word to describe it. Katya there, the last remaining 279, the last remaining stronghold in the city, but it's actually not a stronghold anymore. Down to 32 HP he goes. Wednesday starts to peak, picks up the kill, sending another one to the garage. Nine tanks only remaining for Aurora. And now NTMG, the team in red here, starting to close in. Yes, Winter and Tribuck taking huge shots by the E-tanks, but it doesn't matter because now they're on reload. Old Kings even adding insult to injury, getting Aberek picking up Wednesday before falling, but it's not gonna matter. NTMG, I mean, HP is still sort of even, but the amount it's of many guns. It's too many times, Gihan. I mean, sure, Aurora could do a miracle here and recover. They're finally getting some kills up, but look at Timmy. Takes 1.6 almost immediately in return for this, down towards 622. Magnus finds Dreamer. Destroyer finds Love. Okay, you know what? They gotta be careful here. And no timing. Might be throwing this ever so slightly. Master now taking one from Benzo as well. Baron's coming in as well. HP evening out. Maybe Aurora has found a second win because no timing might have gone too far. Benzo has to peak, has to delete the E3 here. He does do that. Shuts down Master. It is this four man squad here from Aurora as Ricochet falls though. I mean, Kihan, it's still so many guns. 4v8, Destroyer takes one as well now. They have to trade positive on every angle. Yeah, they do need not doing to that. delete those shots, but you can see tons of, and more importantly, the block. Uh, still 1300 HP on his tank. And the thing is, Vladislav also still 1700, so he can trade all day long against Destroyer here. He could possibly even push that E3 wreck uh, onto the cap and just cap behind it. That's putting on the pressure. They can play with it from the mouse. And you know, you see where the mouse is, where the block is going? So the block plays from the mouse, the other guy caps which is kind of what they're doing now, because the block is just right behind the mouse, you see? Yep. And they hold the angle. That's hard position to take out without K-Line. Yep, we can also see in the northeast there, the uh, Benzo, the 268 before, is spotted on that rotation here. So they have information essentially on every single tank by Aurora. The V4 now despotted and the E3 also despotted, but... The <laughs> 
the E3 is not going to rotate, right? And now with Cap being started here, Vladislav just safe. And we can see Destroyer trying to, like, third person aim this one? Uh, not really sure. Takes one shot of damage here, though. Down to 55 seconds. And at any point in time, right, NTMG, they can just put more tanks onto the Cap Destroyer, taking another one. The HE also keeping him tracked in place. A reset does come through, but now Vladislav can just peek. And it's going to be the block to pick up Destroyer. And, uh, yeah, no timing. There, there was a point in time where I was doubting what, what created by themselves. Uh, yeah, so. they were. If they drive the mouse into Kapki hands and they don't like think that it's won, because it's a mistake in tournaments to think that it's won. You know, you're like, oh man, we have so many tanks against so little. Game's over, mm. right? If they just drive the mouse onto the Kapki sideways, put a guy behind him, it's always over. You know, like it's like, in no world do you almost get back if you're Aurora. So for Aurora there almost something happening because no timing gave it to them um but uh, outside of that not looking good for aurora right now yeah and cap does complete so they let baron live to probably tell the story of how they almost came back on ensk uh, but in the end it's going to be a 2-0 scoreline currently for the team of no timing that really do show that when it comes to ensk they got it nailed down pretty well I, like I said, I'm not sure why. Maybe Aurora felt so confident that they could play Ansk, but I would say that it was a mistake, IMO. I um, mean, they banned Himmelsdorf, which also is a map that No Timing likes a lot. So maybe. Yeah, but still, though, Kihan, like, Ansk is. Ansk is Ansk. Having experience in Ansk is a. Ansk is Ansk. Ansk is Ansk. Ansk is Ansk. Ansk is Ansk. Knowing your angles, knowing your executes, and knowing how to play on Ansk. It's a bit different than Himmels. Everybody knows how to play Himmels in essence, right? I mean, all the players are from, familiar with it, mm. right? Uh, but Ensk is this kind of map where if you have that this experience and you recognize the patterns and you know how to execute. I mean, they're playing a very standard game from the timing side on this north side. Playing a very standard game. They didn't even have A0, but they're making it work. And I would say that playing from the buildings with those two seven nines from the aurora side it's just not good enough i mean it's like very very standard you lose five immediately and yes it was his mistake it was his mistake for staying there um but it's aurora should know that they're gonna get pushed by everybody in the city game like they know what's coming yep uh especially since like they had all the info because the v4s went so deep so early on the rails uh, that being said, though, Ensk now 2-0 in the way of NTMG. Uh, it was their pick, so now we are once again headed to Fisherman's Bay, which is Aurora's pick. Uh, we said before it's kind of defense-sided, pretty hard 1-1. Then, you know, in the past match that we just saw, <laughs> both the attackers won. So uh, maybe we'll get surprised here. Um, but yeah, Aurora, they need to step it up a notch because... Uh, we say it every time, right? They're not in trouble yet, but one more point, and then they are. Yeah, 2 zero is not in problem yet, uh, surely. <laughs> it is a big trouble already for Aurora, IMO. Yep. I mean, Fisherman's Bay 1-1, one, one, then we are at a 3-1, and Cliff, to be honest, can be a 2-0 map. So if we are holding it with the Aurora team here, not everything is lost yet, but it is looking kind of grim. 2-0 and... Honestly, no timing just looked super, super solid with what they did on Ensk. They didn't do anything exceptional. They just executed well. And sometimes that's just all it takes. Sometimes it's indeed all that takes is to play a very standard game and execute well, and they're showing that. But now Fisherman's Bay coming in, though. Aurora have had some good games on Fisherman's Bay. So maybe they can bring it back to zero. Let's not speak too soon. No timing just had what I think is their favorite map to ever play, Ensk coming forward, and I don't think they're going to be seeing it a lot this tournament. Mm. I mean, if you give uh, the option to no timing to pick it, they will, but a lot of teams will probably ban it against them after what we just saw. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't think we'll be seeing it very much in the rest of this tournament. Yep. Um, now, lineups, though. Aurora coming in with a singular EBR played by Alexandras. Then we have Triple V4. 1 to 60, and that is 10 uh, to 7 nines. Uh, no timing, Triple Chief, EBR, 
and then 11 to 7 irons to round it up. Yeah, so Aurora, I would say with the slight, mm, slightly heavier setup, even though with the 260 they also have a pretty fast tank, but yeah, that triple chieftain is probably going to be what's going to be rotating for no timing. Um, both sides with an EBR, so Dreamer and Alex are probably going to exchange spots here. Dreamer going in very, very deep. Uh, does not take damage for it, however, and that was very good because he did spot Alex trying to sneak into the bushes on the two line. He did sneak, uh, he did not manage to sneak into there, but you see, you no know, timing is immediately pressuring the city, though, Kihand, with a lot of two seven nines, but it doesn't look like big pressure, just like. Uh, control you know they don't want to run into what Inville does mm. where they are able to push up the city well magnus did get pushed up in his 260 though and now it's 279s facing off against 260 in close quarters combat and there the 279 should be sort of favored i think magnus for the time being is able to stay safe there but he can't really expose himself too much he does try and peek uh but yeah i uh, if i were in his place i wouldn't be peeking the 279s that being said though ntmg starting to pressure up in the city. They have Trybach there with 1279 being spotted, being sort of the information gainer. Uh, yeah, he does <laughs> uh, HP for info, the classic key and trade. And now Magnus here starting to try and peek against the 279s, but little does it net him except a loss in HP. Uh, loss of HP indeed coming into effect, but he has the position and that's all he's there for. Um... But I think we're just going to be in a stalemate at this moment in time. I mean, no timing is going to feel it out. They can't really push the city. Yeah, and like the 2684, once again, the perfect time to be standing there to just, you know, every time a 279 peaks, bam, 650 into your face. Um, <clears throat> I don't think no timing can realistically, like at this point in time, push over the middle as well because they just don't have the information as to where the enemy tanks are and they might be tref uh, driving into humongous crossfire. Uh, so what we're seeing right now is probably them deliberating Shelby walk in his um, Chieftain does get sent up. I think the block with a good out of render HE snipe or blind shot rather onto Kalium. Uh, that being said, another one, 110 HP. That's better than nothing. Better than nothing, but it doesn't really do much. I mean, if he keeps doing like 80, 100 damage, then you only need like four to five shots to to basically how many HP do you think they have like max 10 10 yeah something like that so that would be eight nine hundred damage maybe even a thousand if he hits every th single one but yeah no that one did not connect i mean if you're stuck there doing nothing anyway like why not do it uh but obviously it's not going to win them the game uh katya there now spotting out try and yeah not really able to get anything done the block there keeps blind firing has five more he left Five more HP, so 500 damage again. Yeah, but you don't really want to like use all of it. You want to have like at least one remaining if you need to finish off a super low HP 279 that's angled up or something. So at least that's what I would do. But then again, there's a reason that I'm casting and not playing. So um, it would be great with HP ammo, though. I mean, <laughs> is that a compliment, though? No, <laughs> <laughs> I do it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so far, Aurora confidently just, you know, chilling and no timing. It's up to them to make something happen and they try to do that, though Wednesday not really with a good trade, does one shot of damage, takes two in return. That's not what you want to do. That is indeed not what you want to do. Vitalki here really trying to pick up Magnus, so gets a good connection out there on towards him. He needs to be careful from one, two. Can't get shot there, though. Magnus there is trading it out rather well. One more connection on towards that 260 from Vitalki. Can he pick him up? That's the big question here. Can Magnus somewhat save Vitalki down towards the one shot? But he does shut down Magnus. But the payoff there was pretty significant, though. They thought they could die against HG at any moment. Mm -hmm. uh, now, try once again uh, wanting to see that 8 line against the 268 V4. But the thing is, I think he gets spotted before his spotting points actually come out of there. So he should probably turn his turret right to be spotting with that if he peeks like that. But I think YOLO is always going to uh, hit the shot there. So, uh, no timing. I mean, they got 
a pickup, but they paid a lot of HP on the Talke in return. So right now... He's alive, though. He is alive, yeah. Uh, barely, but he is. But I think... Yeah, but alive, he can still do tricky damage. Yeah, no timing now. Uh, five minutes, half of the game already over. Are deciding for a rotation. They're sending the 279s. That looks like towards the middle, I guess. Or are they baiting me? Um... They're definitely lining up for something. Maybe they want to take the the uh, route that we just yeah, saw. But I think Dragonfire is spotting that though. Um, yeah, he should be right. But yeah, that is basically the main force of NTMG. Those two uh, six two seven nines that are driving through now. Is Dragonfire spotting though? Is the question. Uh, yes, he is. All right. So try Crystal Hellmind. All of them are spotted. So this gives like a window of ten to fifteen to twenty seconds for the Aurora tanks to adjust, especially Yolo. Uh, should be driving back right now. Yeah, he was completely turning around, so he's running now, and that's the difference, right? Uh, no timing. Uh, at the same time, driving over the middle, starting to push there here, starting to take some damage for it, but they are going to have the higher ground. They are going to get the higher ground, but they have done pretty well here, not taking too much damage, just establishing positions, forcing Aurora back, but the time, though, Kihan is sticking. Drakafather in his 279 seems to be in a little bit of a predicament, though, uh, by the looks of things. I don't think he's in a great spot anymore. Not sure if he was supposed to run away further or not, but it does seem like he now has Crystal and Master pressuring him um, from the inside lane. Mm. Even Vladislav trying to get involved, but there's a building blocking that shot, though. Yeah, exactly. Trino also uh, starting to drive up. Crystal taking another one by Jakova, who seems to be doing fine there. I think he has something to angle his tank up upon. And uh, now NTMG sort of getting stuck in this uh, in this city approach here. Yes, they're starting to whittle down Jakova. Ooh, good shots, though. Uh, down to 1100. But so far, they're not really taking any significant kind of ground. Uh, Old King's now reversing into the ditch with his 279 as well. We can see Hell Mind, Tansov, Vladislav, they're all sort of hesitant to go in there. Uh, Old Kings, though, taking shots from the middle, taking a lot of fire, actually. So the trade's going in NTMG's way, at least in the northeastern part of the map, but that's a lot of Aurora tanks to be pushing into. Yeah, and Vitalk is actually left by himself there on one through line on that low HP 7-9. But now here comes the push in though from that Chieftain. He's immediately dropped towards a one shot uh, on towards the Benzo and five position who are just chilling right now. And it's a 9-0 pressure now. But now you can see no timing. They had an equal HP, but now they do not have this any longer as this push is getting absolutely dominated by the side of Aurora. Some good shooting there. Solo defense coming out so far. Middle now being pressured as well from the timing. But they have no openings. They have no positions to make this work from. Yeah, exactly. Now even Aurora contemplating whether they should be doing a counter push in this northeastern part of the map. But I think the fire that Timmy took there convincing them. Otherwise, Yolo should probably be going behind the stone here down towards the two shot. Timmy taking fire as well. And right now the trades seem to be fa uh, favoring uh, no timing, but they're still down 3k. Now Try also falling in his 279. Destroyer getting Amorect and taking two or even three to do one shot of damage. So uh, right now those three tanks there shouldn't really be peaking. The HP starting to get closer again. Yeah, closer, but time is always ticking. Time does not forgive you for anything. And now they finish off the block in the middle though. And still Benzo and Five are alive on that middle part of the map. And there's a lot of HP here still for no timing as well involved into this fight. But the double V4 is covering tremendously from the back. Now Baron getting a little bit of crossfire on towards him. But all of these guys in the middle, they're afraid to peek. Because when they do, they peek into the V4. And V4 with 360 heat is not losing it over distance now. 57. Seven seconds left here for Aurora to finally pick up their first round. I don't think there's a world in which they let this go anymore. Kihan, gonna be real with you. No timing taking a little bit too long. Losing the timing, even a good shot there, even from rerolls on towards stance of who reverses back into impact from the middle, who's one HP from being on a nice HP. But now Alex coming in with the EBR, picks one off, drive by, coming back for another one. The repush from Aurora as well. It will be done and dusted. Even if no timing was holding this, the time is just not there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Aurora have done a good job and destroyer there uh, with the play onto Hellmind, who is probably gonna drown 
Um, yeah, Destroyer not letting him back up here. And that is going to be a lot of dead tanks here in the water. I mean, two seconds. Yeah, there you see it. Old Kings just killed YOLO and Aurora just killed it on the first Fisherman's Bay. They are finally able to put one onto the board, but it's still no timing who are in the lead 2-1 to one currently. And we have to keep in mind that it's now going to be them who are going to be defending. Yeah, and they're now transitioning over to Fisherman's uh, defense, so um, that's going to be quite all right in their minds. Uh, look to put themselves on match point, and Aurora finally gets something going. In this game, it was good. They wasted a lot of time. They held the positions. Um, no timing started to struggle. They weren't able to clean up the middle. Because they never had 1-2. If they had 1-2, they could probably clean up the middle, but they never had that because initially they lost 1-2 and they never wanted to retake it. Yeah, also they were like uh, V4s deeply established in, in the 1-2, which uh, is a scary prospect to be to be pushing into you because you never know how much is behind there, how much fire you're going to take for trying to push in. And you need to find like this uh, this correct amount of uh, of of tanks to basically be able to overwhelm but not overcommit and then be stuck with a lot of tanks where the enemy is going to be just you know uh, overtaking you anywhere and everywhere else on the map um but yeah two to one now aurora with signs of life in uh, match number two of the day but uh yeah besides i said it already they're going to be switched well, and si signs of life is a big word yeah and it's still fisherman's bay defense yeah right I mean, let's let's not go too far into the. Wow, it's still Fisherman's Bay defense. There is a good chance that Aurora loses this Fisherman's Bay attack and it's looking against the match point. Exactly. Uh, so and no timing. They know perfectly well how to play Fisherman's Bay, and yeah, in the end, it's still a mountain to climb here for the German team of Aurora. Uh, no timing. Even though they just lost, they kind of made it close. Um, definitely, still to this point in time, the better team. Uh, at least up until now in this match, but maybe Aurora are able to turn it all around. Maybe. That's a big way, though. Let's see how many V4s Aurora picks. I think they're in love with V4s, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> better love story than, you know. Uh, and what key hands? Twilight. I never watched that. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just know the memes. Uh, bro, I, listen, I remember you sent me a picture of your room and you had like Jacob uh, posters all over uh, it. I say, what? That is, <laughs> sir, that is absolutely fake not, that news. That is 100% the shoot, actually. Uh, he hadn't even walked on all four and pretended to be what? a wolf, man. That's how far it went. It's, what the hell? Trust me, the videos are a hard watch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute fake news. What's not fake news, though, is the Aurora lineup. That is a singular EBR double 268v4, uh, five chieftains, and that is 7279s. 7279s, seven indeed. No timing, then, on the other hand. What? <laughs> a triple 907? 268 before an EBR and the rest is 7 nights. I don't remember the last time I saw triple 907 on this map. I... It's an interesting choice to be sure. Um, still though, despite the triple 279 no timing actually with the HP advantage from the start of the game, like uh, 1k. Um, which is probably down to the Chieftains because they have like 200 HP less than the 279s. Also, interestingly, some of the NTMG 279s uh, with 2750 and a few others with 2840, so probably different equipment choices. That being said, though. Experimental HP is 50. Uh, that being said. Bond HP yeah, is yeah. 40. That being said, though, Alexandros with a very, very deep spotting run through that one line, establishing it for rerolls and YOLO needs to be careful not to run into those 2684s and no timing, taking very, very aggressive positions in the middle from the get go. Benzo needs to be staying safe. Jakafar, same thing for him. He needs to get close to one of the buildings to be safe from those 279s. And now big problems here for the side of Aurora because the tanks in the southwestern positions actually do get spotted out in the open. Yeah, Benzo, they're just in absolute uh, bad position right now. Drops to 681. I don't think he's done a shot of damage so far either in that 279. I mean, he pulls back towards the outside now. Takes one more, takes another one. Benzo down and out. And the trade was just not there for uh, Aurora. I mean, even Jakafa there 
down to 1.4 and Aurora from the beginning of the game in a really rough position. Exactly, and Jakafar, with that lower ground position, needs to be careful. Yes, there are those buildings that he can hide behind, but no timing, actually, with a very good opening, extending the HP lead to 3k, uh, almost, and, like, yeah, picking up Benzo in the process, dealing some damage on the Chieftains that were in, like, K2. Chieftains have now rotated, so, uh, good stuff here from no timing. Good stuff from the timing and a pretty simple move as well in the middle that's been done quite a few times. They're now starting to pull tanks back away from it as well into better positions from away from the middle. And Aurora will have to retake it somehow. Yeah, Aurora here um, seem a bit stunned by uh, by what now timing have pulled off here in the first two and a half minutes. And uh, yeah, they're, they're basically the forces that they're going to be pushing with. They're still really on a hold position currently. Um, all the chieftains down there in the southeastern part of the map, um, yeah, just not really doing a whole lot currently, and no timing. They have that two six eight four one hundred love in the same position that we just saw Yolo last round. Uh, very very effective spotting position if you're able um, to to spot the uh, approaching forces through the other street like what we just saw. And I think Aurora are now reconsidering once again where to attack. They're starting to rotate Timmy. They're starting to rotate Impact towards the western part once again, but. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll have to see how much they actually want to do. Dreamer taking a blind shot in his EBR, so that's going to be good for Aurora. But ah, it's still hard for them to get anything done. And also those triple nine oh sevens, like as soon as the B one two seven nine gets overrun, they can just run away, run to the hills. But if the middle gets pushed by Aurora, they'll be farming a heck of a lot. Yeah, and then I just rotate him back across towards one two, but they have to retake the middle. Uh which looks like they're starting to do that. Um, driving towards the middle with triple chief, double 279 here, but is that even enough to to retake the middle is the question, because like they're gonna be taking possibly even some shots on the approach, and then they're fighting sort of equal numbers while having to be careful from the A line. Uh, we'll have to see one shot taken by try though. Uh, in that middle, so good stuff by whoever did that, and up until now, the Aurora tanks haven't been spotted. Actually, the double 279 there needs to be a bit careful now from the side of NTMG as tries down to a bit below 1k here. Jakafar getting spotted as he approaches. Try taking another shot, and finally, Old Kings, uh, Destroyer, Ricochet, all of them starting to reveal themselves, and now for NTMG, they need to make the punish worth it. They do need to make the punish worth it, but at least Aurora is now retaking the middle, which I think was very important for them. It's weird that these tanks from NTMG haven't pulled back, haven't taken the damage for retreating Kihan, because now they're just getting overrun. Exactly, you can see Sprite going down to a one-shot, Hellmind getting peaked by Impact now, down to 718, has a pile of rubble though, and in comes the repush on the one line by NTMG, the triple 907 starting to drive in, Katya trying to get out of it, but he's gonna get shot down, and rerolls the next one on the chopping block, yes, those 268s are good, but not when they're getting flanked. Not when they're getting flanked indeed, but in return you have this mid-pressure coming back out from Aurora to pick up these tanks and no timing, really donating back this round towards Aurora by not retreating back out of that middle part of the map. And they are now in a quite difficult position themselves as they're going to lose the middle, but not just the middle, they're also going to lose the city after that double to 7 n and V4 that is still there is going to get overrun in return. I mean, sure, they'll pick up on two, but they're going to give up too much for it. Exactly, Vladislav here just getting completely torn apart by the team of Aurora. Now the tanks that have won the middle are setting their sights on the NTMG remainders in the city. Yes, NTMG are going to clean up the one line, but it's only 1v4 that they're going to get with it. It's only another Chieftain that's probably going to do a, at least like two or three more shots and NTMG now firmly trailing in basically everything in this game. Still three minutes and 45 seconds to do it for Aurora to put this onto a 2-2 scoreline. 
2 2 scoreline from Aurora and no timing. Masters of Ensk, but there is some work on Fisherman's <laughs> Bay, you could say. Their initial move was great across the middle, but then you have to start pulling. You just accept the damage, Kian, you know? Yeah. Like, you're just like, whatever. You take a few shots and you just leave it. You just leave it and you reset. You killed one guy for free and you just take back the normal defensive positions. Aurora now has to retake the middle, but that's going to take some time and then make a push. Yep. Now Winter and Block starting to drive away. Essentially, at this point in time, they're just trying to, you know, draw out the time uh, to uh, to make it a longer attack. But I think they had a pretty pretty uh, like fast attack on Ensk anyway, so uh, that one should be counting. So yeah, Aurora, very very convincing um, gameplay here on uh, on Fisherman's Bay, and obviously. Ensk was super clean by NTMG, but in the end, I think it's more impressive to pull off a 2-0 on Fisherman's Bay than it is to pull off a 2-0 on Ensk. Uh, yeah, but at the end of the day, good for Aurora. They needed this a lot. Right. Uh, I still don't understand what the Triple 907 ever achieved in this game, though. It repushed the 1-2 Lion <laughs> while the game Great. was being lost. Uh, great. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I just, you know... Uh, what am I supposed to tell you? That's just how it was. Um, but yeah, two all and uh, equal score lines. Probably happy faces on the side of Aurora currently. Avoiding, uh, very importantly, that NTMG make it to match point. And now they're probably going to be a bit more relaxed, although they shouldn't be, because uh, yeah, the next upcoming map is going to be, if memory serves me correctly, Cliff. So you should always be on edge when you're being there. But first of all, I think we'll take a look at the post-battle results to see who from Aurora was farming the most. Uh, the Red Line King, Jakifa. The Red Line King, Jakifa doing 5.7, unbelievable. And he wasn't even at the red line, I don't think. So even more impressive. Um, but yeah, good stuff by Aurora. And I think no timing. They sort of, yeah, they sort of ran into the middle and then ran into a mental wall because then they, they were just sitting there contently because nothing was happening. And they didn't see the approach uh, from those tanks by Aurora that were retaking the middle. And that was just absolutely catastrophic because then as soon as your tanks in the middle are getting slaughtered, uh, then you need to make something happen somewhere else. And they essentially opted for like city push and one to repush at the same time because they, I guess, didn't know what to do at that point. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, but I still think that uh, no timing should have left the middle. Uh, or at least like take better positions with the tanks there, like take more defensive positions from which the 907s can actually help you, because that was also a big problem, that the tanks that were in the back couldn't really help the NTMG tanks in the middle. Anyway though, uh, Ensk going 2-0, no timings way, and Fisherman's Bay going 2-0 Aurora's way, which now leaves us with at least two more rounds, uh, which are going to be... Uh, played on Cliff. Obviously, we see that Aurora picked it, but that deep into the pick and ban, um, basically, you can assume that both teams are going to be fine with playing it. Um, yeah, but I, I, I'd say Aurora is favorite on Cliff. Mm, we'll have to see. Um, there were some... How to say this nicely? There were some Cliff games in the past by the team of Aurora, which um, have made me very, very content or uh, sorry, very confident about their ability to throw, namely rounds against Invo. That was hard to watch back then. Uh, so we'll have to see if they repeat that or if they don't throw on the cliff this time. Uh, I think we're just about enter what will be round number five in between Aurora and No Timing. Remember guys, this is upper bracket, so whoever of those two teams does end up losing the match will still be able to prove themselves in the lower bracket. But there's still two more rounds to decide about this. We're going to get both of the rounds on Cliff and see what comes forward from this uh, kind of a game between these two teams. Aurora and No Timing, all to play for. Um, 
Currently, you would favor Aurora again, though. You know, coming 2-0, being 2-0 down, recovering 2-0. Um, and then coming back is just great for them. Yep. Uh, once again, slight technical issues by one of the players, but I think we should be just about ready uh, to to jump into the round. Um, that being said, uh, you watched the entire group stage, I believe. How did Aurora approach Cliff there, and how did NTMG? Well, the only there? game I remember from Aurora between on Cliff was against Invil, where Invil sat one two and never decapped. But it like it's it's kind of hard to judge too much <laughs> from that. Um, yeah, we'll we'll have to see. Uh, I think. The match is just about to start, or the game rather, is just about to start and then we'll be able to see the lineups. Personally, I'm uh, very curious if we're going to see more BZs because they sort of didn't really do well in in uh, match number one. Uh, but yeah, we're actually going to get a few. So triple BZ by the side of Aurora together with six 260s. Then we have triple CS, uh, we have double 907 and once again, they seem in love with one 268 before as well. Uh, yeah, they seem to love it that before. No timing, then triple BZ, double CS, and EBR, and the rest being 260s. That's a lot like um, Madagascar. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, no one with the Giga Chat 15 260 lineup again that we, I think, saw last tournament. But yeah, let's go. Aurora with the split here sending uh, CSs, 907s, and BZs towards the middle and the 260s together with an EBR towards the lower side. Uh, split by no timing, sending the 260s plus the EBR towards 1 2 as well. Everyone else is going towards the middle, so we'll have to see the EBR actually super, super close towards the 260s. Dreamer taking one shot of damage here and no timing, saying no thank you, actually to driving into uh, the 1 2 line, especially since Kalium has the 1 2 stone with that 2 6 8 v 4. That's going to be very disgusting to dig out, but now no timing from the upper side with all of their tanks coming in as well into the donut area, and now no timing actually coming from both sides. Coming from both sides, from the lower, from the upper as well. And both these teams having all their tanks into position though. Ricochet and Jackafa there from behind that corner are able to lay some crossfire down. But no timing, pushing back onto the rock and the rock is very important. Alex is going face first with the BZ. But so far it looks like no timing. It has this slight position, but the crossfire though from Aurora is strong. Benzo, Kalium from below. Then you still have the double CSs farming. You now have Destroyer coming from behind as well. And all of these no timing tanks here are just stuck on the rock and when this crossfire works when it prevails it should be aurora coming out exactly benzo and kalium now both committing into the fight and the thing is yeah you mentioned it the crossfire with the cs tanks coming in clutch able to pick off those low hps without without actually having to waste the alpha of ladislav down towards one shot wednesday wanting to get out of there with the boost as well but is gonna crash instead and now the block engaging on towards benzo this is still very much neck and neck but i think aurora is edging ahead more hp more tanks more guns and more kills more guns, more kills, more position than for Aurora in this battle. It was all about the positions working out for them coming into effect and actually shutting down this game because no timing had nobody on the flank on the 5-6 line, for example. The CS is from behind the corner and 1-2 just coming in and farming away at those uh, no timing times who had the initial good play but then just got kind of stuck there at that rock. Exactly, and now the block, the last remainder, does get killed by Jakifa here. And Aurora in the first round on Cliff are going to prevail and are going to be putting themselves on match point. The score is going to be 3 to 2. The score is indeed going to be 3 to 2 for Aurora, who are now on a three game win streak. Um, coming in and are actually looking to continue in the upper bracket. I mean, maybe no timing, it's just an Ensk master race and uh, the rest is uh, well secondary sadly you can't win tournaments on just playing against though uh, exactly now for the uh, post battle results uh, i wonder how much kalium actually farmed in that v4 uh 4k yeah so you don't have the best of like uh dpms with the v4 obviously so 4k kind of impressive in such a short shootout focused game yeah, in such a sh very short game, it's quite all right, actually. Um, good stuff there from Aurora. Um, the EBR doing zero, not really a surprise, I guess. What was the EBR really achieving, to be honest? Initial spot? Yeah, but like he, he went sort of proxy spot 
against the enemy 260s on lower. Like, at the start, that's why he immediately took damage, because the 260s were actually able to hit him. I don't know how he does zero, though. If he just goes back and goes 5 6 line, he actually has a decent game there. Yeah. Not that it would win, but he would actually farm away at the tanks. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the EBR really contributed. Um, but maybe it works out against some, some different kind of tactics, where he can actually, like, assuming no one goes 1-2, then the EBR can immediately go super deep. And do like the pickups, maybe even spot uh, K5, something like that. Um, but yeah, it completely, completely fell apart against this opening uh, by the team of Aurora. And now this means that uh, on no timing side, there is actually going to be, yeah, issues. Like you comfortably, really comfortably go up 2 0, and then like the enemy team starts to get going, and all of a sudden you're facing match points. So, um, yeah, they're they're gonna have to step it up once again. Uh, they are gonna have to win this round. Otherwise, it's gonna be Aurora, who is gonna keep marching uh, down the upper bracket. As weird as that sounds, um, but yeah, the map video already indicating we are probably very very close to what might be the last game in between Aurora and No Timing for now. Yeah, it might indeed be the last one, although if it's up to no timing, this is definitely going to a tiebreaker today. Uh, they need to, I don't know, it seemed very one-dimensional, the last um, cliff. And if you remember the way that uh, Madagascar played that key, the 260s, they also had an SJV in D1, for example. Mm -hmm. And he was farming quite hard. They did not really have that. All right, so I guess we'll take a look at the lineups to tell us more about what's going to happen. Aurora coming in with the a double TVP, uh, imitating Invil here. Then we have six CS tanks, and we... Is that actually six? No, that's seven CSs and six Chieftains. Mm, seven CSs and six Chieftains uh, coming out for them. And then in return, no timing with the double BZ, the 50B in the... What well, seemed wait one two three five eight two sixties triple CS and the EBI. So a lot of medium tanks here by the side of Aurora, but not really down a huge lot of HP as of yet. You can see all those uh, CSs there with the HP, and actually both teams sending everyone towards the middle, save the singular 50B because Sank there is going to try and snipe on towards the approach onto the hill. Uh, that both teams will be attempting. Dreamer already spotting out a whole lot with his EBR, uh, opting out of driving up, actually. And now it's going to be the question, how much damage they actually dealt you? Hellmind driving over, trying to block the CSs. This is a good reaction, but I think some of them got past him. Yeah, some of them, three of them are actually getting past him, but in return, though, his HP traded off, and Jackafather in the TVP staying slightly too long, dropped towards 762 HP, and here comes no timing with everybody pushing in. Rerolls getting picked up as the very first one, but the CSs from the hill have a beautiful crossfire, though. They need to somehow get on the hill, though, for the side of no timing, because this push through, it's not enough. There's too much crossfire here for the side of Aurora. No timing now trying to focus out the guns, but so far, they've lost more than they have gained. They have not been able to get a consecutive amount of kills. Now Yolo going back in towards the middle. Love it, getting focused out. Now you can see No Timing pulling back on that rampart, trying to stalemate the game at this moment in time. As Dreamer in his EBR goes down Ooh. towards a one-shot, Yolo actually shuts him down before he dies. And now, as the dust settles, though, look at the amount of No Timing tanks that are left. It's not nearly enough to win this game. No, they are now trying to boost up the hill with the BZ-75s, and that is going to be a slight problem here for Aurora. But the question is, has the damage that's been dealt already been enough? There is also a CS rotating around the hill, but against the BZs on it, it's going to be kind of difficult to hold. And now no timing, for the time at least, are stabilizing here. Uh, but they're still down a humongous amount of HP, and uh, once again, ooh, Baron actually taking some damage here as well. But this means now that on the hill, uh, the the BZs are going to be facing off against the Chieftain. The BZs are going to face off with the Chieftain, but Aurora has everything, Loki. I mean, they have extra HP, extra guns, they still have the hill. I, I don't really see how Aurora doesn't close this. Um, let's hope for their sake that they aren't 
throwing this one. The BZ there getting a good shot in towards Alex, but this means even more crossfire Benzono starting uh, to uh, to drive and pressure up against Vitalke and Wednesday. Baron going into the hull down again. Um, we'll have to see. Oh, Benzo there with a shot onto Vitalke here. Um, once again, making it to 3k HP difference. Vitalke actually taking another one down to 872. And the thing is, no timing. Yes, they do still have a lot of HP on that autoloader with the 50B, but they're not really able to get him close quarters combat against the enemies. Wednesday now dropping down towards 6 HP. That's even an HE one shot. And Baron just lauding over the hill with his chieftain. Yeah. On the hill with the chief, he's invincible. I mean, for Aurora, it looks to be four consecutive rounds as Alex shuts down another tank in the middle. Old Kings is now able to peek over the mid as well for free. And I think this is the dying moments for no timing in the upper bracket. Exactly. Try that. Taking another one by Timmy. Has to use his rep kit. Old Kings, no Amorak, no loader. Able to repair the Amorak though. And Timmy only with the track shot, but try going down towards a one shot impact. Doesn't want to peek, doesn't want to die, but who is going to die is going to be all the tanks from no timing in this battle here. Vitalkin now also going down towards 399. Focus fire not really on point, but who needs focus fire when you've won anyway? Aurora, after going down 0 to 2, able to put four games on the block or on the on the block? No. On the block. On the, on yes, the board. On the board. That was the... Uh... On the block, on the board. The chopping board is where end no timing is. Because they're going to be going down and out. And Aurora is going to be picking it up. A 4 to 2. Good stuff there from Aurora. A good win. Good recovery after losing Ensk to 0. And I don't think we'll be seeing no timing play Ensk anymore in this turn. I don't think so either. Uh, people are going to ban it against them. There is no doubt about that. But yeah, this means that... Uh... Who was who predicted four to two actually? Was it you? No, I was for one. Uh, for, uh... Insane or toxic then? Either of them. I mean, I got the scoreline correct, just not the team. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> I think we'll take a quick look at the damage numbers, and uh, yeah, after that we'll probably. Oh wow, fifty B is six K damage, but didn't really make his team win. This is a pretty significant result there. But yeah, there's no timing push. It needs to be in sync with taking the hill, though. Mm. That's how we see teams do it. Like, you push through this middle, but at the same time, you have one or two times going on the hill. Because if the CS is farmed down, they lose the hill, right? If there's only three of them, right? Um, if they farm down, they lose the hill. But now the CS is from Aurora. We're just shooting. Yeah. And, like, the... Basically, Hellmind, I think he did a good thing with trying to go over there and trying to block the CSs, but that only works if you're blocking the first ones. If some of them already went past, then essentially you're throwing your life away, I think. Um, but yeah, that was the uh, match in between Aurora and No Timing. Uh, Aurora with the better end of it. But first of all, I think we'll have to wait and see what the analysts have to say about this. Insane and Toxic, take it away. Thanks a lot, Key and, and uh, Toxic. What a performance from the side of uh, Aura. They were down 2-0, but they are taking the victory 4-2. So we will get to see them again tomorrow in the finals of the winner's bracket against Inville. I think it was uh, a lot just a map pick. Ducky pointed this out. NTMG seems to be a very proficient team on Ensk. Um, so allowing them to play that map, maybe not the best idea. But uh, Aurora came out strong. They picked up a 2-0 on Fisherman's Bay, which is not easy to do, and managed to uh, win in a 4-2 manner. So we have both teams from uh, group stage bracket 1, I believe it was, uh, advancing to the upper brackets final. Yeah, well, NTMG is dropping in the loser's bracket and they will be facing Trig, which will be the last match of the day. But before that, we have the first match of the loser's bracket, which is going to be nice try against Madagascar. Madagascar being uh, the team that won the last tournament. They were uh, more uh, known as uh, Aboba or Redan. What's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, poor nice try. They first have to face versus Inville in the upper bracket. And the bracket system is like, here, you get another try. And the tries versus the first placed team versus uh, of the last tournament. Uh, not really lucky for them. I mean, they they gave it a nice try in their first match. They will probably do the same in the next match. 
but I don't really see them coming out ahead. Yeah, I think it's going to be very hard for them to take the victory against this team because this is probably the most dominant team we have in the 15-15 15, 15 format currently. But Toxic, the replays already, we can take a closer look at what happened between those two teams and TMG Aura. Aura starting with the Ensk and not having the greatest time here. Yeah, I feel like uh, this 2 6 8 4 push can maybe work, but versus this lineup, it's very hard. Uh, especially since you will have the tanks in your side, the 268s just go down for free. And if you don't clear the field fast enough, it's, you're going to have a very rough time. And they were not able to do that, so you just see the 268s dying for free, basically. Ducky mentioned it, uh, NTMG is a team that has a lot of experience on Ansk. They are very comfortable and they like to play uh, that map. And you could see that uh, their reactions were on point. They have uh, the knowledge and the experience to make the right calls and the right rotations, and they actually got the perfect ones against Aura. They're countering the 268B force down the 6 line, holding the field and actually making the right rotations at the end back to the uh, real city to uh, get the kill. So good stuff from them, taking the victory on their defense. And then on the attack, it was very standard the way they pushed over the city. But from the side of Aura, maybe that defense was not the greatest, especially with a 5 dropping down from K1 for free. Yeah, there was a lot of small mistakes. You mentioned the first one, five basically dropped. I think he did one or maybe two shots of damage and they gave away the corner control. He did not bail. Uh, and as you saw, NTMG utilizes that perfectly. They are able to just pick Impact and Jekafa, the great red line warrior, for free, uh, closing out the K-line. And basically then it's just a cleanup job because Aurora is forced out of every position they had. Uh, NTMG has so much more guns, they actually have all guns remaining in the battle, Aurora is down to, what, 7 tanks? Uh, it's gonna be really rough to come back from such a lead. I mean, you mentioned it correct, so you could see that NTMG, they had all of those uh, tanks uh, alive that made the difference, they were uh, so much up in uh, that department, all of them on one shot, but at the end maybe a bit overconfident of pushing and uh, giving hopes to Aura, but the lead was too big to uh, give Aura a chance to come back. So it was a 2-0 uh, lead from NTMG on Ensk, but then on Fish Bay, you have to say that Aura uh, got back on track. Yeah, uh, it's a really hard task to actually go 2-0 on Fisherman's Bay because the map is so defense favored. Uh, but Aurora really did show that they were able to do it. They started off well here in their defense. Uh, they didn't really have to repressure in this situation. Could have been close if NTMG had some better positions, but in the end, NTMG pushed into the stale guns of Aurora. Aurora was ready for what was thrown at them, and uh, just a really solid performance. They spotted them early, with Jekifar actually uh, spotting the outside of the city at the start of the match. So they had every bit of time to react to whatever NTMG was trying to do. They just had the good amount of tank left over the city, over the mid, and very few over the 1 2, so that they could uh, deal with the city push. They could also have the 268 V force, the, uh, the red line with the 360 uh, pen uh, with it to make the difference on those two silence over the mid. So I have to say it was a pretty well built uh, defense. And next up on the uh, attack, they found the weakness from the side of NTMG. All of those tanks pushed up on the mid. Uh, they went for the repush and then all also pushed past the mid and that was probably the right call they're gonna lose the one two lines in return but the overmatch is there and aura convincing push on their attack there and uh, uh, i like to talk about mentality in these kind of games because for aurora they lost benzo at the start of the match completely for free yeah. benzo did zero damage and at that moment it can be really easy to fall in this kind of hole and to think oh we're down a gun we didn't do anything in return what are we gonna do but Aurora keeping their stuff together, uh, really thinking about what to do and coming out with this uh, mid push was the perfect counter to what NTMG was trying to do. They cleaned up the city and then just went on to the cliff battle. And on the cliff battle, Aura, well, they have the higher ground one uh, faster on the donuts. You can see NTMG is going to collapse with uh, all of those tanks up here, but the positioning is just superior from the south. Uh, Aura, you can see Ricochet and JKF with the CS is constantly getting the damage done. Uh, they swear with the CS on the mid, a few shots and then joining. And overall, I think Aura, the positioning was better, even though NTMG had the full team here. 
Yeah, especially Aurora did the smart thing of leaving Benzo and Kalium on the lower side. And you can see they are just constantly pumping damage. Benzo maybe moved a bit late, but after that, if you have the Nano 7 just able to fire shots continuously at the side, the DPM is going to make such a huge difference. And we really saw that play out well for Aurora. They took the course fire positions, and they were able to force MTMG into positions where they never had the possibility to do like a breakout push into one direction and just win the match for them. So, really great stuff. You also have to admit they have their full team at uh, one spot, but the other match is not enough. And well, whenever a guy is going to drop low, he has nowhere to hide, so he's going to get picked up by Aura. In return, Aura, they had some positions where they could hide, so they could trade HP and get safe, and it probably made the difference. And we had that round, the last round uh, for that match. And TMG going for the full aggressive push over the mid. But you could see Aurora, this opening is pretty uh, fairly countering it. They get the CSs on top of the hill, even though some were uh, blocked. And then NTMG pushing past on the mid. But all of those things from Aurora, they were ready for it. It's an interesting approach from NTNG to try and block the ramp. I think Hellraiser was the player, or Hellmind, uh, that tried to block the ramp, but Aurora was still able to get three tanks up on the hill. Yeah. And then basically for NTMG, it's just driving into a crossfire. You can't ever really try to retake the hill, especially not if you have then in the late game Baron getting up there, a chieftain in that nasty hull down position will win versus almost any tank, especially versus the BZs, which have these three cupolas on top of their turret. Very easy to play against, so it's just a cleanup job for Aurora and a great comeback, you know, coming from a 0-2 to a 4-2 is nothing that's done too easily, but Aurora definitely showed that they are able to do it. Well, I think that those rounds are showing how dominant uh, the teams are when they get the heal. And from the side of NTMG, honestly, they had the, the possibility to just stop on the mid, not even go for that uh, block with the TS, or still lose that CS uh, blocking two off, and then climbing on the hill themselves. Because you could see the counter we have seen from teams were uh, pushing around the hill straight to not allow the team defending to take the hill delayed. But there is no play around that from the side of Aura. The TPs were over the mid, so maybe MTMG with a mistake there uh, very costly because they're dropping in the losers bracket and they will be facing Trig as the last match of the day but now we definitely have a banger nice try against madagascar both of these teams are considered top uh, teams uh, on this uh, format 15 v 15 a clan showdown and toxic that's probably enough from the two of us because now we have our casters to introduce the next match of the day nice try against madagascar kian and daki it's your turn Well, hello there and welcome back. And I couldn't have put it better myself. Indeed, we do have a banger, a cracker of a match on our hands. Uh, we do have Nice Try, who we already saw earlier today, uh, who ended up losing that match, dropping down towards the lower bracket against Madagascar, uh, a, a renamed team, a also a transfer team from the uh, what used to be RU server under. Um, I guess their captain dries this time, but I think a lot of you should be recognizing a lot of the names if you've been following the uh, competitive scene at all. Yeah, I mean, they also won the last tournament, which is a pretty big thing to remember. Um, but, you know, dropping into the lower bracket straight for them on group stage, you know, they were missing some key players that weren't there. Let's see, though, if it was indeed the missing of the key players uh, that uh, was the reason to why they did so poorly in the group stage. But Positive has arrived to give them a hand and uh, potentially uh, bring it all the way through this lower bracket. I mean, I don't think we've ever had a team win the tournament from the position of coming no. from the lower bracket. So it would be quite the story if Madagascar would be able to pull it off back to back victories. Um, would be quite the story. On the other hand, we have the team of Nice Try that we already saw uh, losing earlier today. Honestly, judging by how it went last tournament, I would definitely give the favorite role to Madagascar. But well, that was last tournament, right? Now is now, and they need to prove themselves here. There's a reason why they are starting in the lower bracket. You mentioned it, the group stage performance was pretty, pretty poor, and you're only allowed three player swaps. So if it was a player skill issue, then you can only fix so much. Uh, Livehawk's being taken out of the picture by 
Madagascar and Screen Band by a nice try. Uh, so we're gonna start with Cliff, head over to Moravanka, and since this is a best of five, uh, then there is a few more buns, and in comes the possible tiebreaker map, which would be Fisherman's Bay. It will be Fisherman's Bay indeed as tiebreaker. Uh, Cliff, it's going to be a good one to watch between these two teams, I think, because Madagascar always has these very interesting Cliff strategies. Hmm. Um. Yeah, we'll we'll have to wait and see. I personally, I'm hyped for 15 to 60s again, but it's probably, unfortunately, not going to happen. Um. Yeah. That all being said and done, what's what's your take? Who do you think should be favored? I'm going with Madagascar. Same. This nice right team is making or made too many mistakes against Inville IMO that um, if they make again, will be so punished. I mean, Cliff comes to mind already as one of them with the failed shields. That was a huge mistake, IMO. And the Proco comes to mind as well. And the best of five, you can't really allow yourselves to make those mistakes. And I, I think this is just a story for them through the group stage and into the playoffs now as well. They are a good team. They have some really, you know, solid opening, solid players, but they sometimes just make these mistakes and that they, they just lose off of. Yeah, I mean, yeah. at this point in time in the playoffs, uh, every single team that is there is going to be able to recognize and more importantly, exploit the mistakes that you make. Like, as soon as you will see tanks out of positions, they're just going to get obliterated. You mentioned the failed shield on Cliff. Normally, something like that, you would expect it to, like, be prepared to be tested in a training room. Like, all of those teams do do regularly train. And, like, if you have that as a pre-planned reaction towards something that is happening uh, in, in the game, then the execution should be, like, maybe not perfect, but it should be at least correct, right? Which wasn't the case. Um, could be the case. But, like, I, I really want to see Madagascar now. I'm very curious for them how they're going to come into this one. Um, I think there has been a lack of training for them as well, again, um, for that team. And for a nice try, I mean, it's their second match of the day. It really depends on how they took that Inver loss, though, because... Let's be real, a lot of different things could have happened in that game. Yeah, um, I see all of us going on to the Madagascar hype train, but we'll have to see uh, if it actually holds true. So I guess both of us going with a 3-2 for Madagascar and Insane and Toxic saying, nope, it's going to be more clear of a matter, only giving one round to Nice Try. That would mean that Nice Try would have started in the upper bracket and only would win three rounds in the whole tournament. That would be... Um, yeah, not a performance that they were probably hoping for, but obviously the scoreline is going to be, for the time being at least, a clean 0-0. Zero, zero. Indeed. Um, 0-0 zero, zero starting in, and, and me and Yuki actually believing 3-2, I think that's also down to the last last time these guys played against each other, it's also a tiebreaker. Mm. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm quite stoked. Also, I'm very happy that we are seeing Cliff so often today because I think it's just one of those maps where uh, uh, the teams really do get tested um, as to, like, in that 30-second window of the countdown, like, having to read the enemy lineup, uh, pairing it up with your own, um, all of that. And then, obviously, doing the reaction based on what you get as initial information, like that, those first spots when they come in, there needs to be an immediate call by the FC what needs to happen next. Um, Let's see. The lineups will tell us a lot. Like I said, Madagascar has this usually interesting way to approach Cliff. So that's what I'm kind of watching out for. Like, what do they have this time around? You know, like in terms of tanks, they always have something interesting. Mm. Uh, I guess we're going to be able to see the lineups rather shortly. And yeah, round number one in between Madagascar and Nice Try. Uh, Madagascar bringing the double 50B quadruple BZ75. And then we have one CS and the rest is what seems like eight two sixties. Um, That is correct, yeah. Nice Try then double BZ, um, what seems to be seven Chiefs and six CSs. Uh, so they're going back and continuing that lineup that we saw them use already against Inville. I think that was a successful round they played on Cliff, where they went 1-2 from Nord. Um, I think they're just going to be continuing to use this lineup 
Uh, but the different split this time though. Last time they went 1-2, this time they're splitting uh, everybody in middle with one guy holding the base. Exactly, and for Madagascar we see double B and one CS going towards the lower side. Everyone else headed towards uh, the upper side. Now we see Loop getting split away from the double CS that is driving towards the hill. We'll have to wait and see if they actually continue. Both of them spotted horse already taking two shots of damage. They're actually continuing on. Horse dropping down towards a one shot here, getting completely obliterated, but White Rock seems to have made it. Yeah, White Truck makes it on the hill, but so far, good start here from Madagascar. I think Diavol will just boost himself up at one point as well. They are missing some CSs, though, for the side of Madagascar. I think they realize that now as well, that Hannes, Nervox, and Sunny are on the flank. You can see Hannes just bucking it down towards the position there. He's actually stopping in that hole. Nervox and Sunny continuing forward, though, near you with the damage shield things so has to be careful. But I think Diavol and Nier will just actually pressure on the hill. So it is flank around. Now Madagascar is pressing W, though. They're pressing W down the middle. Near you, Diavol are going to be playing for the hill. And you can see Dry is blocking Neva from going over as well. It's a bit different than the no timing push. Banter there in his busy trying to make it up. But that leaves the rest of his team to fend off to their own devices. Now Lip getting pushed by Force TB by Vic in that CS pushed off immediately. And yet these chieftains are in crossfire on the back lines for a nice try. But they've lost so much already. They've even lost the hill as well. And now Panuka not having a good time either. He gets focused out. And yeah, nice try does have those CS all the way around. Nervox even coming a little bit too close. But against top of the hill, against this pressure, they can't really hold. Yeah, they can't really hold. And now Madagascar realizing that there is triple CS out of the game in the southern part of the map are starting to advance away from the hill, just starting to clear it out. And that double BZ75 up on the hill starting to make their move up on towards Banta. And Madagascar just spiraling completely out of control for Nice Try, who are going to be losing this first round. Madagascar just perfect reactions, perfect opening, perfect everything in this game, not giving any way in towards it to Nice Try. Yeah, no, Nice Try. I think they played this in groups. I remember it vividly that they played this i don't know if it was in groups or in qualies like i'm not sure but i remember this that they played this so this is going around but they lost horse going on the hill and that was already huge because near you and devil were just able to take over the top of the hill and that double bz i know? mean but even if horse yeah. makes it up though double bz pushing you in the cs's i mean at best it's a stalemate i know Exactly, and like the, the immediate reaction by the Madagascar BZs to go on the hill, right, Diavol near you, um, that, was, that was so valuable for the side of Madagascar because essentially it completely denies the CSs that are flanking around, it gives you a lot of control over the map. And also, nice try, they didn't really have a lot of tanks in the game, a lot of guns shooting, because Madagascar, as soon as they see the CS is behind them, they immediately started over pushing the middle where there was still a lot of nice try tanks that they were able to just almost for free pick up and from there there was no way back into the game for, for nice try realistically. So Madagascar uh, coming in strong here and uh, looking good, 1-0. 1-0 for Madagascar. And nice try, they are not this kind of team that really usually takes brawls immediately. I would say. I mean, with the tendency of how they play key, I don't think it's... I mean, Cliff is kind of the map where you have forced to do that. Um, but like in general, and this time they try to do a... Like, we kind of call it a set execute, right? You know, take the hill, go around the hill. It's a strategy they've played a few times, but they just couldn't hold against this 260s that are coming out from Madagascar. I mean, it's just uh, all in all a good opening for Madagascar playing full middle, having the double B covering down, then the Bs go into 1-2, they pressure away even the CS at D5, and Madagascar is throwing so much HP, uh, so much alpha into the faces of those chieftains as well, right, because it's 440 against 440, um, that, yeah, I mean, Nice Try does damage. It's not about them doing damage, it's about the fact that they have so many guys that are just getting overrun quickly. Um, that don't really do much. I mean, even Banter going on the hill, they don't need one shot. Uh, there's, a ch there's a lot of chieftains there that have three shots of damage, for example. And they just get focused out. Like, sure, you have your team in crossfire, but if you don't have the hill like Aurora did, because when we saw Aurora do that, they had like three tanks on the hill crossfiring down to provide a lot of support. You didn't have this when I tried. You didn't have this. There's no hill. So it's really hard to actually collectively focus fire and take down the tanks from Madagascar. 
Also, the uh, lineup that Nice Try brought, like, as soon as it gets col uh, collapsed upon, it's kind of squishy, right? Like, yeah, Chieftains are good hold down, obviously, but, like, as soon as you take the hold down away and you're able to shoot that hole, then uh, the Chieftain doesn't really have a lot of armor anymore, especially, like, in, in the sides. And the CSs don't really provide anything in terms of armor either, whereas, like, with a 260, with a BZ, you actually need to aim in a shootout to be able to penetrate those reliably. So, uh, yeah, overall, very good reactions by Madagascar to what Nice Try was trying to do. Um, and in the end, a deserved 1-0. Now, obviously, things are going to get flipped around, at least the spawns are. And Nice Try are going to try, at least, to also put one on the board here to uh, flip around the scoreline, possibly. Um... They need this round though. They need. They need. They really need this round already. Like we said, best of five is a different ball game than best of seven. Two zero down is a medium match point. You don't want to be there. It's just no fun situation to be in whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Now it all is going to depend on the lineups by the respective teams, which I'm sure are going to be. Uh... Brought up. There we go. Madagascar once again double 50B, uh, double BZ75. We have uh, seven 260s and quadruple CS63. Quadruple 63 to round it up. Nice try on the other hand. STRV, five CSs, double BZ, a 279 actually, double 260, and the rest of Chiefs. Exactly. That's, so that's the Chiefs. They, this looks like the same lineup as they have, but just uh, it's a bit different. Uh with the um, 279. I don't think they had that last time. Mm. Now, split-wise, we can see what's going on. Madagascar sending uh, double B, triple CS towards the 1-2 line, so that's five tanks in total, and the other 10 are getting sent towards the middle. From the side of Nice Try, they're sending one CS and double 260, double chief, so five tanks as well towards the middle, 10 tanks towards the mid, but the SJV is getting split off. Rambo already taking a lot of shots here, trying to get to the EF1 rock, so he's going to be losing that one on one against White Rock here. And now Positive and 4CB trying to clip out with those 50Bs from the upper side. Comes the Madagascar teams with the remainder of their forces only near you being split off to provide crossfire. And that is going to translate in a clash at the donut. Yeah, but they do lose one of those chieftains going up though, which is unique. And here comes Dries, Nico Heinz. Look here, just ramming into the faces of Hannes, not even caring whatsoever, even continuing down with one beast and Nico on towards magic and now nice try force to continue pushing but what does this create oh Mirak in the strv a dumb factor in this game right now they're trying to push up and past the corner to put a crossfire on towards these madagascar sides from the north and the south hand side and they are currently achieving that good stuff there from nice drive to get aka out of the game here they will have created the separation the upper positions under control for their side. You can see 4CB not having a good time there. Nicolas desperately trying to pick up a horse in that CS63. Look here, here wants to finish lip and he does manage to do that at the very least. He's even getting behind a wreck. Big position there from Okir and Nico Heinz and Skittle and Aka now coming around the corner again. And this is getting flipped around in the faces of Nice Try. And yes, the HP is even. They are doing well in that department, but a large percentage of that is on the SCRV. Complete and utter chaos all around as Ponuka gets picked up by Aka, I think, and now near you finally coming from the upper side with a CS63, uh, opting for the left approach here where he will be able to get shot by the CS, actually not really deciding to come close. Instead, doing a U-turn, Dreiser is going to get picked up, does one more shot into Itox, but it's going to be Scarepy to shut him down. And as the dust settles, it's going to be seven here, tanks for Nice Try and six only for Madagascar, who are also down a bit in HP. But as you said it, that STRV cannot really control Tribute. It's Nehru's HP. Nehru's a bullet right now. Nehru's just a bullet. He, he He's like going in a straight line to Mirek in that STRV. And if he spots out Mirek, ooh, he needs to be careful. They're almost flipping. Mirek is now spotted out. Nehru taking more damage. Mirek there does nail that shot. Uh, does near you get safe here? He's going to take one more from that STRV. Good shooting there from Mirek. Beautiful stuff. Uh, can they find the STRV? They currently have nobody on the four line though. Ooh, and actually, Scurpy picks it up. Scare people. Yeah, maybe near you spotting wasn't that great. Mm, yeah, the bullet was shot, but then, you know, 
There was a strong gust of wind called Mirek that made it fail its intended purpose. This means that now Madagascar down towards five tanks only. They're trying to take Magic out, who was spotted. Big there well, with a good Itox shot doing. into Itox. Itox actually with, like, my man's on a journey there. Scurpy is kind of a pick, though, for the boys of uh, Nice Try, but never mind. Vic, they're doing a great job. A curious position as well. He's nailing Scurpy. You see, he's just having this one tree and support here. Aka coming to try and spot out Itox at the very least. Can he get a shot? He can. 521. 9 HP left. That is an HE one shot. Uh, Isani now also getting rotated in that CS63, I believe. Aka, you could see him there intuitioning, but he obviously cannot really peek Itox like that. He no, decides he to go for it and picks up Itox. So, uh, sort of even once again. And uh, yeah, all the HP by Nice Try still on Mirek. That is like 400 HP apart here. And that is indeed a position I've never seen before, but very useful actually. It works. I mean, if it works, it works. Yep. Now Vic can readjust though, because there's no more pressure on him. Uh, he might even try to go back in the base, I feel. Drop off from there, uh, start slowly retaking his base at some point. Uh, he's doing exactly that as well. Yeah, the, the problem is obviously that uh, the CS in like D2 is going to shut him down if he gets spotted. Uh, possibilities for blind shots are there, but like if you're starting to blind shot that, then like you need to blind shot everything, and that's going to be uh, a long time before you can blind shot every bush. That being said, though, they're going to fully repush one too. Yeah, five minutes still, and you, as you said, on the minimap right now, you can see the Madagascar team forming up to repush one two. Nico Heinz probably needs to be uh, the first one there, together with Skittles, as those are the tanks, the only tanks with HP. But that CS63 is very squishy, and now we can see Vic Share driving over here. Ice Sunny not really holding or spotting the angle anymore. The SRV's coming as well, though. 63, and yeah, the SRV starting to rotate. Floki is a one-shot, though. This is a good rotation from Mirek, but they have a lot of these CSs stuck on the lower side. Oh, is Horse stuck, by the way? I don't think we ever seen it. I'm pretty sure Horse is stuck. Uh, maybe that is why the SGRV is coming, to put him on his side? No? No, I think he's... Oh, ooh, the SGRV gets spotted out, though. I think, that, I think the Madagascar team might not go for it anymore. Yep. I think they might just not go for this anymore now. Good shot by Vic Share, essentially making the HP difference negligible. But this means that that is like 1000 HP more that they would need to chew through in this. Uh, I just want to know if Horse here. is stuck. Uh, That's what I want to know right now. Um, yeah, yeah. I oh. Told you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he it's, obviously doesn't want to risk it. Like. He, he needs to. Yeah, well, he can still shoot from there, I guess, towards the K line. Mm. Not sure about the angles he can see, but maybe he can shoot when they drop off from, from K6. I mean, it depends if he has an eye goal, dude. Yep. New genius level. He does have a shot, though. He does have a shot. And now, like, you can see the Madagascar team are, like, starting to edge, like, away uh, from this northern approach here. But who are they pushing into? Like, the. No, but now they can start pressuring the south, though, mm. because there's no crossfire on this. But the thing... I, I think they know about Horst being... No, no. Nicholas 100% should have told them that Horst is not up anymore. Mm. He was the one that pushed into it. So he will know that the CS was, is not on the corner. This is a good approach. If they go from this side, if they go from this side, they will find Scurpy. Yeah. And the SRV will be but in trouble. I think trouble. Isani and Magic should have shots there, no? no. Onto their side turrets? No. 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 Like, no. depending no. on when no. they get spotted, obviously. All right. Now the ghost They will be too far, probably. Uh, Nico and Skittles to lead the charge. They do have the HP, but they will be meeting Skirpy, who is the healthiest tank still available for the team of Nice Try. Now he does get proxy spotted here. Skirpy. But there's nobody to support him. And actually, I think BZ Nico has just missed a shot. So that is going to be catastrophic because Skirpy might be able to pick up. Actually, it's going to be Mirek with that SRV. And uh, now from the sidelines, Vixia is going to be able to pick up Floki. Look here, able to push off Mirek. Mirek able to kill Vixia. But now all of a sudden it's 3v1 against that STRV. And Aka still 420 HP. That's not a very likely one shot. Mirek cannot afford to like go around and kill Vixia. He can't turn. And he can't turn anymore. Yep. And now he's. He will try though. He will try though try. against Floki here. No. Woo. Skittle picks it up. And yeah, the BZ missed the initial shot on Scurpy, but you could see there was no cover onto Scurpy, though. Mm. He was on the corner there, but there was nobody to help him. And the horse is still stuck, and I don't know if Madagascar knows that he's, like, fully, fully stuck. Magic, though, picks up Lokir. Big, very big kill from Magic there. The endgame leader.
for that team picks up a stunner on towards that to 60. Not sure what he could see, but that was huge for Magic. I think this Madagascar team is just terrified of Horus right now. Uh, yes. or the possibility of Horus. Yeah, Skittles now on the long rotation here. We can also see that Ice Sunny has been tucked nice and tight in towards the stone in K1. Um, Aka, possible one shot here for Magic, but do you really want to roll the dice on something like this? They might have to soon, simply because time is. Aka is going for it though. He has to go for it. Oh, no, no, Skittles, Skittles spotted out Skittles. by Horse. Horse shoots him. Sunny misses though, but Horse might be able to pick up Skittle here in that CS63, even being stuck on the side of the hill. Can Horse get it? He can actually! Being stuck there the entire game. <laughs> Horse actually gets the kill. Aka is now going to be coming from the top. Uh, he knows that Sunny is shooting him, and the fact that Magic killed that 1 to 60 is so huge. And he's just going to be running away now as well. And that is 60. Nice try here. They make it work. Barely, but they do. Uh, 411 to 420 uh, HP by Madagascar. But little is it going to matter because Aka is starting to drive in. Is probably going to be able to get horse. Oh, horse just bouncing here. But maybe Magic is going to pick it up as he does. And with 30 seconds remaining, nice try is going to succeed in equalizing the scoreline. It's going to be 1-1, one, one, but uh, man, did they ma ever make it hard on themselves here. Uh, near you there, man. Had the game in his hands, actually. Yeah. Yeah, also that BZ non-connection, like non-penetration onto the... Onto the yeah, it made the BZ die. It, the BZ died because of it. Yeah. And then Magic hitting a stunner on the 260. I think the 260 was probably hold on. Magic may be a little lucky. But yeah, the BZ not connecting is huge there because Scrippy had no support. Nobody could cover him. Mm. There was not a single tank in position to shoot that. If Scrippy dies, the BZ stays alive. They have another gun in that game. They will probably close it out, I would say. Yeah, I mean, how close it was at the end. Another gun is pr very likely, at least, to win them the game. All right, so post-battle results. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously on Cliff, you're always going to have a couple people on either side that basically have to drive in, have to take the shots for the team. But essentially, yeah, how it played out in the end. Uh, I think Madagascar gave nice try a run for their money, but just barely not good enough. I'm just watching back in the meantime. Magic got pushed by Beast in a 1v1, and then he died to uh, he uh he won the 1v1 against beast like beast made a bad play there got picked up by the scv magic and the horse and that already would have been a difference maker there on one two because if beast is just playing with his friends mm. they might actually win the lower ramp and allow near you to come back in to close the game yep i mean in the end also mirak despite the being not able to shoot for like a uh, good time at the start of the game he still ends up being like second on damage for his team so he was still able to have an impact when it mattered now uh cliff being split 1-1 means that we are now headed to a map that we haven't seen so far which is gonna be uh moro banka um moro banka obviously since the changes uh considered to uh, yeah that it's still a 1-1 like kind of sided map but uh the other way now right yeah, indeed. Um, but it's going to be interesting between these two on Muro. There's a lot of mind games going on nowadays on Muro on how to play it. Traps on 1 2, initial 1 2 pushes. All of this stuff is uh, pretty, pretty huge nowadays. Yeah, that uh, is indeed going to be interesting that that being said though nice try and mad who would you or who do you think right now is in the better mental spot like uh nice try probably because they just won this clutch game or maybe i mean nice try probably pretty hyped after that mm -hmm. battle so we'll have to see also this is their map pick so i am expecting some uh interesting if not ingenious strats by them uh, you don't pick Muro without a plan in mind. And obviously, since we are in the lower bracket, this means that they are not going to hold back with the strategies. This is going to be their best. Of course. I mean, you can always save strats for next tournament if you want oh, to. Oh, that is a big load of copium. Yeah. yeah. Saving strats is also a load of copium. <laughs> uh... 
<clears throat> but yeah, I think the a game is about to start. So uh, yeah, let's see where this uh, journey is going to take us. Obviously, if either team gets a clean 2-0 on this map, the match is going to be over and the other team is going to be out. Uh, let's hope for the sake of the match that it's going to be a 1-1, just so we see more World of Tanks today. And here we go with the lineups. Madagascar bringing one EBR, seven Chieftains, that is five 279s, a 260 and an I7. Against nice tries, double EBR. Um... What is that? Nine chieftains and four to seven nine. So nice try. A bit lighter on the chief department. We're gonna see what a two sixty nine seven is for though for Madagascar. Yeah, obviously once again double EBR against single EBR. That means that Madagascar's four CB needs to be ever so careful because, uh, well, you can get doubled on one side and then you're basically minus one thousand HP if uh, the enemy EBRs connect uh, HE shells. Um, so you have to be very, very passive. You can see he opts for the spot on towards the 1-2 line. Uh, a lot of tanks by Madagascar already getting spotted by this spotting run by Floki here, who's rocking the CVS, the low noise exhaust and the optics. So full spotting setup here by Floki. Yeah, 4CP is not a stranger to EBR gameplay though, Gihan, let's put it that way. Last tournament he was very, very good. Um, you can see Madagascar kind of baiting here on 1-2. They have the EBR there, they have a 279 behind them. And they're now coming the long way to 9-0 line. And so far, for a nice try, nothing is there. Oh, they're not even pushing up, but these chieftains just holding. It's an interesting movement here from uh, Madagascar. Yes, indeed. Madagascar, uh, you said they're baiting on the one line here with a singular 279 being pushed up. There is no support whatsoever for him. Uh, White Rock now taking the position that normally I guess he would be playing with an IS-7, but they seem to be confident to uh, let White Rock take it in the 279. And um, yeah, other than that, Madagascar hoping, I guess, that Nystra is going to try a uh, push on or in the forest, but they have Lokia, Rambo and Diable uh, very far pushed up. Hoping or coping? Mm. <laughs> I guess that depends on the outcome. I think Diavol should be able to use that tree now. I was watching him using, using a tree to knock it over to get some angles onto White Rock. And I, the reason why people use an IS-7 here, Key, is because 279 usually just does not live. Neither does Chieftain. Mm. I mean, those do have Coppolas, right? Whereas the IS-7 Coppolas are not really there. And we can already see Diavol there. This is what I mean. With the first shot into White Rock. I think that went into basically the shoulder plate of the 279. So Diavol even seems to have a shot uh, like onto the hull of the 279 and I think this is going to prompt nice try into some sort of reaction We can already see loop getting pushed up I Sane to follow him So that is going to be a little hit squad of like what five seven or even nine chieftains So that is going to be the majority of the team of nice try pushing here uh, Just to help white rock stay alive, but like I'm not sure how good that's gonna hmm. go The thing is there's little info here, right? For nice try because of all those shifters staying in the back the question is how long before this is spotted out do they see this in time nice shot again from diavol onto the side there right now they're not really seeing this um nice shot there as well from little now it's spotted unique pushing up this should be the this should spring the move on zero line for the entire team of madagascar here they come with everything as well uh, they have almost everybody there, Kihan. It's going to be a brawl. Look here, you see him there pulling back in a 279. They're kind of giving a Rambo here, but they're going to at least get back with look here behind that position. Diavol is baiting them in. But here comes the entirety from Madagascar, though. Yeah, sure, Diavol's getting swarmed. But in return, though, comes the entire team of Madagascar who have an HP lead. Even the i7 is there. Skittles coming as well. The EBR is coming. All 15 are moving to this location in the map. And you lose Rambo. You lose Diavol. But in return, you lose lip you lose sunny as well for the side of nice try who are down only 2k hp but that is going to start spiraling out of control rather quickly here as all of the times from madagascar are already in this part of the map juking it out and madagascar they were just waiting for that push-up waiting for that moment to spring that entire team of chieftains into action indeed they were waiting 
and they were baiting. Nice try into this push here. The 279 White Rock in the water, that was the problem for Nice Try. They had to try to help him somehow, but in turn, they're going to lose this game here as White Rock now finally uh, probably going to go to the grave. As look here, should be the one to pick it up. And Madagascar just completely pouncing onto, uh, on the push of Nice Try here in the forest are going to be able to take game number three are going to be able to put themselves on match point and yes there is still tanks by nice try that are alive that are kicking that are fighting that are trying their best but it's going to be to no avail the good thing here about this Madagascar team is they never stop so like they they, they push into that dip they realize okay we couldn't we could get surrounded here we're gonna be in a bad position okay let's just move it back and, and push the lower side they never stop living on that aggression they used that tank advantage to start focusing out guns and they just had all 15 in the fight so quickly um, for their team. I mean, they, they really were there tremendously fast where Panu and the EBRs from Nice Try were never really there. So yeah, they lose Diavol and they lose Rambo, but White Truck was basically dead already at that point as well in terms of HP, right? Uh, and then they are able to just make a good repush and just blow up this Nice Try team. And yeah, that's the, I guess it comes to show why people don't use a 279 in that position, right? I think it's quite obvious now because the Avul's position has a tree. You have a bit of a camo spot and, and they have to do something. Like they're either pushing out of one, two or they're coming to help the, the um, or they're coming to help uh, White Rock. And I think Madagascar is fine with both choices. If they give up White Rock and push one, two, they just clean the whole forest, play split map. It's just not the easiest thing in the world to achieve split map, but it is possible to win from it though. Mm. And yeah, nice try, I guess, baiting themselves into that forest push simply by uh, not sending an ISM there, not picking an ISM there. But uh, yeah, in the end, um, very good round by Madagascar. I think it went exactly how they wanted it to go. Like this was one of the pre-planned results for for basically uh, an enemy attack like that. And yeah, just clean gameplay, uh, deservedly on match point now. Nice try, they will have to step it up. They will have to uh, yeah, win the next two rounds to stay in the tournament, whereas the team of Madagascar, they only need one more. And you can see here that basically the focus fire uh, by the team of Madagascar seems to have been very, very good, simply because um, yeah, there is like one tank with one shot. That was the first salvo. Then there is a tank with two shots. That was the second salvo. So uh, yeah, good gameplay by the side of Mad. Yeah, good start there from Madagascar all around. Um, even Lokir pulling back and the Avol pulling back is so important. It baits them in further, mm. you know? And even Rambo on the side, right? He was able to get out four shots, which is- Rambo, I mean, Rambo, you know, 1.7. Okay, he has 2.5k HP. He trades only negative for 800, mm. right? He only trades negative for 800, but people that survived didn't even do much more than him. So he already paid off his game right there. Um, look here, gets some kills out. Diavol trades off his HP total. So those guys that are holding there, they traded slightly, slightly negative for the position. Against the entirety, essentially, of the nice strategy. Yeah, yeah so they, they, like, they barely lost, like, in the terms of overall HP, they lost maybe 800 more than they did or a thousand more than they did but then everybody repushes back in so it's equalized instantly mm. okay so match point for madagascar it's do or die for nice try and uh it's possibly even going to get decided on their own map pick that being said those sides are now going to be switched it's going to be nice try defending whether that's a good thing remains to be seen for them and uh yeah round probably going to start very very soon Mm. Do you think those forest holds are actually like a really viable defense strategy or uh, do you think there's easy ways to break it? Mm, if a team figures you out and they take over 1-2 with limited tanks, you're in trouble. But that's the thing that Madagascar did very well. What they did so well is they kept the chieftains back. Mm. At no given point where they spotted. They were in rotation distance for either A-line uh, rotation, which they probably wouldn't do. They would just push the forest. But they were never spotted. So White Rock, what did he see? Three tanks. Also the two. Where is where's the rest of the team? Yeah, also the I think the two tanks on the one two line were selling it kinda well with playing super aggressive despite having no backup. That's obviously a gamble, but well But you also lose with this opening against the straight one two push though. Mm. Like you literally lose against it. 
Okay, so Madagascar on their match point and attack on Muravanka are going to bring one SGRB, one 430U. Then we have <laughs> six Chieftains and six 279s. Nice try on the other hand, WBR, five 279s and eight Chieftains. Do you think we have to break it to Madagascar that this is not Onslaught and the 430U doesn't have a funny doesn't button? Get the, it doesn't get the funny button? Yeah, well. <laughs> We'll see where Nero goes. Maybe... I think I know where he's going. I think he's going 6th line. The pl no, he's either playing F7 or he's playing where the IS7 usually plays. Because he's low enough to play behind the holdown mm. on the edge of the forest, you know? But I honestly think he will just take the IS7 position, E67, because the 4 is so low to the ground. It's almost impossible to shoot it. Does that make sense? Yep. Also... Even from the forest. Also, I think a lot of... Ooh, that's a, that's a setup and a half, actually. Uh, he also has a spotting setup. Yeah. Low noise, CVS, and optics <coughs> as well. So, yeah, I think he's keeping all of those heavy tanks by uh, uh, by nice try lit here. They don't even realize, yeah. I mean, Hunter, does he... Yeah, he, I think he does spot him back. That's another thing uh, that people need to realize, right? Is that the 430U, for its size and for it being a medium, actually it has, has really, camo. really good camo, yeah. Like thirty percent, or probably yeah. And now with like low noise exhaust, probably even more. Hmm. So what does Madagascar have info on? The two seven hundred E one. They had info on this from the beginning. Um, they can't really clear Hannes in the EBR. That's kind of normal, right? They can't really clear him. And now it's the full rotation, though. What Madagascar does have is that fifteen tanks. Right? They have well fourteen tanks that can actually push and one that can snipe. Where Nice Try has that double EBR, it can be annoying. Mm. Yeah, although that double EBR, I mean, it can become a super valuable asset, especially if on the Ravanka. HP is close. If the HP is close, then the EBRs will just carry the game for you. Um, Lacuina there taking one shot in his 279. And yeah, the 430U having left now also in the forest, but that is a big rotation. Uh, by nice try over the A line here, probably looking to push up in the forest. Are they going to repush zero line? It's a possibility. Looks like it. It's a possibility. Look, almost looks like it. And the thing is, right now the tanks by Madagascar are pushed up too far, so the SGV can't really help them. 4CB and near you now starting to push up in that 279, in that 430U, but what they're gonna find is probably not gonna please them here, as Mirek, Ice Sunny, Horus are starting to push up, are starting to push up and over, actually. Loop also their White Rock from the side. Near you taking a lot of shots already. Force BB also taking one, but Horus, they're not over pushing completely. Yeah, and Near you here about to actually fall in this game. He's gonna try and hide behind his 279 friend, not able to achieve that. More peaks coming out from all of these chieftains here from the side of Nice Try. They have all taken some damage back. Now comes the rest of the Madagascar team, though, only leaving the 279 and 1-2. They are going to be going for this repush, but Nice Try is like, okay, we killed the 430U. That's enough for us right now. Mm. HP neck and neck as well, like 300 difference currently. And now Banta, Loop, Unique, Horus, all of them starting to drive away once again. Only Nervox and I believe one more at the waterline are going to be left behind. Meanwhile, though, Madagascar are mustering a lot of forces. Even the SGRV is now very far into the forest, should be able to provide uh, fire support from there. 4CB keeping never spotted, keeping Nervox spotted. But what he can't prevent is that there are spots coming out onto the tanks that are now starting to push. Vic share a little positive. All of them are spotted, so nice, nice try. They can just though. perfectly set up for this. Yeah, but look at the positions from Nice Try, Kihan. They currently have nobody in A0. They still have a four tanks out, two on the A line that are still rotating. They're not currently in position to deal with this, but also because they're close to the corner, Kian. Look at Neva, look at Nervox. That is really close position. Ooh. That means you get focused out immediately, but not before Beast actually goes to the grave first. He gets focused out. Neva now making a shield, actually. And this staggered defense here for Nice Try actually seems to be working out. High peaks coming out as well. Hannes now sneaking in for a 1v1 against Rambo in that EBR. He needs to be careful. Uh, from this fight. Now, Victor seems to have found a decent position there on the zero line, and Sunny actually got spotted out behind the rock. That's uh, really not good, though, for the side of Nice Try. Not sure how Sunny even got spotted there. Now, there seems to be more Chieftains pressuring up. Nico coming as well in his 279 to take the front line. Vic now pushing up as well. Can they play hold on on these guys here on Mirak, Lip, 
and Horus. Can they take them out of the fight without losing too much for it? Mirek now taking a humongous chunk of damage. Loop also starting to take damage as well, but Skirpy, Unique, Bunter, you can see they're trying to do what they can from the back lines, but Loop at the front line actually taking the damage instead. Horus now trying to make a shield for Loop, who now has basically shielded from two sides, but if Nico just drives towards the third, that's not gonna matter. Loop's gonna get shot down, and nice try currently trailing regarding the HP. Bunter even taking one on the we way out here. Look at one through Kihan. They're again repushing Dries, they're repushing Skittle. Skittle wants to find Panu though in that 279 and realizes he doesn't have a good angle. Rotating now towards Itox to take that 1v1 instead. Now Skittle realizing Panu coming back up. He doesn't connect the shot though, so he's going to be falling for that. But this A-line run, this A-line move here for a nice try. They need to take over full 1-2, establish their EBRs in good spotting positions. And Skittle here... He's not going to be finding the kill on Panu. I think he does, actually. How? Even. Uh, you need all of your... If you're nice, try. You need all of your tanks at this point. Uh, all of them. I'm, Without exception. I'm not entirely sure how he was able to still get that shot. But now it is basically up to that double EBR to get the info to make it work. And Madagascar, they want to prevent this, obviously. One of the EBRs is actually on the cap here. So this is going to be the game flaunt for Nice Try. Just put double EBR on cap and force the reaction by Madagascar, who are now pushing over in the A line. For this, but uh, who will we'll have to see uh, 30, 30 seconds though on the cap here and we can see all of the tanks now just readjusting nice here. defending though nice. nice try is defending if they cap it out they and even if Madagascar caps in return it is over Vic doesn't have a lot of HP left in his chieftain though he's trying to come in here to try to get the reset Hannes and Floki playing a wonderful game right now of behind the bushes Vic just trying to make the blind shots and Hannes actually leaves the cap I'm so Sorry, but what? Yeah, that was apparently FC call to leave the cap because both of the EBRs did it you simultaneously. You cannot leave the cap. You cannot. You're all in. It's like going all in on roulette and then being like, it goes red and you're bet on black. You're like, can I get my money back, please, dude? I meant to bet on the other side. You cannot do that. Yeah. It's over for nice try. It's like over. They're out. It's one. You cannot leave the cap there. Like, sorry, that's nonsense. Yeah. It wasn't me calling it, but I think yeah, it was no, an no. FC call. It's not you, I'm angry at. Yeah, it's, uh, like, the, the thing is, they left simultaneously, so it must have been a call, right? They they don't just, out of the blue, both of them decide to drive out at the same second to, I don't know to lose that team. I don't know what happened there, but it is... I want to refrain from breaking PG-13. It is a very non-good uh, thing to do. You were all in at that point. You're, you're not really defending A-line properly anymore. You're all in. You you have no choice but to try and play this cap out and hope that Vic misses. Yeah. Um, alas, they both left uh, left the cap, and at that point, it was it was just over. Nice try. Didn't have the tanks to. Yeah, come at back. least they survived it, so they have to pay less repair costs. Uh, yeah, on their training accounts. <laughs> um, yes. But yeah, the four thirty. You not no, really but like working a out. But... Sunny key. Sunny. Mm -hmm. You know how much of a factor he is in that game, right? Definitely. I mean, like the guy at A zero has such a huge game if he plays it out properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got there as a one shot, I think, and then he. I'm not sure. He got uh, yeah, the polish shot. But uh, the question is, how does he get spotted? I, yeah. Maybe, maybe a different chief also had a CVS. Like we've seen plenty of those today. So uh... Behind, you cannot mount heavy. Oh, and true, true, CVS. true. Yes, you true. should know this as a warning employee. True, only mediums and uh, light tanks tier eight and up. True, true. Every maybe, broadcast... maybe a heavy had an optic. Okay, you know, maybe we can agree. Some on people that. improve over time, and Kihan just goes. I mean, Wee. I have hit thirty, so there is that, right? You'll also get there. Thirty? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were 35, never mind. I am 30, okay. Uh, anyway, you're going to get there as well. Um, but I think for the time being, uh, that was uh, enough from the two of us. Let's see what the analysts make of the match we just saw. Well, thanks a lot, guys. And Toxic, we have to say goodbye to one team. Nice try. Second time in a row in a clan showdown, not taking a single victory in the playoff. They are out. Madagascar is going to be moving to the uh, next round of the loser's bracket, and they will be facing either NTMG or Tree. Yeah, I guess you can say uh, the team of Bunter gave it a nice try. 
but nothing really came of it. Uh, they were not really strong in this one. They were playing very decently in the game versus Inville, but this was just almost a stomp. I mean, uh, especially if we look at the cliff matches, they barely won their match. They almost still threw it. Um, but yeah, next match will be NTMG, no timing versus Trick. That one will be very interesting to see as well. We have NTMG, the Ukrainian team versus Trick, which is, uh, I think you have to remind me what nationality Trick is. Hungarian team. Hungarian team, yep. yeah. Um, we haven't seen Trick yet today, but uh, they did have a decent showing in the group stage, so very keen to see that one play out. I mean, this is a team that is always uh, trying their best to make it to the playoff, and it's great to see them there because they always uh, are there for the group stage very often, always dedicated for those uh, plan showdown tournaments. But the replays are ready, and we should take a look at them. Nice try against Madagascar. It was a very convincing start from Madagascar there. Yeah, Madagascar actually uh, not only killing the CS whilst trying to get up the hill, but getting a BZ, actually I think even two BZs up the hill themselves. And whilst I said earlier the BZs are not really great in fighting versus chieftains on the hill, they obviously are far superior against the CS, so having them up the hill is really, really important for them. And it just allowed them to over push the middle. The three CSs from Nystray are completely out of the game, and uh, Madagascar just gets a great gun advantage and uh, I think even a slight HP advantage by killing off all the tanks that nice try left in the middle. I mean, they both got on the hill uh, almost freely. Diawol took uh, no damage, Niu yeah. took two shots, and at the uh, end of the day, for the side of Madagascar, it was pretty easy uh, to make the right decision, which was to push uh, over the middle since. Uh, nice try had three CS is completely out of the fight very far. The Thals runs around the H line. Uh, it's a good start from them. Next up, we had a brawl happening, and I have to say that Madagascar they should take the victory clean there, but they made a mistake. They're gonna uh, take the push of the donut and drop down with too much tanks, actually leaving the higher ground to a uh, nice try. I would say that the BZ75 doing that is totally fine because you have the turbo mod and they're pretty heavy. But as you can see, nice try, they are taking back the higher ground and you have to re push back in from the side of Madagascar. So that one was closed, it probably shouldn't. And you can, you could kind of see in the way that the Madagascar tanks behave that at some point they noticed, oh, wait. We are sending too many tanks down here, and that was really their major mess up here. In the late game, it came kind of close again. Both teams had some misplays here and there, and Madagascar was able to bring it back to almost even. Um, they repushed the donut successfully, they cleared off all the tanks. Mirek left alone in his STRV, can't do anything against the crossfire. But uh, Horse actually cosplaying Applewow, he's stuck on a position. But unlike Applewow, he's actually able to get shots off and kill Skittles, which made the difference in that match. I mean, it was a win from, for Nice Try, but that was mainly like a mistake from Madagascar and still a very close one. Uh, the team sadly didn't have a single very convincing victory uh, over all the playoff stage. And you could see there on Murvanka, they got pretty much countered because Madagascar, they were actually ready and uh, waiting for that repush of the forest. And Nice Try just pushed into them, and you will see how well they are organized, their communication, their team play, and their focus fire from Madagascar. That was just beautiful. And this really was just a blind push from Nice Try. They didn't really have any information. And I think it was just because of their uh, 279 in the front taking so much uh, shots for free that they decided we need to do something, otherwise, we will trade too negatively here. But uh, unlucky for them, Madagascar was ready. They. Uh, showed really great communication, great crossfire positioning, and uh, you can see the shootout went uh, far in their favor. Only the ABRs left to stand, and those are just easy pickups towards the end of the match. Well, good stuff from them. It's It was a BO5, so it was already match point, uh, and then they were on the attack on Muro, and you could see that they were pretty much split over the map, but they went for that uh, push over the 9-0. And to be fair, we saw that Nice Try could do something out of it, especially if they managed to keep uh, that guy on A0 alive. But he's gonna get spotted and he's gonna go down on top of those guys in the front. So uh, slowly but surely, they utilized this 279s to trade against those chieftains, and it was just much better from their side. And we saw on the 1-2 repush uh, that Nice Try tried. Uh, 
they didn't really kill the enemies quickly enough to regain some positions. They even lost another gun there. Uh, and then you had Hannes and uh, aye, aye. Floki actually driving out of the cap. And that's the moment we all knew. This one is completely over. There's no way for Nice Try to come back. And we will be seeing Madagascar in the next match tomorrow in the lower bracket. It was a bit annoying because you see that uh, Unique even got uh, one decap with the HE. So if they managed to uh, stay alive with this uh, EVR on the cap, I mean, it would have been uh, very hard, but they had to try. It was like an all-in play at that stage. They wouldn't manage to deal with that cap from Madagascar. So once again, misplay, probably bad communication, bad leading, bad calls going in the team. And this is also why they're dropping out. Of course, they faced Inville, they faced Madagascar, which have been the two teams that were dominating in the 15-15 tournaments for like uh, three times, I guess. But you have to mention that once again, just like the last tournament, they were not on point. Their reactions, their communication, their decisions, they have to improve on that. Yeah, I think uh, it's also the, uh, that Magic is uh, doing the stress in their team and Banter is leading. So it's like the FC that actually leads the matches. It's not the one... Uh, producing the strategies which is kind of hard to deal with i don't know how they do it internally but it doesn't seem to be working for them at the moment so they might need to restructure a bit well indeed they are out goodbye to them we will get to see madagascar tomorrow in the next round of the losers bracket and they will be facing either ntmg either trig the last match of the day a b05 what's your take on that uh, I think NTMG might take that one quite convincingly. Uh, whilst Trick is a team that is showing up uh, every now and then in the playoffs, I don't think they are quite on the level that they can really compete uh, for the win or the top three even in such a tournament. And NTMG has been showing in the past, in advances at least, that they are a really strong team. And I think they might have the edge here. Well, Toxic, we have our castles to get all the information and introduce the last match of the day. So for the last ma for the last time today, guys, Kian and Daki, take it away. Well, hello there and uh, welcome back with uh, the Killzor and I for what is going to be the last match of the day. It's going to be NTMG, no timing against a team we haven't seen so far, uh, Trig, the Hungarians. Uh, showing up, um, like I would say, every odd clan showdown, they do make it to uh, to the playoff stage, but they've never really had a super deep run. Uh, now, whether that is uh, due to them limiting themselves to Hungarian players, where like maybe the player pool isn't large enough, I don't really want to get into that because from the outside it's always difficult to sort of diagnose that um, but yeah community predictions saying 54% to NTMG 46% towards a trick who are coming in under their captain Danny and uh, yeah not a lot of surprises on either side I would say no um, that trick team coming in finally like I don't think it's been a forever since we've seen them in the playoffs They've had a quite f some unfortunate group stages in uh, recent times, where they always seem to be on the uh, unlucky end of the stick in that regard. Um, but this time around, they do make it into the lower bracket. And No Timing is not an easy opponent in any way, shape, or form. We saw them, though, play against Aurora. And, you know, I don't think we're seeing Ansk. Probably not, as we do go into the map pick and bans on the yeah, trick immediately saying, nope, we are not playing Ansk today. Live Oak's being taken out by uh, No Timing. Then we see Cliff once again, a map that we have seen like a whole lot today. Bro, what a surprise that Ansk was the first time. Yeah, and then what a surprise Shock. also, No Timing Shocking. coming in with the Himmelstorf pick, right? They really... Yeah, what a shocker, dude. <laughs> it's one or the other, man. Uh, but yeah, Fisherman's Bay being taken out by No Timing, then Moro by Trix and River by uh, No Timing. That leaves us with the possibility of Prokhorovka being uh, the tiebreaker. So yeah, Cliff was already played today by No Timing. Uh, Trig, I mean, they they have the disadvantage of starting in the lower bracket, but they have the advantage of, have, of 
having been able to basically watch what No Timing was doing on, on Cliff already. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that No Timing is going to do the same thing once again, obviously. Um, yeah, Himmelsdorf, we haven't seen it at all yet today, so I'm uh, kind of hyped for that, because in my opinion, like, those two maps, Cliff, Himmelsdorf, they are the coolest match to watch, to spectate, to, to play on even. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how this one pans out. Um, I think we both agree, sort of, that no timing is going to be f the favorite here. Uh, I would even give it, like, a bit more than the 54% that the community has given them. Yeah, um, but still, underestimating Trig is never a good idea for any team. Um, and I, I think they, you know, want to perform on a show that they are capable of uh, playing uh, the game at a, a huge level. But let's see. Let's see what it brings us, you know? At least no time he gets to play one round on Himmels, at the very least. Yeah, exactly. Now the predictions coming in, uh, both of us agreeing on the 3-1 to one scoreline. Insane saying it's going to tiebreaker and Toxic saying uh, Trick is going to drop out of this tournament without, you know, taking a single round. That would be kind of unfortunate for the Trick team. Uh, but yeah, all of us saying that no timing is going to take it here uh, rather comfortably. Um, so yeah, let's wait and see how this one is going to pan out. Uh, I think the, yeah, there we go. Lineups are going to be here. No timing once again. Uh, with Wednesday in the 50B, we have five 260s, a singular Chieftain. Then we have six CSs, one TVP, and Shelby once again in the EBR. Shelby again in the EBR versus Drake's double 50B. Six BZs, five 260s, and double 907. All right, and I believe we are also headed for a restart because one of the uh, players was actually um, yeah, DC'd during the loading screen. But we can already uh, like deduct a few things from those lineups here, right? Six BZs, that's a lot of alpha damage. It's a lot of random guns. It is a lot of HP, though. Against those CSs, um, there's going to be... So NTMG has that quite a few CSs, I don't remember how many it were, but it doesn't matter anyways, but the BZ rocking extra HP over every single one of those. Um, and then on top of that, you also have the EBR. So I think Trig is starting with a what, 2 3k HP advantage here from the beginning. Yeah, then again, like that double 907 by, by Trig seems so random to me. Like, uh, what What are they... DPM, though. Yeah. You can play one... Two. No, like, imagine. Okay, so you play one two key, right? Um, from trick side, right? And you play with the double 907 um, on one two, on the rock, for example. That is 8k DPM. Mm. They're able to use the low alpha and their DPM to finish off those one shots. And if you allow them to go there, they will always farm. So it, it does make sense in that regard. I mean, if they're using them for 1-2, it, it, I think it makes sense. You can do that from both sides, really. Uh, better from south, though, because you can always go on the rock um, and just, like, utilize the gun, you know. CS is also a tank you can send to the rock, but let's be real. I mean, 9 or 7 is just better for it in most cases. Yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, the thing is, though, uh, like with the gigantic amount of BZs, that suggests a heavy middle commitment by Trig towards the middle because... Not necessarily, though. I mean, you realistically, if you go into you the one to split, though. Line, No, you could split. Okay, imagine this, right, Kihan? Uh, you play 260s from lower, yeah? You play BZs from the top, yes? Mm. You're still following? BZs from the top to cross over, and you have 50Bs and 907s to cover, from below, like you play the rock, um, you can shoot towards the hill. Um, you can definitely make that work. And you cannot really get over pushed in the middle either, because how do you push six BZs in the middle key? Yeah, we'll With have the to lineup say, I'm, that's just, no I'm just a bit concerned that if the BZs have to cross over towards the donut, they're going to be too late, like we saw earlier today. We'll have to wait. Yeah, to but see. There's, a, there's a lot of 260s for tricks, still, though. I mean, yeah, it's five, but they have the double B covering, double 907 covering. I understand where you're coming from with the Invil lineup mm -hmm. as well. <clears throat> that is a bit worrisome, but I think tricks lineup works slightly better for it. 
We'll have to wait and see. No timing, sending a double CS 50B and an EBR towards the lower side. Everyone else up. For the side of Trick, we can see the BZ is going upper side together with the 50B, interestingly enough, and the 260 is getting committed. No, not getting, now finally getting committed to the 1-2 line. So slightly delaying the 50B is going to have a nice clip, should be running away after. And uh, the punishment by Trig on towards the tanks from no timing that are taking the hill is virtually non-existent. So the way back into this for Trig has to be to boost up with the BZs and chase the CSs off. That being said though, no timing already setting try and Love uh, down around the hill together with an EBR and another CS, the block. Uh, is following there. That's going to be a crossfire and that's going to force no timing to probably push over because I don't think they can realistically send BZs onto the hill anymore. Yeah, but so far no timing doing a good job working on these BZs, but look at that immediately. One of the CS is falling. Not even sure where that was. Oh, and now you can see the BZs just boosting up. Yeah, the EBR is taken around, Kihan. But what does that really do if you lose the entire hill? And we can see NK, Diana also aiming. Lali, though, there's a decent here in the trick team. I mean, one of the BZs goes up, the other three are sniping. They need to get that communication worked on and in check. They need to focus out Hellmind here and actually clean that hill because they bled a lot for this. Finally, it does seem like Trick is starting to take over the top of that hill area. But now look at no timing. Crush crossing back towards 1-2 with the majority of their forces. As now, yes, the hill is getting pushed by Trick. Dana should be finishing the crystal, but 1-2 is where it matters, but I don't think this is it for no timing. They're running into a wall here, a Hungarian wall built by Trick to keep no timing out, and they're doing just that, the shutdown onto Vitalka on that corner. His com comrades stuck behind and stuck in a crossfire as well. So now the middle is going to get pressured by the CSs, by the Chief of Profus, Kreia, and a little bit of No Man's Land. So yeah, they don't find anything on 1-2, but look how many times from Trick there are here and how little they have left around other parts of the map. Oh, Hellmind not getting rolled here by NK, meaning that Hellmind is probably going to get two more shots into NK, putting him into two-shot range. There we go, another good connection by Hellmind, who is now starting to drop off the hill here. NK not really following yet, and yes, the NTMG tanks, they are sort of in a crossfire, but look at the actual HP, look at the actual tank count. NTMG still favored in both accounts, and that EBR uh, 105 from K5, yes, it doesn't have a lot of DPM, yes, it doesn't Biggest have a lot complacent. of pens, but he's going to be a constant threat to all of those one-shots by Trick. You know, Trick is very complacent here, and I don't like it. Danny, Victory, Samu have so much HP left, and they're not trying to kill these two sixties on the corner. What is the result of that, though, Kihan? Look at the hill. Yeah, on the hill, Adana now down towards a, a one-shot. Hellmind actually uh, able to get off the hill, and now Dana getting killed by Tri. This means the hill does get taken over by NTMG. Once again, only a singular BZ remaining here, and yes, Tansov and Sprite take some damage while driving away, but at most it's going to be Tansov and Master OQ dying, and S Sprite uh, and the other 260 are going to make it out. Shelby now coming from the back lines. NTMG still 2k HP ahead, and that EBR is going to come as a nasty surprise. Yeah, but he's not really finding anything right now. I honestly think Shelby should be capping here already, in my opinion. He has the cutoff on the rotations. Uh, Samu seems to be dying as CS. Trick very complacent in this battle, though. The coordination on the hill just wasn't there, Kihan. Let's be real. The coordination was not there for the side of Trick. I mean, one BZ, I think Lali, drives up. The other three are trying to snipe an EBR, man. Like... I'm sorry, but it doesn't really make sense, does it? Uh, uh, A5 is going to get taken over now by one more CS, so that one should be able to finish off Samo here, at least Hellmind, that is. Um, but yeah, Victory is going to push on to Winter here. And uh, Shelby Walk actually killing Serial Killer. Victory taking one more, has to ram Winter to kill him. And now Hellmind is going to try and stay unspotted here. And as the dust settles, NTMG, yes, they are ahead in tanks. Yes, they are ahead in HP, but... No, they're not winning quite yet, simply because Trig is defending. As the dust settles, uh, Trig loses this game 10 out of 10 times. Oh, we've seen throws, no, but they, yeah, I no, mean, they need no, to they, put they someone is, on cap now and There is no finished. recovery point. You know, I, I, I value, Kihan, that you try and believe in the impossible, but this is 99.99% uh, unwinnable. It's it's just not winnable. It's impossible. Yeah, like I'm sorry. Finally, they're doing the correct. Fans, yeah, finally Trick. they're doing the correct thing and actually putting someone onto the cap. But uh, going back here, Trick very complacent and I'm not a fan. 
Like you saw how many tanks they had in one two. They could have pushed back to the corner and at least picked up those tanks so they were able to for example take back their own base right mm. in the time extra but on the hill the miscoordination miscoordination was also just there like i said lolly drives up by himself the other three are sniping in abr they lose a full bz for no reason and then afterwards because strings not pushing one two Ooh. profus nice shooting this the, ooh, the third one not connecting though the fourth one neither but still though four seconds left i don't think danny makes it and i honestly i think trick wins this game if not for some you know, miscoordination. It, it's no other way to put it. Yeah. Oh, Shelby with another kill or two. Dani obviously prolonging the game for another five seconds. But yeah, you said it. Trig grew complacent, uh, especially at that donut position because the BZs on the hill, they were slowly getting like eliminated from there. And as soon there's nobody spotting the approach on the hill anymore. Yeah. And as soon as that happens, you're basically giving so much map control to the team of no timing that you're leaving yourself uh, with no real options at the end uh so that was sort of they had to repush that corner instantly yeah. almost you know after the initial trade when they talk about a shield they had to take the hp close kill it and then maybe they have a chance but uh they also gave up some tanks in the middle that didn't really do anything i mean you know lolly was the first bz to drive on the hill when the others were sniping miscoordination where Marash was in his PC, I don't have a clue. I know where Kreia was in the 50B, though. He was in the middle of the map on the 5 6 line. So you pointed out the B, a 50B going up. A 50B that goes up, that gets surrounded, though, is a dead 50B. He couldn't do anything. Like, legitimately, they're above him, they're crossing over, they're behind him. It's EBR. Um, there's, there's just nothing to do for him. Yeah, in the end, uh, good stuff all around by the team of no timing. Um, and. Yeah, I, I agree that Trig, they were just not active enough. They they didn't take the overmatches where they had them. They didn't, like, that point in time where you said, right, where they have to peek and have to kill the enemy tanks that have uh, pushed up close towards the donut. You just bite the bullet there. You take the damage, but you get the kills in return. Um, but Especially because they had so many high HP tanks. Yeah, they had two full HP 260s against like four low HP, like half HP or below it, and like a bunch of things after that are like lower HP, but mm. you know. And the thing is also that there is not going to be punishment from the hill realistically, because on the hill the BZs and no, the, the CS6 is, the, the good thing are is, going to be fighting. The good thing is that if they do this instantly, the BZs from the hill can actually shoot the tanks pulling around the corner because they haven't taken the hill yet from the side of no timing, right? So you pull around the corner, you get shot by a BZ, which means you have to hold. Mm. All right, so first round over NTMG currently in the lead 1-0. Uh, Trick with still the potential to uh, obviously win this match, but also with the potential to improve a bit up on their gameplay, up on their communication. That wasn't perfect, but uh, I mean, if you think of it that way, it can also be a silver lining because those issues are normally pretty easily fixable even in between games. Yeah. Should be possible for them to to fix uh, the mistakes uh, in this, but let's hope for Trig that they can pick up the second round at the very least here um, for for uh, for sorry, yeah for Trig the second round so we go all even into um, into Himmels. Mm. I mean we are gonna see at least one round on Himmels here, and if your Trig it already is starting to become kind of scary because like no timing is known for being pretty good on Himmelsdorf and now you're trailing 1-0 on the map that you lost. So you need to get this one on the board and then you need to hope to at least get one on Himmelsdorf as well, otherwise you're out. That's indeed how points work. Mm -hmm. I am proud of you, Kian. Yep. Um, Do you think Trick has it in them? For the sake of my prediction, I hope that they take this round now and then let Himmelsdorf be Himmelsdorf, and it is a 3-1, right? But <laughs> uh, no, nah, I actually hope that this goes to tiebreaker simply to be able to watch a bit more. Mm. I hope so too. I mean, I did predict 3-1 for no, no timing though, so they can, they can lose this round and then, uh, you know, yeah. in the next ones. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, I believe the match is about to start, so we shouldn't be um, having to wait much more here. And 
yeah, then we'll be able to see if no, uh, if Trig is actually going to get some points on the board here in the playoff stage. Because like, uh, even if you lose, like even if you start in the lower bracket and then lose, like you at least want to put up a good showing, right? No timing, however, coming into this one with a singular TVP one nine zero seven one CS sixty three double chieftain. We have eight two sixties and double fifty B. Trig on the other hand, triple fifty B double BZ. 6 to 60 and 4 CSs. So 50B um, is in favor of Trig there. They need to utilize them well, though. From the north, that usually means you're playing close corner with them. You try and delete a tank or two. Hmm. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to see. Splitwise NTMG seems to be going uh, mostly towards the 1-2 line, sending TVP and 907 uh, towards the middle or possibly even towards the K5 sniping position. Trick, on the other hand, uh, Davai Pazentro, everyone towards the middle. That being said, though, uh, Spieler and Zazu seem to be split off with this ES-63s yes, going around the hill. Yeah, so they actually have the TVP acting like a spotter here. NK here needs to be careful in that CS. He does not want to continue going up. Smired by NK, stopping there on the top ramp, making sure that he does not get focused out. And Trig might drive it to 60 or 2 down the middle, though. Green Mickey Mouse, got to be careful. No fuel tanks left on that one. He's going to be trying to pull back there. He's getting focused out. Green Mickey Mouse is in trouble. The 907 from K5 have an easy work on him. NK now trying to go up to a down thrust. 499 he will survive narrowly and green mickey mouse surviving as well but trig already with that cs under so quickly into that 907 samu there for crossfire as well that is very 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 good for trig oh wednesday here with the people binocular setup uh cvs and low noise exhaust as well that's gonna come as a surprise to trick I believe, um, but the big problem here is that the CS has Why gotten is close. going on the hill still? I don't get it. Uh, I mean, yeah, green Mickey Mouse also I getting don't picked up here. Oh, Wednesday getting spotted though. So, yeah. Deleted as well. <laughs> I think that what? was the CS actually spotting him. How is the 907 doing? What? I need to see the 907. Vitalkis should be able to get shot by Spieler. What? From my experience. What is happening right now? Did the TVP try to clip out? No, right? No. I mean, maybe he just wasn't sitting like completely in the bush, or maybe he didn't expect the CS to be behind him and he got spotted because of that. Like, ooh, Sazu though is on a one shot here. Um, yeah, Spieler does have shots if he goes all the way on the edge of the balcony. Um, Five line also has some shots on him. Vitalka now getting blind connections. I think Vitalka at some point will just try to peek. Uh, Sazudo and pick him up out of this game. But Trig is making life very hard for them. They lost Lovro for trying to drive on the hill. And I just don't understand why they don't need another tank on the hill. You know? Like, I mean, you have the CS, you don't need to. Trig currently down like 5k HP. Um, the good thing for no timing is, uh, for Trig is that they have no way of realistically um, spotting Spieler. Um, who will have blind shot after blind shot onto Vitalke. But, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of worrisome here right now for Trick because they're going to be the ones who have to make the moves. And, like, most of their CSs are already pretty badly damaged. So a lot of their rotational force doesn't really have the HP anymore to get committed somewhere. It's going to be the 260s that will have to bear the brunt of the damage. Trick has to speed up this process a little bit, though. What they're doing right now. Yeah, what they're... I mean, it's fine. But they, they really just need to push another tank to Vitalka and proxy spot them. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Now Zeton uh, going close at the donut towards the corner. But Dana is uh, yeah, doing a good job of doing nothing, essentially. Just staying safe there in his CS63. And honestly, from the side of no timing, you're fine with this. Because, well, you're defending and nothing critical is happening right now. You're just running down the time. I don't know why Trig is not just sending another tank. The TVP spotter is gone, so they don't have to be worried about it anymore. Mm. They think they're trying to blind Vitalka to death, but they're obviously not connecting anymore. And Samu is not really blind firing anymore either, and he has the best angle. Yep. Yeah, no, I think Trig right now are sort of considering what to do next. Um, and their consideration seems to be 
not at an end quite yet, to put it mildly. AKA. Do you think they're going? No? Uh, Looks like they were going. Mm, I think all three Papa's of them are going. going? No, 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 no. no, no. Uh, okay, it's only going to be the 260, the singular one that's going to be sent. Uh, the question is how soon does he actually get spotted? He doesn't. Um, yeah, right now he doesn't. The simple question. Sometimes the question is really simple, yeah, and then the answer as well. Mm. He just doesn't. That's how it works. And is he going to proxy Vitalke is the question. He doesn't really want to leave that hold on position because obviously that's a scary prospect getting shot. He can at just by push them. to Sazu and trade against an Ender 7. Uh, that's the whole thing about it. He can just go where the CS is and just shoot him. Uh, I mean, Danny's retaking his own base. That's also fine. Uh, but they're waiting so long to make these moves. Fapa mm. uh, now proxy spotting Vitalki here. Uh, no shots currently coming in, so Vitalki seems to be kind of safe. Uh, but yeah, now Fapa readjusting. Uh, so Fapa bouncing though. Samu does not bounce those from the back end. Vitalki trading it out a little bit more. Might do one or two more shots of damage. Papa should be connecting this one. Samu coming back in. That's the five lane position, you see. It's just like really good at clearing this. But who it's taken trigger a very long time though. But this it's this is a reminder of like Invil, you know? There's nobody holding J2, J3, the hold on position there. Mm. If they get pushed in their own base, they're in trouble. I mean Considering the pace of this game so far, that would take another five minutes, so that would mean a draw. But now Fapa starting to drive over the K line here. Uh, does actually not take any damage for that crossing. That's kind of concerning um, for the for the team of NTMG because as soon as Fapa reaches that uh, basically hold down cap position, good shot into Lobe there in the 50B, um, then no timing are going to be in trouble. That being said, they have an ace up their sleeve. And that ace is go uh, is called Shelby Walk. That's not an ace, bro. That's like a Joker card that doesn't even work. <laughs> you, did you not see the game between Inville and uh, Aurora? Uh, yeah, I, I remember some CS. I think it was just completely getting... Or was it a 260 that was completely no, obliterated? No, he, he was a 260. He tried to pick the decap and he just died. Mm, yeah, but I think the CS should be able to double bush there. So, <laughs> at the very last, they, they have to find him. That doesn't do anything, though. But the only thing issue here is that Trig is so slow. They're really making it so hard on themselves. They sat there for four minutes doing nothing. Yeah. And no timing. They don't need to do more than they are doing currently. Um... Drake now sending one more 260 towards the middle. They're sending Dani, I think, closer towards the 1-2 line. Katsunk taking one on the way out, or into the donut, I should say, rather. But, uh, yeah, non-mistake finally also making a move. And Trig with a sort of CSA-esque gameplay, if you get what I'm saying. Or they're like Navi and Counter-Strike, dude. Last 30 seconds. <laughs> No, but like really though. Um, let's see though if Trig also have a simple who can go kill. Um, because currently... Uh, I mean, if they wanted somebody simple, they would have asked you again. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so double 260, triple 260 now Sorry, on the cap. Please. Shelby Walk does not get spotted for this, but Fapa is actually being pushed through here. So Fapa just needs to reach the rock, though. And here comes the repush in return from no timing straight across the F line. But Trick's been preparing for this for what feels like an eternity. Delete instantly the first tank. He goes down, now Sprite and Master not doing too well by themselves either, that's the power of the 50Bs coming in. The cap now getting boosted, 28 seconds left, the CS coming in as well, Fapa just blocking in Shelby, not allowing him to reset, it will be the 50B of Love trying to do it, but still, there comes the shots from the middle though, from no timing, they have those tanks from the middle actually getting those resets, because they're taking back the ramps here, those rocks, those positions are providing some sort of crossfire into the cap and there comes Danny from behind he sneaked through to get the last 50 B spot in the cap and now 18 seconds unspotted as well winter is the only one that can make it he gets a damage engine as well 40 seconds cap is 
the only option, I think, at this moment in time for Trick to win. No mistake, getting spotted out. Can no timing. Find the reset here. Everybody's training their guns towards it. Finally, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Trick has to kill at this moment in time. Unless the 260 can sneak into the cap as well. Because 43 seconds is not going to be it. The 260 of Papa dies as well. And Trick, who waited for what seemed forever and ever to execute their game plan are now going to be punished for it and are going to be looking to get match point immediately because they simply waited too long. Yeah, Trick in this battle completely just waiting. <laughs> Lolly, they're trying to push away Tribe off, but yeah, in the end, the story of the game is going to be Trick just waiting for it eternity. The first battle today that actually goes the full 10 minutes and it ends in a disaster for the team from Hungary that are now down 2-0, facing a match point immediately and now heading over towards a map which the other team supposedly likes a lot simply because they insta-picked it. I'm be honest, like if for everybody watching is unfamiliar, this kind of split that uh, no timing is doing loses time and time again most of the time because it's simply impossible to defend one two and defend your base um but if trick gives four minutes to no timing and all they have to do is get like one or two resets then yeah they, they're gonna make it happen but also like love for going up in the beginning man they lost the bz for that for no reason yeah i that was like a weird few kills that happened like uh uh, I mean, 1800 spotting damage. I don't think the spotting TVP was worth it either. Uh, just got completely countered by the CS in the south. But uh, in the end, Trick just unable to, to react quickly enough. And like by unable to react quickly enough, I mean, they were actually super, super slow. Like they spent four minutes essentially probably talking on TeamSpeak, but realistically in the game doing nothing. It's, uh, yeah, well... It is what it is, I guess. It is what it is. And this means that now, I guess, we are going to once again see the pick and bans, which reveal what we already know. Himmelsdorf is going to be the next map, and Trick is where they don't want to be. They're up against the ropes. They are facing tournament elimination. Yeah. Um, that was just really disappointing. Yeah. To be honest. I'm... I'm I'm struggling here to make out any silver linings for the team from Hungary at this point, but maybe they are able to surprise us positively on Himmelsdorf. Like, we've been talking time and time again about how good now timing is on that map, but maybe they have something prepared for us. Um, we'll have no, to I didn't say that they're good on Himmels. I said they're good on Ensk. Didn't you also say they're good on Himmels? I think I said they like Himmels. That doesn't mean they're good on Himmels. <laughs> That's not the same thing, bro. You uh, like playing World of Tanks, Gihan. That doesn't... You're Careful <laughs> where we're going well, now. Thanks. I mean, I've watched some of the Day A streams. I don't go there for the gameplay. That's for sure. <sighs> Wait, you go there for me? That's so nice no, of you. For the, for the Germans. Okay. I mean, you're also included in that. Just not really, you know, that much. All right. Thanks. I guess uh, let's talk instead about the tournament at hand, would we? Um, but yeah, essentially... Trick right now, not looking good. If you're from Hungary or a Trick fan, no timing. Looking good here. I mean, they did lose the first match and they did lose it pretty, pretty hard. They did convert their ends, but after that, Aurora just went on to, yeah, like, stomp them out of it, clean 4 0 after the, the 0 2. Uh, Trick, like, and you can even say, like, in the first game, it was a bit of miscommunication and a bit of missing focus fire. Here, it was just. I guess straight up too slow, and that is very like. They always win this game if they make this move a minute earlier. Yeah, then because they simply cap. Yeah, because like all of those tanks that are fighting out in the middle, some of the no timing tanks there will have to intuition over to AG and try those long range resets, which takes away from the effective DPM that NTMG have available in the middle of the map. Whereas the trick tanks that are fighting in the middle of the map, they don't have to care about that. They can just focus on the task at hand at focus firing down the tanks that are immediately close to them. So, yeah, a few wrong decisions here by the side of Trig, uh, ending up costing them a lot. So, uh, I currently struggle to see them taking this match, uh, to be honest. But, yeah, maybe they surprise us on Himmelsdorf. That being said, though, I think the match is about to get started. So... 
we'll be seeing if we even go to a game four or if it's all going to be done and dusted, if it's all going to be over now for Trig. Well, I need them to win at least one round. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have Toxic winning the prediction. True. Mm. True. Very true. Let's see, though, um, what they have in store for us in this game. I mean, it's going to be do or die for Trig at the very least. And Trig is going to be doing it, but double T57 and E3 and 12 to 7 eyes. On the side of NTMG, we have one E4, one V4, one Chieftain and 12 to 7 nines as well. Double T57. Um, that's a lot of firepower. And in close range, that double T57 actually just melts through a 279. Like, they're able to delete it in six seconds. Uh, that is that is just crazy. But obviously, you need to be able to, to sort of get them in position, right? To sort of enable them to do that. And uh, also, over, like, longer ranges, simply because the angles become worse, the T57 actually starts to struggle against 279s. That being said, though, opening-wise, NTMG very heavily one two-line focus. I want to see the equipment of the guys on A2, actually, on the 279s. I'm really curious what they're using. Mm, I guess our on observers the... will be able to show that to us in a second. Because they crossed in front of a 279, usually that's only possible with low noise. I mean, crossing to A2 with that 279, yeah, low noise, or if you, I think you can also do it mm -mm. if you go mm -mm. like fully no, red no, line. No, 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 not against the 279. Uh -huh. Normally not on the 279 because he peaks far enough that he sees the full red line. Maybe I'm wrong, but normally it's uh, low noise. Low noise? I mean, it would be crazy to see A2279. Wouldn't be the first time. Noise. Would not be the first time. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, ah, that's the K2279s, not the A2279s, but I think we're going to get there. Uh, Clo close enough. <laughs> close enough, yeah, indeed. But, like, that is sort of weird also splitting up the T57s. Oh, Spieler there, taking a huge hit in, uh, in his E3. Not quite sure but ah the 2684 all right got it so fab but did get spotted on the cross back over lovro as well uh he gets spotted by shelby and here comes no timing though they're now starting to push up on tuki yep so the march of the elephants actually starting on that two and on that three line and uh, the 279s now do get spotted in A2. Uh, the T57 also spotted now. Korea is there. And uh, we'll have to see if this concentration of forces here by NTMG is actually going to net them the win. No one dies on the cross, but Crystal almost down and out. 51 HP only remaining. In comes the repush by Trick. The repush by Trick probably going to go on towards the three line. You can see Kunik, Maraj, Maraj actually exploding for that. Down towards 680 HP. Fapa, I'm not mistaken, now coming in as well. Trying to repush that angle, but it's not working out too great for Trick right now. They're pushing into a set up, no timing team. They might just be able to hold the hangar though, with a little bit of luck here. They're trying to focus on Hellmine. Drea there in the 57, struggling right now to get involved into this fight. He's just going to clip out Vitalke instead. Wasted a lot of time there, really, to get that clip out finally we do all of his shots and now trig still down in positions down in hp they haven't even picked up winter from that position there dana is walking on that corner though he's doing very very well but trig now down in tanks down in positions profus gonna be leading the charge on this repush here samu is gonna be trying to find that chieftain of shelby who's out in the open but they will lose a2 they lose fapa and trig here in the dire straits of this game have very little left to play with very little left to do they're at the mercy of no timing at this moment in time and samu there tries to get shelby but shelby is going to be backing up around the corner and this repush from trig just not working out they started making those rotations kihan across the a-line that was the trigger for no timing to push that two line I mean, the fact that Winter was alive until like five seconds ago is mind-boggling. Like, he was the first one to get pushed up on, and like, the, the entire push had to collapse until he finally fell here, uh, felled by Dana. But yeah, NTMG, just with a good execution, just uh, with, 
Yeah, with Conviction crossing over to that C1, C2 area, then the Trig Tank's not really able to focus fire well in the uh, in the hangar. And NTMG, I think, both on a tactical and also on a personal player skill level, just completely schooling Trig today. Uh, Trig didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. There was no hope for them at any point in time, really. Like. The first game, miscommunication. The second game, too slow. The third game, just straight up losing in player skill-wise and tactic-wise. Not a good execution here on the repush. So yeah, NTMG really showing that they're the better team today. And uh, for Trick, it's back to the drawing board. Yeah, back to the drawing board. They came, they saw, and you know, sadly, this is gonna be it for them. That second cliff round, we're gonna hunt them for a while, I would say. Mm -hmm. But these Himmel 3 pushes are very hard to pull off, in general, um, against the setup team. And unless they cross over with too many to the hangar, repushing 3-line against established positions is really, really hard. Yep, and uh, this concludes this match. The first uh, clean sweep of the day. We'll see if it will remain the only one uh, in this tournament. I think we'll have a quick look at the uh, battle results, but uh, yeah, that was that was brutal. If you're a trick fan, yeah, you're not pretty happy if you're a trick fan. Mm, I mean, I guess the the T57s kind of maybe working out, but uh, in the end, it was it it felt like trick didn't have enough committed into that repush and it also like as it started like i was sort of trying to hand over while casting to you as it started but then it felt like it still needed a five to ten seconds to get going like there was there was no uh like no one on the trick team seemed convinced that this was actually going to work in my opinion yeah well i think the rotation there for trick ruined it uh, to be honest you know they started cutting back across the a line two three guys getting spotted out Give no timing the trigger to push it, and you need like more crossing to the hangar. Almost like, the way most teams actually hold that is by crossing more tanks to the hangar immediately mm. and shooting down. Yeah, um, the the team coming through. Exactly, and the problem also was as soon as Trick lost like that A two position uh, with those two seven nine, um, that meant that the the tanks that were pouring out from their own cap immediately were in crossfire, right? And uh, yeah, from there on out, it was basically unwinnable for Trick. Anyway, Ducky, uh, thanks for a uh, fun day of casting. Uh, that is probably going to be it from us. We're going to be raiding you after so people can finish their drops. Guys, don't hesitate to drop one of those crucial primes on Ducky's channel. And that thanks, being said, Steve. last word to you. Uh, overall, uh, good showing from uh, Aurora. They're going to be the team to watch for tomorrow if they can beat Invil in the upper bracket and maybe potentially get a German team in the finals with what would be like forever. And uh, outside of that, great games, great matches, but plenty of things for the analysts to still talk about and take it away. Well, thanks a lot, Kian and Deki, for that first match of the playoff. And a good job to NTMG to move to the next round of the losers bracket where they will be facing Madagascar. We have to say goodbye, though, to Trig. Uh, that is dropping out just like a nice try. But you have to mention that it was good that they this time reached the playoff stage. Yeah, finally seeing Trick again uh, makes me happy. I kind of expected Trick to go 0-3, I even put it into the prediction. No timing really showing that they can play maps other than Ensk as well. Uh, they had a really, really strong showing on the cliff matchups. And also the Himmelsdorf was mm, pretty good. I think Trick kind of shot themselves into the foot there. But uh, no timing obviously utilized that for their own good. So we will be seeing uh, no timing tomorrow going off against Madagascar in match 6. Before that, we will have in the upper bracket final Inville facing versus Aurora. And then for after that, we will have the match 7, which will be the loser of Inville versus Aurora versus the winner of Madagascar versus No Timing, uh, whose winner will then go on to play in the big final, in the final final versus the winner of the upper bracket final. 
Yes, yeah, so we have four teams left and uh, the winner of Inville v Aura will also have a quick and uh, small advantage in the finals. They will have the chance to ban a map and pick a map straight, so no penal ban for the team coming from the loser's bracket. But I think that we have something to show about that last match of the day. The replays are here. Let's take a look at them. We are starting on a cliff. We had Trig on the defense, NTMG on the attack, and Trig. It was kind of confusing what they did on the hill with two busies. Probably lack of communication there. Yeah, we said they were maybe trying to redo the threat of Madagascar, but with their own twists to it. Uh, but it just looked very weird. They never really managed to take anything for free. Everything they wanted to take, they had to pay a huge price for, and. They managed to retake the hill, but uh, then one of them pushed down, whilst the other two didn't. So a bit of miscommunication there. And we can see if we look at the HP pool, NTMG is up HPs and just has to close the match pretty much. The final task for them will be to kill Trick in the donut, which is uh, not what they opted for. They actually went to the cap instead. They said, you know what? The donut repush might be risky, so we will go with the safe approach and just cut this one out. Yeah, and good stuff from uh, the side of NTMG up here, going for the base capture, which was the right decision. And you could see the next one was very close between these two teams. We had the feeling MTG they were in not uh, not in the greatest shape because uh, this TP got spotted and they also lost the 907 over K5. But magically at the end they managed to. Uh, get the victory and it was probably due to the fact that Trig they waited way too long to make that play right yeah maybe we need uh, some longer battle times for Trig they were going with the CSA approach here uh, trying to make the match as long as possible ended up making it a bit too long you will see that uh, the cap timer starts at like 1 minute and 30 and basically NTMG is up HP but their task is to regain positions in order to actually provide the decaps which uh, they actually managed to do and if trick had enough time they probably could have won this but uh, they they just played around for so long they wasted like six seven minutes which is just something you really can't do in these fast paced 10 minute matches yeah, I mean, I really think that they were too slow on the reactions there and it should have been 1-1 one, one for that uh, first map. And well, then we didn't uh, get the last replay because technical difficulties, but it was a convincing victory from the side of NTMG on Himmelsdorf with a convincing push on the lower side, even though Trig had a last, uh, good lineup against it. They didn't manage to hold, and we have to mention it, those teams, those Ukrainian teams, uh, CIS, uh, base team, RU, all of those, they are really, really efficient in those pushes. That's something they like, they love, they train a lot around it. Like you mentioned, that NTMG team, they're really good on ANSK, on Himmelsdorf, so they are really on point when it comes to make those work. And it's great to see uh, not just one, but two teams actually from the ex Russian service migrating over to the EU team and able to perform this well in the playoffs. Uh, we will see which one of them uh, has the upper hand in the lower bracket uh, and will then have the task of facing either Inville or Aurora, which both had a pretty strong showing today. Uh, Ducky especially mentioned Aurora, I, and I agree. Uh, we uh, haven't seen a German team perform really good in a long time, especially not take a win. But uh, this might be the team that uh, can actually contest for it. Yeah, I think that uh, Raid at some point was full German, but uh, this Aurora team probably has been the most performing that I've seen so far. But they still need to uh, get to the next step, reach some grand finals, take some victories, get some fists to actually prove that to everyone. They're going to have their shot tomorrow starting against Inville. Same time as today, we will be there at uh, 16 uh, CET. So make sure to tune in uh, if you're interested to see how the finals of the uh, winner's bracket is going to be going. Well, Inville missing their uh, FC they had for the past four tournaments, Barbarian, but I'm I'm sure they're capable and they may be even better without him with the full uh, Polish connection that's going to be for tomorrow. Toxic, do you have anything to add before we actually head to the outro? 
yeah make sure everyone to tune in um you can also grab your mystery drops tomorrow you will have a chance at a tier 8 premium you don't want to miss that so 16 central european uh, summertime actually it is uh, we will be here for you guys, providing you with the greatest content there is in this game. And we are keen to see you. Have a great night, everyone. See you tomorrow.